lower loopers are threaded, and you can do them in any order. The built-in threader makes quick work of needle threading. In no time at all, you'll be breezing through all of your projects. Setting up your serger can be easy. Let your Baby Lock retailer show you how. There are a lot of helpful features right at your fingertips on the front of the Baby Lock Brilliant. First, we have the start stop button. You can touch this any time to stitch and it's going to let you know if you've forgotten to do something like lowering the presser foot. And it will also let you know that you have to disconnect the foot controller in order to use the start stop button for sewing. Above that, we have the reverse button. Anytime you touch the reverse button as you're sewing, the machine is going to stitch in continuous reverse as long as you hold on to that button. And when you release, it will start stitching forward again. This button serves a second purpose when you've programmed a lock or a thread cut at the end of a seam, it's how you're going to let the machine know that you've reached the end of the seam and you're ready for it to lock in those stitches and cut the thread. Above that, we have the reinforcement button. When you are stitching a decorative stitch, you can touch reinforcement and a green LED light will appear, letting you know that the machine acknowledges that you want it to lock in the stitch. It's going to complete the decorative stitch, then lock in and thread cut if you have programmed that as well. Next, you have your needle position button. Anytime you touch the needle position, it will lift or lower the needle position. Next, you have the thread cutter button. No matter where you are in a stitch, you can always cut the thread simply by touching the thread cutter button. As we move across the machine, we'll find speed control. You can program your machine to stitch at the fastest speed or the slowest speed or anywhere in between. On the front of the machine, you'll find that you've got several buttons as well. First, we have the automatic tie-off. When you program in that automatic tie-off, when you begin a seam, the Brilliant's going to lock in your stitches, and at the end of the seam, again, you'll touch your reverse button, and it's going to lock in the stitches at the end of the seam. You can also program an automatic tie-off and trim with the scissor button. And now at the end of your seam, your machine will lock in the stitch and cut the threads. Start your creative journey to sewing and embroidery with the Baby Lock Verve. Whether you're a beginner or you're looking for a great travel machine, the Baby Lock Verve is just what you're looking for. Create beautiful projects easily with the Baby Lock Verve's large LCD color touch screen. With a simple touch, you can quickly navigate the machine. Help is a breeze with the built-in videos that can assist you at any time. With 191 utility and decorative sewing stitches, you'll always have the perfect stitch for any project. The Verve also allows you to stitch a speedy 850 stitches per minute. And thanks to the wider throat space and included extension table, you can tackle larger projects. The LED lighting, advanced needle threader, and quick set bobbin further enhance the sewing features of the Baby Luck Verve. And when you need to pack your machine, the included hard carrying case will offer extra protection. Embroidery is so easy. Embellish your projects with one of the 95 built-in embroidery designs, 140 frames, or beautiful uppercase floral alphabet. Easily import designs with the USB slot on the verb. And one of the most exciting features on this machine is the ability to combine embroidery designs on one page. Personalize all your creations with the 10 built-in fonts, multi-line text, and font editing. Visit your local Baby Lock retailer today and see everything that the Verve can help you achieve.
upsize your creativity with more room to design. Presenting the Innovis NQ1700E, the latest embroidery sensation from Brother. Are smaller hoop sizes cramping your style? Step up to a larger 6x10 canvas to stitch your masterpieces. The Innovis NQ1700E delivers all you need to design on a larger scale with advanced features and smart conveniences that expand your creativity. Explore 258 built-in embroidery designs with 140 frame pattern combinations and 13 embroidery fonts. Send designs wirelessly using design database transfer. A nearly 5 square inch LCD color touchscreen with an intuitive interface simplifies on-screen editing. All with drag and drop convenience. And hey, you've got gifts to give and crafts to sell. Boost your productivity with embroidery speeds up to 850 stitches per minute, plus an efficient and simple color sort feature. Plus, the optional 5x7 magnetic hoop lets you manage thicker fabrics with ease. Upsize your creativity with the all new, all smart Innovis NQ1700E, only from your friends at Brother. Demo one at your brother dealer today. Janome.
for Ned for all my ideas. Good morning, everyone. Blaine Austin here at Soul Machines Plus, and welcome to day two of Sew Fest. Hey, we are so glad you're here with us. And hey, day one, we had a great day yesterday. And man, did we get to see some great demonstrations. We saw some great education. And we're going to do that same thing again today. And uh, we've got a great lineup today. We've got some good education events you're going to get to see. Uh, we're going to have two sessions today of just education only. And then the rest of the day is going to be demonstrations of machines and all the different specials we have uh, that you can take advantage of. And we're going to do some giveaways. We've got giveaways uh, throughout the day. I think we're going to have two, two sessions of giveaways today that we're going to do. And speaking of giveaways, i uh, got to let you know how you can win. So everybody who's watching, you have a chance to win. And how you get to win is just be, you know, participation. Make sure that you're, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, Hey, just ask questions, make comments. If you share the video, if you actually like it, those all are going to help you uh, get your name entered to win. And if you're on watching on YouTube today, hey, make sure that you do the same thing. You go up there and hit that bell notification. Give us that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and also make comments and ask questions. All those things will actually enter your name in to win. So uh, the more you participate all week, 
the more na times your name's in there to get drawn out. It's automatic. Uh, Kyle and Roger have a program that works and pulls everybody's names out and uh, it's just random. So it is a really cool thing that we do. And uh, so if you want to have a good chance, you know, to, to win a prize during this week, that's what you got to do. If you are on our website right now and you're watching the stream on our website, we invite you to come over and watch on YouTube or Facebook. That way you can uh, participate and, and get a chance to win because you can't make comments or anything from our website. So anyway, with that said, I got to tell you a little bit about what SoFest is all about. So if you're if you weren't here yesterday and you're joining us for the first time today, SoFest, basically what it was is the contest that we had for you could enter a garment or a home decor item that you've sewn and we opened it up uh, to people could enter their items. You, we had some rules you had to follow and you could submit your photos. So we uploaded the photos on the website. You can actually still go and see them now. If you go to our homepage, uh, SoFest is right up there at the top. You can just click on that and go down and you can actually view all the, the photos and things on that, that SoFest page. And uh, so we did that. Then we closed the entries. We opened it up for about a month for people to vote. And it's strictly a people's choice. Uh, you can go and vote on your favorite home decor uh, entry or your garment entry. And we're going to have a winner of each one of those. And that winner is going to have a, a great prize with some sewing machines and a few things. And uh, so that's how it was. We had thousands of entry or, uh, votes. We had uh, hundreds of entries. And uh, so it, that's what SoFest is about. It's about sewing. We're celebrating National Sewing Month. So what better way to do that is have a sewing contest and also have a festival that we could uh, celebrate sewing and have some great specials, give some good education. So got to tell you about our sponsors. We could not put this event on for everybody if we didn't have these great sponsors to help us out. And so got a big shout out to all of our sponsors, Janome Handy Quilter, The Grace Company, OESD, Brother, Baby Lock, Bernina, Arrow Cabinets, So Steady, uh, Euro Notions, Daylight, and Juki. So we sure do appreciate all those partners with us and uh, helping us put this on. And uh, that you know enabled us to go out there and get the best educators we could find and give some great prizes. And uh, so that's what this is all about. So we hope that you'll stick with us all week because we're gonna be here all the way till Friday and then Friday, we are going to actually announce the winners of our contest uh, for, you know, we're going to have a first and a second place. And I think even a third place for the home decor side. And then that category of the, the garment sewing, we'll have uh, three places on that. And then the other thing that we're doing, we actually are not leaving you out. We have what we're calling, we're giving away a, a dream studio giveaway. And one lucky viewer is going to win the dream studio. And it's basically, it's going to have a bunch of things like a sewing cabinet, sewing machines, embroidery machines. Uh, what we're trying to do is outfit your studio uh, with some really brand new equipment and really make it awesome. And so there's a little look of the giveaways. I think Kyle just put it on the screen. And so we're trying to make this very special for some lucky viewer out there. And uh, I think you're getting, is that all the stuff they're getting? That's the dream studio right there. So you see it on the screen. You're getting a quilting machine. Uh, you're getting a sewing cabinet. You're getting a sewing machine. So all kinds of things, an embroidery machine. So great, great prize package for some lucky viewer out there. And again, you know, we're going to have drawings each day. But if, you know, when you do the things to get your name in on the daily drawings, you're getting your name in for that grand prize. And if you went and voted uh, on, you know, that also entered your name in for the, the grand prize. So a lot of different ways to do it. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, we're glad that uh, y'all are, are taking part of this and we hope that y'all stick around and, and, and watch every day with us on Friday. I know we, you know, in back in March, we had our quilt fest that was very successful. And then in June we had hoop fest. And I know some of our, our customers out there, they stuck with us every single day, all day long. And uh, I would get emails and, and uh, from, customers telling us they just how much they enjoyed it and that they basically you know got their 
their their coffee mug beside them and their their little snacks and said the only time they got up was to go use the restroom. So <laughs> so what we did is we've actually tried to put a couple breaks in to, so everybody can, you know, get up and stretch their legs and all that. But we sure do appreciate you sticking around with us. And uh, so anyway, hey, we've got a great lineup today and uh, we're super excited about that. I know this morning we've got uh, Kyle and Roger and Andrea and Lauren's all here. They are waving, Swave Gang. They're uh, they're here running the whole show behind the scenes, and and yeah, there's a lot goes on uh, on this show behind it with bringing all the guests in and all the different things. It's amazing uh, what these four people do. And then I have our chat team. Our chat team is is uh, back in the back. They're back there. Everybody wave at the chat team. Everybody wave for us. They're all there, and and they're actually in when we have kind of two chat teams. So I don't want to get it too confused, but the chat team that you just saw, what they're doing is they're monitoring the chat on YouTube and on Facebook, and they're trying to help answer questions because there's so many comes, you know, on screen, we don't really can't hardly catch them all. So it's extremely hard for us to answer them for you. So uh, Deb and, and, and the team back there, what they're trying to do is they're trying to intercept all those questions you have and get the answers for you to help you out. And then also, if you go to our website, we have a chat team, a live chat on our website that all, can also help you uh, with questions, help you with your order. And then guys, our call center, uh, Nick and his team are all standing by today. Uh, that's the 800 number. You know, write this down if you've got a chance. It's 800-401-8151. That is our, our number to our call center. And we'll remind you of that too. If you see something you want to buy today, you can always give them a call. Uh, it's a great, great uh, resource. Nick's team, they're all really, really versed on quilting machines and sewing machines and embroidery machines. And uh, most of the time, they're going to be able to answer any question you have. So they're standing by today. So we got a whole team ready to go. The warehouse guys, Randy and his crew over there already, are, they're shipping from, they're working hard today, shipping out all the things that you ordered yesterday. So uh, we're ready to get this thing rolling, Kyle. What do you think? What do you think, Roger? Y'all ready to go? All right. So, hey, I'm feeling great today, guys. And and thanks for, you know, I think everybody uh, kind of knows that I was involved in a car accident and uh, about four weeks ago and ended up having to have neck surgery. And I've kind of been down and out. But, uh, man, I am feeling great today. Got my voice is good today. And I sure do appreciate everybody's emails and the cards and everything that people sent in for me. I really do appreciate that. But, hey, we've got a great show today. I've got Jane Klaus is going to be here today. She's doing a photo shoot this morning. So she won't be here first thing this morning, but she's going to be here, I think, right after 10 a.m. Pacific time. It'll be noon uh, uh, Central time. Uh, Jane's going to come in and she's going to help me co-host the rest of the day. And uh, super excited to have Jane here. Y'all know how much energy she has. She is, uh, I call her the Energizer Bunny. She has so much energy. But first thing this morning, hey, we have got uh, uh, Donnell McAdams here from So Steady. And Donnell was on yesterday and she just blew everybody away. She's talking about the, the So Steady tables and things. But I got to tell you a little bit about Donnell. Donnell, she's the owner of So Biz in uh, Mariana, uh, or Marion, uh, Indiana. And she's a previously a, a family consumer science teacher. And I don't know if y'all know what that is, but I think that's home ec. Is that right? We'll have to ask Donnie. I think that's a home ec teacher. And uh, I know it's got that, that fancy name. And so she uh, has a, built a quilt store. She was an owner for 37 years. She's been in this industry. Uh, we've worked with her numerous times uh, with a lot of different events. And she's, I mean, a great, great educator. And uh, just really like Donnell. So I hope she's ready to go this morning. So Donnell, are you here this morning? I am. I'm ready to go. All right. So did I get that right? Or you, is that a, a fancy name for a home ec teacher? Home economics it teacher? It is. It <laughs> is. It's called Family and Consumer Sciences now. And of course, we all know that they've cut most of that out, which I just don't like. But I won't get on that soapbox this morning. <laughs> I'll just say that, yes, it is a home ec teacher. And tell, I'll tell you this. For those of you out there that have someone in your life that's younger and wants to sew, take them under your wing because that's probably the only way that they're going to get started is if you invest some time in them. So Yeah, you're right. You know what, Donnie, I've got to tell you, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we got a few little seconds we can spare sure. here. Back when I was in high school, I was a, you know, I was an athlete and was on the basketball team, track team and all that. And 
the home economics teacher came to to me and two other guys on the team and she asked us if we would come and join the home ec uh class because they had no males in there and uh and she wanted to have have a few us in there. And we were like, there's no way we're doing that. She said, well, hey, we get you, we, we cook and we feed you. You get to eat a lot. So we looked at each other and we said, okay, we're in. Well, <laughs> that's what I thought it was about. Well, we got in there. We found out we had to learn how to sew. And so I actually had to sew on a sewing machine, a Singer sewing machine back in high school. And little did I know that would what my career would be later on in life. But I, uh, I had to make a uh, shirt and a warm up bottoms. And I'll never forget, I gave that to my sister. And uh, after I made them and she warmed for a long time. <laughs> and uh, we always laugh about that is, you know, I made this uh, shirt and warm up bottoms. And little did I know that well, I would be sewing later on in life. <laughs> yeah. And now you can testify to the fact that Anybody can do it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, but you're exactly right. You know, if, if if anybody has a young person out there, I I encourage them to take them under under their wing, like you said, and, and teach them how to sew and, and do that. Because I'm telling you, that's uh, you know the schools are cutting back on a lot. We still have a lot of schools that do business with us and have a great home economics department. But I know a lot of the funding has gone away on that. So uh, I encourage y'all if you do know somebody young, you can get them into it. You know, we've got some great machines. That it's starter machines for people. And, hey, we're giving some of them away today. So if you win one, hey, you might, you know, if you got plenty of sewing machines, pass that thing down to somebody and get them in the hobby. So great. Yeah. Well, hey, are you ready to get going this morning? I am. I am. Well, I'm going to so. turn it over to you and let you uh, and, uh, educate us all on the Sew Steady products. All right. Well, I'm glad to be back today. And yesterday I talked to you about the tables and how to take care of them and the features of it, this nice big blue drawer, because I am still sewing on a wish table. And um, as I said, we can have tables for any of our machines, including our sergers. And it makes your serger more like a sewing machine because it gives you this nice big flat bed. And they're custom cut. As you can see, this fits right up around here and we have adjustable legs on it. So everything is set to go. When you pop it out of the box, really all you need to do is polish it. And if you were with me yesterday, I showed you how to polish the table. And it's always interesting because people will ask me, so how do I know when I need to polish it? And I say, oh, you'll know because your fabric won't slide. And this is not just something for sewing, it's for quilting, it's for doing any type of, uh, of your crafting work. You can use this for all types of things. So I love my Sew so Steady tables. Each of my machines has a Sew so Steady wish table on it. Even my featherweight has a Sew so Steady wish table. It's only about that tall because it's a little tiny, you know, low bed. But anyway, I got a featherweight for it, or I got a... Uh, uh, wish table for it and it makes it so nice and easy to use and um, I'm going to go ahead and show you today a little bit about another part of Sew so Steady and that is the template quilting and template quilting is when we use a ruler work foot it's a different type of foot you can get them on Sew so Steady's site um, some of the machines, like the one I'm sewing on today, actually come with their own ruler work foot. Now, it is different than a free motion foot. A ruler work foot has a high wall on the side, so I'll be able to run my templates. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. And the first thing that I need to do is to put on a glider. And I believe I showed you this yesterday because I used it even in my regular sewing. You can see this grid glider has a cutout that will allow my feed teeth to work. Now, I'm not going to be using my feed teeth today because my feed teeth are going to be down for what I'm starting out with. But then at the end, when I show you something else, we will have them back up. So I line everything up perfect with my needle, front to back, side to side. And then I'm just going to lower my needle a little bit so that you can see that. That becomes the center point of all of these lines. So if I need to do a 60 degree angle or a 90 degree angle or a 30 degree or 45, it's just perfect. And I can tell you this is not just for quilters. 
I have a lot of sewers, a lot of professional garment makers who are using these because of the fact that it covers up all of this area, makes everything nice and smooth so your fabrics flow smoothly. And piecing quilts just got easier, okay? Because once I've got this lined up, I've got this line right over here. And if you purchase a product that I'm going to show you here a little bit later, this is the circles and straights tool. You can pull out the straights part and this will just affix right to that. And now we can just glide right by there to do our quarter of an inch seam. So this is using a different part of a tool and I'm going to show you it later. But right now I'm going to pull that piece of fabric back. And this is what I call a fabric sandwich. Now I've just got a little mark here in the center. And so I am going to be able to find my center to get started. And I need to use what is called my crosshair ruler or crosshair grid. Now I don't know if you can see it there, but now you can. There are eight etchings. This is called an eight point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this one up and I'm going to line up that center. And now what I'm going to be using, I'm just going to use one of these Frixon pens. Now I know that probably sends the hair up on the necks of many people, but I will tell you, I have pressed my fabric with Starch Savvy. That's a product or you can use Best Press. And that is going to allow this to just press right off. So you can see those lines. I have a fine line Frixon marker. It's a more of a felt tip pen, but that gives me the lines that I need to use. Now, when we're doing template quilting, we are using actually a template, an acrylic template. And so I'm gonna be using the spin effects, or excuse me, spinning wheels 36 today. And you can bring your thumbtack up from the bottom so the point is sticking up, but that puts a hole in your fabric. So I like to just use what's called RNK tape, any type of tape that will tape to your fabric. And I've got that in the middle. Now you notice when I turned it that way, it's a little bit off. So I'm going to give it a second chance and see that I get that on there. And now we're good to go. So in my template, I have an A and a B, and I'm going to be stitching right around here. And I'm going to stop at B because I have a hole here that that thumbtack comes up through and I am going to spin it around. Hence, it's called spinning wheels 36. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And like I said, you know, this is going to be a fast 25 minutes because we're putting a ton of stuff in here. But we have done with uh, the store, we have done several, I believe, um, beginner classes on this. And I'm sure that Blaine can tell you um, more about those dates because you may even be able to go back and look at them. So I just stitched right around there. And people get all upset saying, oh, how do you know where to be? Well, I'm pushing my foot right against my template. And I'm at B now, so I'm going to go right over here. And I've got an arrow there so that you can see how that lines up with that line. Because there are etchings, but you wouldn't be able to see the etchings there on your computer. So I'm coming around here. You probably noticed some white tape underneath. That is what is called stable tape. And that stable tape, I'll put it up real close so you can see it, kind of looks like, like that shelf and drawer liner. Well, it's what it is, except the other side is got a sticky like tape on it so that it's going to stay right on your template. And so you can see that when I've got that like that, I can easily move my fabric. And if I didn't have that tape on there, it wouldn't be able to be moved. So I'm at B. Here we go again. And because my feet teeth are dropped, I'm the one in control here. A little tip I'll give you, and that is I have turned my machine down to half speed and I turn my foot pedal around 
so that I'm using it from the back. So just my toes are taking that and I'm literally flooring it. So that way my speed is the same all the time. Because I'll tell you, if you're one of those that's sitting out there saying, I never was good at free motion work, I'll never be able to do template quilting. I am not a free motioner. So if I can do this, so can you. So at this point, I'm just gonna backstitch just a smidge to hold that in place. If this was a project that I was gonna be submitting as a fair project or something like that, I would pull my bobbin thread up and I would secure those threads and bury the tails. But I'm just gonna cut this in the essence of time and we're gonna pull this back. Guess I gotta get it clear back there. And then these were my starting threads. And I'm gonna just show you quickly how I can bury those. They're stitched over, but I'm gonna use a side threading needle or a top threading, self-threading needle. It just makes it so easy for me to get those threads in there. And I should have mentioned I'm using a variegated thread on the top, so you can probably see the two different colors. Well, I got one in. It's supposed to be self-threading. Let me see, let me get another needle. There we go, that one behaved. So you can see that I can just take these now and put it right beside where it came out of my fabric and I can bury them in that fabric sandwich because like I said, I've got a backing, a batting and my top. So when that comes through there, I can just pull these through and if I had knotted that, it would have popped right in there as I pulled that. So I'm gonna get right down here and cut those threads. And so we've got that center completed. Now what I'm gonna use is what's called a circles or a circle works outer rim tool. That's a long name there. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making marks out here that are even. So this is just kind of like a compass. Now I can tell you that this is one of those tools that I would not be without. I would love this thing. I use it for many other things too because it works like a big compass. But most people, when they get it, they're like, I don't know what to do with that. Well, I always tell people to put the green like a ruler sticker. And this is another item that comes from So Steady. Ruler stickers are awesome. But I put the green one on the left side here because this is the flat end. And I put a blue one on this rounded end down here. So when I'm down here, this side of numbers is the side that I'm using. Well, I'm gonna be using the flat end, so it's this size of numbers. And I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna use the seven and a half inch mark. You can see that right there. And so I'm gonna put that right on that seven and a half inch mark. And now, it's gonna make it so simple for me to just go right around and on every single line, I am going to be able to make a mark. Now remember, these are gonna iron right off and I've got my iron sitting right beside me here. So I'm gonna show you that when I'm ready for it. So I've made those marks. So my next step, I now have a mark to measure up to. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be using my spiral template. Now, when you look at that, you're probably thinking, good grief, she's got that thing all marked up. Well, they all mean something. I'm not even gonna use any of those right now, but this is one of those rulers that we flip over. So I have stable tape on both sides. So I'm gonna pull up my thread here at this point. I'm gonna come back and just what I call floss to get that bobbin thread up. And I'm gonna make sure I get right in that spot. So now what I'm gonna do, there's a little hook right here. I'm gonna hook that around the foot and I need to get to that mark. Well, I need the needle in that spot. I'm not lining it up that way. I need to be a quarter of an inch because my needle is centered a quarter of an inch in a half inch circle. In other words, my needle is centered in a half inch circle. So that makes it a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna space this at a quarter of an inch. So when I come up here, I will be right on that line. So I stop there. 
I reposition. And I'm going to go all the way around. And it almost looks like I'm doing a perfect circle, but when you see it finished up, there's little dips in that circle because that's not all that I'm going to be doing. I'm just making this outer part. And matching up, and like you can see I've got two left to go. And when I get back to this spot, I'm going to turn it the other way. And we're going to come back doing the same thing, which will create a little chain like design around our center design. Now, you can leave this all in one place and not turn it. So let's say you had a, a big quilt you were doing. I don't recommend you jump into a big quilt until you have felt comfortable with smaller projects. But you don't have to turn this each time. The main reason I do it is I want you to see what I'm doing. And remember I said I was using variegated threads. So like this side here is almost matching whereas I've got some orange over here, or I should say, I guess, rust. And when we get back this time, I'm gonna show you how I would secure these threads. So I'm gonna bring this thread up. I'm gonna lift up my foot and pull away and come right back to this spot put that needle down and at this point I'm bringing up that bobbin thread. So that's the bobbin thread right there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. Pull that bobbin thread out from underneath. So now I've got four threads here. I'm going to take and make a loop and pull the tails through. Now when I do that, Got one that didn't go through. I'm not going to pull it down tight. Let's go at that again since one didn't come through. I'm not going to pull it down tight because I want to put my needle in there so that I can make that knot perfect and slide it right down the needle so it's right on the surface of my fabric. And so now when I take all of these threads through there, I still have that knot that I'm going to pull into my fabric. So I'm pulling those tails through. Here's that knot and now it pops through. Okay, there it did, it just pops through. And so now I can pull these up and cut that off. So now I have finished this design on the top. So I'm gonna just turn around here to the back and get my iron and press those off so you can see how easily they come off. And the reason that they press off so easy is because of the fact that I put a layer of best press or starch savvy or something like that on there so that they would come off. So that's what our design looks like. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna make this into a circle project. Now I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So I can take with that wish table, you are going to get this circle sewing tool. And I can take that and put that in those holes. And then I could make the circle off of this piece right here. But many of you may not have that tool. Obviously, I'm encouraging you to get a wish table so you would by then. But if you don't, 
we have what's called the universal circles and straights tool. And honestly, I'm going to tell you there's advantages to both of them. I use both of them. One of the main advantages is this piece, I can get smaller circles. Because as you can tell here, if I had this right here, that's the smallest circle I can get. So it would be about, I would say, five to six inches. Okay, that's as small as I can get. But I can make smaller circles when I use this because this is like the same type of fabric, or I shouldn't say fabric, but material, what it's made of. And I'm going to bring this on here and I'm going to line it up just like I did the other. And so now I can position this piece anywhere I need to, to get my circles. So let's see here. I think I'm going to do a seven inch circle. So since I'm going to do a seven inch circle, I'm going to peel this bottom off here. That's sticky. So that's going to stick right onto this mat. So on this tool, there's a line etched here and here. And I'm going to line that up so that it's right lined up with that seven. Sorry about that, had to get a drink there. So now that that's lined up with that seven, I'm gonna take my project here and I'm gonna put that right in the center. Probably shouldn't have ironed off that mark real fast, huh? So there we go. I've got that right in the center now. And I'm going to put this on here. And I'm like, well, no, that's not big enough. I really wanted a 14-inch circle. I was thinking the wrong way. So I did this on purpose, okay, because I wanted to show you how easy this is to move. I'm just going to slide this side to side. And I'm going to come down to 14 because that's what I really wanted. And I'm going to set that down. And now I'm right out here at the edge. Okay. And that's perfect. That's no problem. Showing that I could have had more decoration on here. Well, now what I've got to do is I've got to quickly change my foot here because we're going to be doing a straight stitch. And I need to have my regular foot on and at this point I'm going to go ahead and not use the quarter inch I'm going to use my multi-purpose foot and because the machine is set for just a regular straight stitch it automatically brought up my feed teeth so all I need to do is check like I did and now I can start stitching. And I just kind of pat this down. Oops. What good was that going to be? I did make a mistake there. Thank goodness I caught it. I'm making this into a little pillow. I already got my backs made and everything. And then I just started stitching and didn't have these on there. So I'm making this so it lays right on top. Put it right in those pens. Do the same thing with this. It's an overlap. And this is a, called an envelope method. And the whole idea of this particular one, and we've done this type of a project many times, is that you could then use this as like a hot pad. And you could have a cutout of like Insel Bright or some of that heat reflecting interfacing type products that they sell that you could put in this so that then when you're going to your next laundry you just take that stuff out and then you are able to 
launder this and then you can put it back in there. So I'm going to speed it up a little bit. We're just going to press this out as we go. This is a great project for kids. I've got a whole trunk show of items that are circles, all different types of projects. I can even top stitch a circle by just moving my needle over. Now I'm going to cut this off by using pinking shears. And so I can just take this off of here. Always replace that or you'll get a fun little uh, jolt when you touch that sharp pen because it is very sharp. And when I'm cutting this, I'm cutting up close. And this keeps us by using the pinking shears from having to do that slicing of our seams. So when it turns, it lays nice. And like I said, I've done all different types of circle projects. And so Study has some of those patterns on their website. We've done woven circles and uh, one that's called Fantastic Circles, and there's just all kinds of things that you can do with circle sewing. It's great to be able to do like appliques too, because obviously you're going to get a perfect circle, and you can select any stitch you want. So we're going to turn this inside out, and I'm just going to come right around here with my stiletto. I think I might have even used this yesterday and I'm using that to just rub right around that inside. I'm using the wide edge of it and because I've cut that with pinking shears it just lays pretty easy. You can see how that just lays right around there and so then I can just take this and roll those seams out and I can press that. Now I'm gonna show you real quickly here just the start of it. I'm not gonna take the time to press it, but I'm gonna put this back on here. Right now I can see that spot. And then when I put this in that same position, obviously my needle's not in the right spot, but I can put that over so that it's gonna catch that edge and I'm just gonna get a good edge here that's rolled out so I can start it so you can see that I can then just top stitch right around that edge. I'm just gonna do that little bit so that you can see it, but you can see how we can perfectly top stitch right around that circle just by moving our needle position, or if we wanted to, we could have moved this in so that it was even closer. If this was not something that I was gonna put something inside of, I could bring that clear up to here and do a decorative stitch around there. Obviously, I would not have needed a flap on the back. So I've hopefully shown you some of the reasons I absolutely love So Steady products. I love the projects from um, all of the different templates that we can do. And I would encourage you, if you have any interest at all in this, um, you know, follow some of the things that are on the So Steady site there or get with the store because I know that Blaine has hosted us many times and they may have some events coming up because we have lots of educators um, out there. And so I just really appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys today. Have a great day. I wish I could stay and watch all that's going on. I felt kind of jealous yesterday. I thought about Oh, it was about two hours afterwards, and I thought, man, they're having so much fun, and <laughs> I don't get to stay and watch. So thank you, Blaine, for having me. Well, thank you, Donnell. Hey, great, great demonstration as usual, and, and uh, I know that we're going to have you uh, later on in the week as well. And uh, But uh, hey, thank you so much. We always love doing events with you, and it's always so uh, inspiring and educational. And uh, anyway, we'll see you again real soon. All so right. I uh, got to tell everybody how you can get some of the So Steady products that you saw, uh, heard demonstrate. Everything in So Steady, we actually have a coupon code. Uh, it's 15% off. You can go right on our website and go up at the very top at the search bar and just type in So Steady. It'll take you to that product page and all the products are 15% off. And Kyle, do we have that coupon code? Yep. All right. So on the, it's, 
So it's so steady, all one word, so steady. And Kyle's got it on the screen going across. And uh, you, all you have to do is when you're in the checkout of the product, uh, when you're on the checkout page, you can put that coupon code in there and it'll give you the 25% or the 15% off. So guys, let's move on. Hey, we're ready to go. Got to tell you, hey, this next uh, a gentleman coming up, uh, really, really pleasure that he's coming on. We have Jerry Vores coming up. He is the president of Aero Cabinets. He's been there for 27 years and he turned a small business into a a very big business, a very leading business in the industry. Uh, they are very well known. Uh, they make some beautiful cabinets and uh, we are very happy to be one of their top retailers. And uh, so welcome to the show, Jerry. Hey, thank you so much, Blaine. It's awesome to be here today. Danielle did a great job. And so now I have to top what she's doing. <laughs> the pressure's on. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey man, glad to see you. Good to see you again. And it's been a while. And I know we all been locked down, but uh, hey, you're here in, with us today and we're excited about showing everybody uh, the special we have today on the Bandicoot and uh, that whole bundle. And so I'm gonna let you take it away. Absolutely, so thanks so much Blaine. Thanks Sewing Machines Plus for having us on here. Uh, I'm gonna start out with a little bit of story because Blaine, it seems like that's what you do a lot of is telling the stories. And you know, the, the biggest question I get whenever I'm talking to people about what our business is, is, sewing cabinets, you know, they think of grandma's old sewing machine that used to, you open up the top and the machine would come out of the, out of the cabinet. Well, basically that's the same thing. The, one of the challenges that we have is that the majority of people are not sewing on sewing cabinets today. The, our number one competitor for sewing is the kitchen table and the dining room table, which works out great except for two problems. Number one, is just the amount of time it takes in order for you to get ready for sewing. You know, sewing is a sport that we want to spend as much time as we possibly can with, but in order to get set up, you have to haul the sewing machine out of the closet, get all your fabric, get all your stash, get all your notions, get everything set up. Then just about when everything's going, it's time to clear it all off again because the family comes home and you have to have dinner on the table. So sewing furniture allows you to set things up and your setup time is cut very dramatically. The second part why sewing cabinets are so important is because of the fact that, uh, you know, when to think of, think of if you're working on your computer and your keyboard was four inches higher than where you currently work on it. We all know how sore our wrists get uh, if we're working a keyboard that's too high. With a sewing machine, it's the exact same thing. Sewing furniture allows you to work at the perfect height for what you have. And what makes a sewing cabinet a sewing cabinet is the fact that it has a lift in it. Think of grandma's old sewing machine, where it came up. So a sewing cabinet has a three position lift. The first one's gonna be storage. That's where it's at when you're getting ready to set things up. It has the hydraulic lift that will bring it up into free arm. So if you're working on a project where you need to use the free arm, you have that. That is just like working on your kitchen table. It's the same height, so it's good for you. But the main one where you're gonna be sewing most of the time is in flatbed. And that gets your, press your plate down to a point where you are using it at the height that you should. So I'm gonna go sideways here a little bit, but when you're sewing, all your, your, pro your project is right down at the right. So that impacts three different important parts for your body. The first one's gonna be your wrist, just like when it's on the keyboard. The second one is gonna be your shoulders, and the third one's gonna be your back. And we all know that we spend hours sewing, and the more comfortable you can be, the longer you're going to be able to sew. So that's the, the main reason why you want to have that sewing furniture to start with and not just be pulling that out. The second thing with, a, a, with your sewing cabinet is, like I said, the ability to start your, your project right away. So when we put this away, the amount of time that's involved with getting set up is just that much. So in seconds, you can be set up and ready to start your project and resume your sewing as easy as that. So I'm gonna talk about the features a little bit. This is the Bandicoot sewing cabinet. So the Bandicoot is a nice compact. This is wonderful whether you have a dedicated sewing room or whether you have this in your guest room. We all know once it's open, it generally stays open as long as you possibly can because you're gonna have all your notions that are out. But if it closes up, it's very compact so you can still use your guest room or your sewing room as your guest room. 
The, the bandicoot comes with a huge opening. So this opening, the, the most important thing is obviously your sewing machine. You want to have a sewing cabinet that can accommodate your machine. The bandicoot comes with a 20 and 3 quarter by 11 inch opening. So that is large enough to fit about 97% of the machines that have ever been made. So whether you just bought your machine last week or whether you bought your machine 10 years ago, it will likely fit into here. But to make sure, it's a good idea in order to, to measure your machine before you, uh, uh, before you buy the cabinet. So what you want to do is measure the length, but you want to make sure that you measure all the way down here to the edge of the, uh, the wheel or where your plugs come out. Okay, so you got 20 and 3 quarter inches width and 11 inches deep uh, in order to make sure that it fits. And like I said, the, it, it's important to have that. It also is available, what you can get is an insert, which is available on Sewing Machines Plus. So this goes around the machine in order to fill that opening. These are custom made. Uh, Donnell from Sew Steady, that's who our partner is when we make these inserts. Uh, so this is custom made, not just for the outside size, but for the sewing machine size as well. In addition on the Bandicoot, it comes with storage. So you've got the, these cubbies down here for notions. You've got thread spools that'll fit both the, both the cone as well as standard spools. So you've got lots of storage for, uh, uh, for your notions and your thread. So that's the Bandicoot sewing. 50 pound capacity for the, for the machine. So that's heavier than almost, it'll handle a weight that's much more than almost any machine that is out there. It's on locking casters, so you can roll it around. So if, uh, uh, if it isn't a guest room, let's say, when you take it out, you can, you can roll it to the position that you wanna have. So the Bandicoot sewing machine is outstanding. It comes in both teak and white. So depending on what your motif is, you can fit that with it. Uh, and you're able to, to immediately start up with, uh, with sewing. The Bandicoot sewing table by itself on Sewing Machines Plus is $9.99. But make sure you stick around until the very end of the presentation because we're going to talk about a fantastic bundle that Blaine has in store for you on this. The second piece that we want to talk about is the, uh, the Sew Now Sew While Sewing Chair, the Aero Sewing Chair. This is the best-selling sewing chair in America. And what gets you from the start is the fabric. So it comes in a variety of different fabrics from solids to these really exciting prints. But what keeps you for it, and this is so much fun when we go to a trade show because and, and if, when you sit down on it is we talked before, what keeps us sewing? The longer you can sew in comfort, the longer you're going to be able to stay at your sport. The, the aero sewing chair hits you in the perfect spot in the lumbar in the back. So right here in back where you're leaning against all the time, that is exactly where it hits. Uh, it, it is one of those, you're gonna love it when you sit down in order to do it. Uh, it's adjustable in height. So regardless of what your stature, shorter, taller, in between, it goes from 18 inches to I believe 22 inches. So it gives you a lot of height. And what that's important is even if you're smaller in stature, what you wanna make sure when you're working on uh, your sewing cabinet is that you're up at the height to be, have a good view uh, of the needle. So the adjustable height on the sewing chair gives you that capability in order to move and adjust for exactly what you want. It's a very stable chair. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know tipping over or anything else. It's got a five-star base. It's on casters. We all know that when we're we're working on a project, we're moving from a sewing station to an ironing station to a cutting station. This allows you to move around as much as you want on it. And one of the best parts for uh, the sewing chair is the storage. It's got secret storage underneath here so that you can store things like your rotary cutter or your books. One of, the, one of our uh, educators always says, this is a great place for manuals that you don't use too often. And very often you're gonna find something very important in here. Uh, so you wanna keep everything that you can near and dear to your heart right here in the, in the chair that you're going around. So the Aero sewing chair, this one is so wow. So now it's got a wonderful, you have a variety of different solid uh, patterns for it as well. You can find all of them on Sewing Machines Plus in order to do it. The normal price for the So Well, So Now chair is $329 every day on Sewing Machines Plus. But like I said before, stick around to the very end. Blaine's got an incredible bundle for us to talk about in just a little while. The third item that I want to talk about is the Kiwi Multifunction Storage Center. 
So when you are sewing, there's a lot of things. You're not just at your sewing machine. You're also worrying about cutting. You're worrying about ironing. And there's always things you need to get to. So the Kiwi is the next piece that I want to talk about. The Kiwi covers all of these. It, it rolls on casters, so very often you're going to have it right next to your cabinet when you're working. It's got an ironing mat that it comes with. It's got a cutting mat that it, that it comes with. It's got four soft closed drawers for storage. The bottom one is actually large enough that you can put your serger in if you want to store your serger here. The top two drawers come with thread trays. So this will hold, it's got 128 pegs for, uh, for your thread, uh, but it's also adjustable. So regardless of whether you're using smaller embroidery thread or whether you're using some of the larger cones, these uh, pegs will come out so you can adjust based on the size of the thread and the cone that you might be using. So, so you got lots and lots of storage on it. When you aren't using it, it will also close up into a very compact a very compact setup for you. So uh, again, just like with the uh, Bandicoot, it comes in two colors. It comes in ash white. So there's a wood grain on this. It might not be perfectly clear on screen, but there's a wood grain here. For the Bandicoot, same thing. The teak comes in a wood grain as well. So uh, the, the two match each other. So, uh, so they really are intended to be a, a kit that you go with together. Uh, the, the Kiwi has a retail price on Sewing Machines Plus every day at $4.99. But again, we're going to give you an incredible bundle as you start looking at this. The key to your, your sewing furniture is to really identify what type of product, that, uh, what type of sewing that you're doing, and how much space that you have. What's wonderful with the Bandicoot and the Kiwi bundle is the fact it can turn your sewing area uh, from your kitchen where you're constantly doing almost any area can turn into your sewing area. You can start making it your own uh, in order to, to, to manage that and have it so once you start sewing, you're able to do a lot more. So those are the three products that we're starting with. And I want to show a little bit more on the chairs. Again, as we talked about on the chairs, these are the largest, the best selling sewing chair in America. And they come with a variety, you know, that where we started on these was the fabrics that really had a, a kachow to it. You know, they really came out with a, a powerful look. And that's what got the attention as these started. Recently, we've gone to more solid colors. So there's a whole series, there's 10 different fabrics that you can get these in. Uh, five of them are the colors, five of, or I'm sorry, five of them are in the, the fabrics, five of them are in uh, solid colors. We call them the royals. So in, in red, in blue, in gray, uh, they really allow you to uh, set the colors for what the, the motif is for your sewing room in order to help you feel a little bit better. These are incredible always. I love doing shows like this because the chairs always grab all the attention. We're, we're a sewing furniture company. We started with cabinets, but it's always the chairs that always get all the attention as far as, as what they are. Now, I didn't mention on all of this, because of the fact this is obviously online, it's all going to be able to come to you ready to assemble. So because we have 40 years of experience in ready to assemble furniture, we have this figured out so that it makes it as easy as possible for you. So whether you're ordering the Bandicoot cabinet, whether you're ordering the Kiwi, or whether you're ordering one of the chairs, these come in a ready to assemble format. So think Ikea, but we've gotten this down. So there's three different ways that you can manage to make sure it's easy for you to put together. The first one is we include a paper manual, traditional paper manual for you to be able to go through it. Number two on all of these, we've got videos that are online that uh, you can watch. And that's what I would suggest if, when you get this is watch the video before you start putting the product together so that you're familiar with the, the, uh, the parts, you're familiar with the language that might be used in the manual. The third one is Sewing Machines Plus and Arrow both have fantastic customer service departments. And we encourage you to call Arrow Sewing Customer Service 
and they will walk you through any problem that we have. There are literally thousands and thousands of these bandicoots that have been put together by people like you in the field. Uh, it'll show up from FedEx and you will be able to put this together. It, it really is set up in order to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. The chairs are even easier. There are about three pieces that you put together and you'll be all set. There's a couple other chairs that I wanna get in order to show you while we're talking the chairs. They're gonna magically roll into me. So again, the other one that we introduced a couple years ago is this cosplay chair. Definitely not something that uh, when we first, they first introduced it to an old guy like me, I wasn't sure whether or not this was going to be able to do anything, but the cosplay has really taken off. Uh, the pattern is so different, it's so unique that's out there and going after the cosplayers. When you're trying to work with your daughter or particularly your granddaughters in order to work on something on a project, this has really been a great tool for us in order to get some of the younger generation involved in, uh, in sewing and quilting. So take a look, all of these, all 10 of them are online. And so you can go, they, you can zoom in on the fabrics. You, there's 360 degree views of the cabinets and the, uh, the chairs. So you can take a look at it. So the next thing that I wanna to touch on is just a little bit more, if I can get a couple of the chairs out of the way for me, you'll watch me trip over them. Is to talk about that insert in order to make sure you, you understand what that is. So this comes separately, you can order it on Sewing Machines Plus, and it makes sure that the work area that you have becomes a smooth area to work. So the lift on the cabinet is fully adjustable. So regardless of what machine you have, you are able to adjust the height on it very simply. Again, online there are videos in order to allow us to do that. Uh, but the insert itself, completes the project. Without the insert, you kind of have an opening that's here uh, for things to fall into. This is what really makes it complete in order to do that. And like I said, that is able to be ordered on uh, Sewing Machines Plus, uh, either online or you can work with their customer service people in order to get the, the entire project completed uh, for it. So to review a little bit, uh, and then Blaine, you can help me out a little bit with that bundle at the, at the very end. Uh, we start out with the Bandicoot cabinet, compact, but very complete. It'll handle 97% of the machines that are on the market today. The only ones this really won't handle are the very high-end machines that are out there. They tend to get keep getting larger and larger. But this will handle 97% of the machines that are out there. It's got a three-position lift. Take our insert off. It's got the three-position lift so you can be in flatbed. It's in storage or all the way up to free arm. So that's the first one, the, the Bandicoot uh, cabinet. The second piece is the So Wow, So Now chair. Uh, and, uh, and it is uh, available in 10 different fabrics. Uh, check on, best way is to check online for that. I can tell you that these colorful fabrics by far and away, the So Wow, So Now represents about 40% of our total business. The other colorful ones represent about another 30%. So between these colorful patterns, they're about 70 to 80% of our total. But the, the solid fabrics are, are popular as well. And then the last piece is the Kiwi. So this is, is the multi-purpose workstation that gives you storage, it gives you a cutting mat, and it gives you an ironing center. So between the three, uh, you really got uh, the start of a complete sewing room for you to be able to work with. So Blaine, are you ready to talk a little bit of how they can get all three of these at an incredible bundle? Well, I sure am, Jerry. And I tell you, we love the, this, this uh, Bandicoot uh, combo. And Hey, I love it so much. I, I bought this whole setup for my wife for her brother, 3600D. And uh, so I, I think it's a great, great combination. And so again, guys, hey, the price on this is $14.99. You're getting that uh, Bandicoot uh, cabinet. You're getting the Kiwi uh, storage center and you're getting that aero hydraulic chair. But wait, there's more. We have a call in special. So if you give us a call right now, there actually we have a show price that we can give you. We can't advertise it. Hang on, Blaine. I'm just having a little bit of a technical problem here. You should keep talking, telling about that. 
Oh, okay. We, uh, we can't tell you what the price is over there because of advertising restrictions. However, give us a call. The normal price that we're selling is for, the special is $14.99, but we're going to actually beat that price. But you got to give us a call. It's a call-in special, 1-800-401-8151. And guys, I'm telling you, this is a fantastic product, fantastic deal. And uh, again, it's 800-401-8151. If you want to take a look at it, you can go to our website up at the top in the search bar. Just type in Aero Cabinets, and it's going to take you to the product pages on this. Or you can just go in and type Bandicoot 2, and that'll take you right to that product page. And you can see all the different things that comes with it. But Jerry, we've got a lot of questions. If you've got time, I'd like to ask you some questions that's coming through. Absolutely. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, okay, I got to throw a shout out to, to Harley. You know, we saw Harley run out there and he was trying to hide, but but we, you know, uh, Harley uh, uh, we, is good seeing you because I can never get him to come on camera. So I, we, we wanted to, you know, acknowledge Harley. <laughs> we'll drag him out here for you, Blaine. And, and Blaine, I want to say the same thing. We, we've got, uh, you know, Sewing Machines Plus is one of the largest dealers that we have. And the relationship that we have is fantastic. The customer service that Sewing Machines Plus has is unequaled in the country. And uh, so we appreciate being a great partner with you. Oh, uh, we, we love being your partner as well. And hey, uh, some of the great questions that's coming through uh, on that. Could you go back and explain a little bit about that opening and, and the, the measurements? Because the measurements, y'all y'all brought them up on the screen, but they went off pretty quick. Because I, I want to make sure, you know, I know that it fits, you know, you I think you said 80 uh, something percent of the machines out there on the market. Uh, or whatever the percentage was, I can't remember, but I know it's a large percentage, but get kind of, so everybody knows exactly how to measure, measure their machine to make sure it will fit that cabinet. Sure. And we have, I think we'll pull up something here in order to show you exactly how to do that. So measure the machine's length and make sure you go all the way from the left, all the way over to the end of the knobs and the cords. And then the width is a lot simpler uh, because of the fact that most, most machines are a lot narrower than the 11 inches. So the opening is 20 and three quarters by 11 inches. So uh, that is, you know, it's pretty basic. Get out your tape and, uh, and measure the length of the machine and make sure the, the most important part is remember those cords that are usually gonna come out of the right-hand side and the free wheel that's on the, uh, the right-hand side of most machines as well to make sure that that can go in. Uh, usually we're going to see machines that are somewhere in the 16, 17, 18 inch, uh, some are even less than that. So I think most people are going to find out, like I said, about 97% of the machines out there will fit into the Bandicoot. So uh, you shouldn't have any problem, but it's always much safer to check first. The ones that won't fit in here are the very large uh, embroidery machines uh, that have come out, the, the very high-end machines that have come out just within the last uh, four or five years. Does that help? Yes, Jerry, that's perfect. So, hey, and another question I had, does the uh, the cabinet uh, have, the Bandicoot cabinet, does it, and the Kiwi, both, do they have locking casters on them so you can lock them? Great question, yes. Both of them come with locking casters on the front of the cabinet. Uh, obviously, that's the easiest place in order to get to them. Uh, they, they come with, uh, uh, especially the Bandicoot because it's a little bit heavier cabinet comes with a heavy duty caster. The, uh, the Kiwi comes with a little lighter duty, but both of them have locking casters on them. Jerry, and the other question is they, they were talking all about assembly and I know that we, we, you know, touched on a little bit. These are not assembled, but does it have pretty good manuals to, for the assembly? And, and in your view, how easy could somebody... Uh, assemble one of these by themselves? You know, great question, Blaine. And there's, there's a distinction between easy and time. Okay, so easy, yes. There's over 1 million uh, aero sewing cabinets that are out there that have all been ready to assemble and, uh, and all put together by people exactly like our customers who are watching here. So easy is not difficult, is, is absolutely. Time for the, for the Bandicoot cabinet, you're probably going to plan on a couple hours, you know? So the best it's going to show up in, in three boxes. You're going to spread it out over the living room floor, uh, grab a glass of wine, start reading the, the directions. And uh, in about two hours, you'll have it all put together. For the Kiwi table, 
Uh, that's probably about an hour. It's much simpler in order to, uh, to put together. And the chairs are literally about five minutes, 10 minutes in order to uh, put together. You'll spend more time opening the box and getting the pieces out for the chair than you will in the actual assembly process. Also online, I, I should mention everything I would said before, everything, there's videos that are online. Uh, what I suggest, what we always suggest for people is watch the video, speed it up a little bit. It's not that long, but it'll give you a good sense of the, the steps that are in the process. Uh, and that'll make the assembly process a little bit easier. Okay, Jerry, and another question we have is, you know, these are somewhat a little bit heavy. Uh, are they shipped by like UPS, for, you know, or FedEx, or are they shipped by freight? Great question. Nope, they, they all come FedEx. Uh, and so it's going to come in three boxes. Each of the boxes are going to, uh, uh, to be uh, about 40 pounds, 40, 45 pounds. Uh, and uh, so it's very easy to, easy to move them. Uh, you know, you can drag them in, lay them in the living room floor, unpack them. Uh, it's not difficult at all. Again, these are the majority of people who put this together are women over 50 years old. So, so we keep that in mind when we're building the, uh, the boxes, when we're building the assembly manuals, when we're building the videos, we understand who our customer is and, uh, and who needs to be putting this together. All right, Jerry, I got a couple questions about the chair now. Uh, one of them is, I know, you know, they want to know what's the height adjustment, uh, you know, range on that chair, and the other, and what is the weight capacity? Absolutely. So the weight capacity is 300 pounds. I'll do that one. That's a little bit easier for me. I know that one off the top of my head. Uh, so it's 300 pounds, and, uh, you know, it is, and, and we test that all the time. So we're good with that. For the height adjustable, it's 18 to 22 inches. So, so at the low end, it's 18. At the high end, you're 22 inches. So, so I'm about 5'11". So that gives you an idea of, you know, my, my, I can still get my feet flat on the floor, but, you know, it's a little bit uncomfortable for me. Uh, I wouldn't have the, uh, this this high. At 18 inches, we're going to be down more. But again, when you're working on your project, uh, it may be the opposite. If you're a little bit shorter in stature, you may want to have it up high all the way. And then on the Bandicoot cabinet, there actually is a, a ledge here that you can put your feet on, or some sewers will actually have a little stool there that they'll put their feet on in order to make sure that they are uh, at a level uh, comfortable for sewing at, at the needle height. I got to put it down a little bit though, it's too high. <laughs> Well, that's a great explanation, Jerry. So, hey, we want to, you know, appreciate you coming on the air today and doing this. This was a great demonstration, and I hope everybody, you know, really got to see those because I the the camera does not ju do those justice. The cabinets are absolutely beautiful in person. I love the wood grain. Whether you get the ash white or that teak, uh, they're beautiful. The chairs are very vibrant and colorful. So I want to remind everybody right now that's watching how you can get this, and we've got a great special put together for you. It's called the Bandicoot 2 Sewing Cabinet, and you're getting that Kiwi storage cabinet that comes with it, along with the Aero Hydraulic Chair, all three of them together. The price is $14.99, but we actually have a call-in special. We're actually going to have, we have a show special pricing right now on this, so you got to give us a call. We can't tell you what that show special price is, but we can, you can call in and get it. Uh, great, great price. We never get them this, this low. I promise you this is going to be the best price in a long time. So give us a call at 800-401-8151. And we have an agent standing by. I know the phone lines have been extremely busy since yesterday. If you can't get through on the phone lines, Kyle has been putting that Google Sheets link up in the chat on both Facebook and YouTube. All you have to do, if you can't get through on the phones, hit that link and it's going to open up a Google Sheets. You just write your name, a phone number, and the product that you're interested in, and it, it updates in our call center real time. As soon as they get off the phone, one of the operators, they're going to give you a call. So be looking for that 800 number, giving you a call back, and uh, they'll, they'll take your order or answer any questions you have on it. But great, great price on this Bandicoot combo. And guys, I, I re highly recommend this. Uh, it's a beautiful cabinet. Chair is great, great quality and it's got that storage under it, and then you can put a ton of stuff in that Kiwi storage cabinet. So that whole combination together is a great combo, 
And like Jerry said, 97% of the machines sold out there will fit this cabinet, which is a you know great, great thing. And uh, we're super excited to be able to offer that to you. So make sure you give us a call if you're interested in one of these cabinets. We also have financing available. We have special financing just for SoFest. So make sure you give us a call. We can get those monthly payments down real low for you. So uh, give us a call again, 800-401-8151. All right, guys, let's move on. So thanks to, to Arrow Cabinets and Jerry for coming on. Uh, Arrow is one of our, our sponsors as well, and, and we sure do appreciate them being part of SoFest, and we love working with them. So, hey, next up, guys, we have Mark Martin coming on, and it's not the race car driver, Mark Martin. It's Mark Martin, the famous Mark Martin from Grace. And uh, he is the vice president of marketing at the Grace Company. He's been at Grace for about 10 years, and uh, we really enjoy working with Grace. And uh, y'all, everybody knows Nathan Irsnoznik. Uh, he's the marketing director and uh, sales director over there. But Mark Martin, uh, we love working with Mark as well. And we got Mark on this morning. So Mark, are you ready to go? All right, you gotta unmute yourself. <laughs> we have no audio. How's that, Blaine? Hey, that'll work every oh. time. <laughs> So they how do you that sometimes for me? I'm I'm doing great, Blaine. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing fantastic. Excited to be here. I'm really excited to be here with you as well. I um very appreciative of of what So Machines Plus what they do. You got you have a wonderful team. We're very excited to be a part of this wonderful event. It's just been phenomenal with everybody you have on with the products that Grace has been able to uh, provide and to demonstrate. Um, you know, be a sponsor of this wonderful event. We're just very grateful for what you do for us um, and for what your team, uh, you guys are a really phenomenal uh, dealer to work with and we're very appreciative to be here with you guys. Well, thanks, Mark. And hey, we feel the same way about y'all. We love working with Grace and I know you've got, we're gonna talk all about the True Cut products today. And you know, that's one of my favorite products that, that y'all have. And, and I know you have some great, great, you know, quilting machines. But these products are so innovative and just awesome. And I remember, you know, the last event we had these on here and we absolutely just sold out of these things. They just was incredible, the sales on it. So, guys, I'm, I'm excited for you to get going and show us all about the True Cut. Yeah, fantastic. And you're, Blaine, you're absolutely right. You know, with my name, uh, Mark Martin, I get that often. Oh, the race car driver. So sometimes I use that to my advantage. Um, others, they look at it like, who? So, yep, not the race car driver. Um, I'm the bald version of, of Mark Martin. So, um, but Blaine, you're absolutely right. True Cut has been one that's been uh, so wonderful in all the quilters' homes. You know, yesterday Nathan did a great job on talking about the circle cutter and the rulers that came with it. Uh, True Cut just has a phenomenal line from, from the circle cutter to the blades to the mats. And we'll get into that uh, a little later in, in this SoFest. Uh, and today we're looking at two of the products that have been very popular and, and well needed in the quilters homes. And they are the electric sharpener and the manual sharpener. Um, much like what we've done with all of our True Cut Blaine is we provide solutions to those issues, right? From our cutting guide systems, uh, to making sure that you're very accurate, uh, very safe, and enjoying what you're doing. And so there's three things that I would love to talk about when I describe and share with you the electric sharpeners from, um, I want to look how, how easy it is um, to keep you sharp, how safe it is, um, and how accurate you can be. Because let's face it, how many of us, and I want to see, you know, with a number one, how many of us have dull blades, that we continue to use and we have to finish a project. We have several quilt tops that we want to finish and we're looking to make those cuts and it's late at night and we're using the dull blade and we're really just forcing that blade into the fabric uh, to make those cuts. Um, if I could get a one, I'm sure I'm going to get plenty ones out there just because we all do that. Uh, the stores are closed, uh, we don't have any more sharp blades and we just use what we have. And over time, by doing so, that could you know, damage your mats. Dull blades are not good to be used on your mats. And quite frankly, it is not good to use with your arm either because we're doing a lot of force to get that cutting um, 
when there's alternatives out there, you know, Grace Company with True Cut, we have alternatives to make sure that you stay um, sharp, um, that you're using your blade safe. And uh, we do so by having our two sharpeners. Um, and before I get into these, uh, a little bit of a, a background with the, with the sharpeners. Uh, we know that um, blades are, are expensive, right? We want to go buy blades, we want to buy a pack of two, pack of five. Uh, in the meantime, that's a lot of money that we're spending on blades just to have them go dull again. And we want to be able to bring those blades back. And so several years ago when we developed our sharpeners, uh, we knew how incredible these were, but we also knew how skeptical, right? How skeptical quilters can be. And I'm sure, you know, with a lot of the um, quilters out there, they tried to do some kind of sharpening uh, mechanism to make sure that their blade stays sharp. So that we're, way we're not cutting with the dull blade. And over time we found that those sharpeners haven't worked. Well, the nice thing is with Grace is we did a, a sharpener set that used for centuries. We didn't change the process, uh, Blaine. What we did was we wanted to keep that process. And there's two ingredients in our sharpeners that make them work um, and that they are phenomenal and they are the stones. Um, and that's the question we get often is, do those sharpeners really work and will they work with my blade are the two questions we get. And so I wanna um, answer those questions by saying yes and absolutely they'll work with your, uh, with your blade. Um, we have our manual sharpener and if we get a close up on the manual sharpener here, this is one that has been very, very um, well received. It's perfect for uh, the cutting table process. We do a lot of cutting from the cutting table and we go from cutting and we wanna go to sharpening. And so with our manual sharpener, this is one that um, allows customers um, to continue to use their blade more. As I mentioned, blades are expensive and we keep our blades. For whatever reason, there are a stack of blades that quilters keep in a used container and they just don't throw them away, you know, for safety purposes, they don't throw them away. Well, that is a lot of money sitting in those containers that we can bring back. And so that's perfect to bring back with our electric sharpener and with our manual sharpener. Now, with our manual sharpener, what's so nice about this is, first of all, it has rubber feet. And let's go ahead and get another nice close-up. So it has rubber feet uh, to keep it from sliding on your table. This is, again, perfect for your cutting room. We're gonna go ahead and put that down. And that stays right on the table where it won't slide. Now, I talked about that key ingredient that makes this sharpener uh, so well received and really phenomenal when it sharpens those blades. It uses a diamond stone. And so um, it has one diamond stone on the one side. Now, what we wanna do upon sharpening is we do not wanna keep our hands on the sharpener. We wanna make sure that they stay away. Cause even with a dull blade, you can still do some damage on your on your fingers. We want to make sure we keep our our ten digits right. We don't want to we don't want to mess them up. So keep them safe. Um, one of the things I'd mentioned earlier was easy. And so let's build upon how easy it is to use our product. Um, we want to make sure that it is super easy for you um, as you're looking to sharpen your blade because we are handling a blade and we don't want to um, uh, damage our fingers or any other surface. So how this works is we keep it on the cutting table. And what's so perfect is I can go from cutting, and this is a little, you can see it, it, it kind of stayed, so it didn't get a good clean cut. Um, so there's a little um, nick in there and it doesn't cut all the way. So I wanna go ahead and sharpen uh, this 60 millimeter blade right now to make sure I get those fine cuts. Um, because blades are two-sided, we wanna make sure we get both sides sharpened. Um, so because we have a diamond down the one side, we do want to rotate um, the sharpener. And that's the only time that we want to touch the sharpener is to make sure that when we just rotate it over. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And because it's manual, you are doing the work. You are going from cutting 
to sharpening. So keep this on your cutting table. Um, take it with you when you travel. Uh, bring it with you wherever you go so that way when you're, you're doing your cutting, you can have a nice sharp blade all throughout the day um, and even at night when we're cutting and the stores are closed and we're dealing with a dull blade. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. And what's gonna happen as I go down, the blade is gonna rotate. I'm gonna bring this actually over to the close up so we can get a nice picture. And you're gonna notice that blade is gonna rotate, um, if you can see that. So that's gonna go along the stone. You can actually hear that. You can hear that do its magic, all right? Very simple, very easy. And when I do um, about five or 10 on the one side, I'm gonna turn it over and do the same amount on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and run that through again. You can either do it this way or you can go back and forth if you wanted to. I like to go forward and keep doing that pressure. Now, let's go ahead and make a couple cuts if we can get the, um, the main camera. So we're gonna make a couple cuts. So before the blade was skipping and not cutting. So now as I go to cut, we can see that that is now cutting perfectly. Oh, got one right there. Okay, so it is absolutely phenomenal to finish your cuts over and over and over again, just from going from cutting to sharpening. And so I love when I talk to quilters, when I travel, the quilters ask, first of all, does it work and will it work my blade? And as I've clearly shown, absolutely it will work because of those key ingredients, that diamond stone. I've had many customers come up, Blaine, and say, you know what, I was cutting with a dull blade, I picked up that manual sharpener, and it is just unbelievable. I can continue to cut longer. I don't have to worry about the dull blade again. So if you are out there, and I want you to, I want you to think about this because I know there's a lot of ones that came in. If you're out there and you've been cutting with a dull blade and it's been very irritating, right? You get the skipped uh, cuts and there's just a lot of pressure on your arm. Well, get the manual sharpener. Keep it on your cutting table so you can go from cutting to sharpening to keep that blade sharp throughout your cutting process. Um, we'll talk about the, the life of the blade here in a minute when you know when you're sharpening because we all know when we're sharpening blades, they can, it can get flat spots, it can get thin. So we'll get that here in a, uh, into a minute here. But the, the manual sharpener has been uh, great for all quilters because they keep it on the cutting table and they can take it with them as they travel. So again, cutting to sharpening, it uses diamond stones, uh, rubber feet, and it keeps your blade sharp and it's easy and it's gonna make you very accurate. Um, outside of that, um, we also have our electric sharpener. Now this is our number one item outside of the True Grips, Nathan mentioned yesterday, that we sell. This, is, this comes to a close second. Um, because of the ability to sharpen it, um, it takes out the manual work. The, the linear sharpener, you're doing the work, which is perfect. The electric sharpener, however, it is run uh, by plug. You plug it into your wall, and it has, I'm gonna get a close up here to show you. It has a diamond stone at the top, and there's one at the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and take this blade out. What's nice, we'll get into the features here, but I'm gonna take this blade and it has the diamond stone right at the bottom there. So it uses diamond stones top and bottom. And what that allows us to do, if we can get the uh, main camera, what that allows us to do is do both sides of your blades at once. It will go ahead and get the top of your blade and the bottom of your blade at one time. The instructions are very clear and super easy to understand this you don't need to be a rocket scientist or sharpen your blades now. You can just put your blade in, close the lid, and we're getting that here right now. As we look at the sharpener, um, another part I love about the sharpener is it uses, um, you can see the indents down here, probably not because it's black, but there are grooves at the bottom of the sharpener for the markings of where your blade goes. So as an example, I'm gonna go ahead and put this 45 millimeter blade back in there. 
okay? And it's gonna sit right in the middle. And it does, again, the top and the bottom of your blade. Now, it is loud, so I won't go ahead and operate that, but it's very simple as we go ahead and shut that lid and we hold it down and it has a lock feature, which is really nice. So you can lock that in if you wanted to, or we can hold it down um, and then press this button down uh, for 15 seconds and you're gonna repeat that process. This electric sharpener is fantastic if you've kept your blades. Part of the reason why we like to keep our blades is because again, safety, even though they're dull, they can still create some, um, some cuts and we don't want that. So it is very nice that this system is very um, safe for you to handle. It comes with tweezers. Let's get a close up, it comes with tweezers. It comes with uh, oil to oil your stones. It does come with a cleaning cloth and a tool to replace or to move or to clean your diamond stones. Diamonds last forever, right? That's what I keep hearing, diamonds last forever. So once you want to clean your diamond stones, you can take them out if you want, run them under uh, you know, soapy water um, or use that oil to keep them clean. Um, it comes with good instructions as well. So follow the instructions. Um, I like uh, to do 15 seconds um, on the blade. That's one time. And depending on how dull your blade is, you may want to consider repeating that process. We all know as we're sharpening blades that it won't bring it back to a near factory sharp edge, or it won't bring it back to a factory sharp edge, but it will bring it back to a near factory sharp edge. Um, now, let's talk about how many times you can sharpen a blade, okay? Now that really depends on the user. I had one individual come to me and she said she used one blade for nine months, okay? Nine months, probably a lot of money saved in those nine months. And um, she probably didn't cut as often as, as, as well, but the blades will start telling yourself when they're due to re get replaced. And what I mean by that is they'll get flat spots in there or they'll get thinner, right? Um, almost liken it to a, um, a chef sharpening the chef's knife, right? Over time, you're gonna get flat spots and then that knife is gonna be, is, is done and it's time to get a new one. So you cannot sharpen the blade and use it forever. You will eventually need to buy new blades. And at that point, it's really how long you've been cutting, um, how often you cut, and the blade itself would tell you over time because you're gonna notice it, it will have more flat spots than before it started. And once that process starts happening, then it is actually time to move your blade, put it away, and probably, um, you know, probably throw it away at this time because you won't be able to bring that blade back. Uh, so how many times you can sharpen your blade again would really rely on the amount of cutting that you're doing. And again, the blade will let you know by the flat spots that's happening and the thinner it gets is also unsafe. So when that starts happening, then you can go ahead and get rid of your blade. So that's a question we get often as well is how long can you sharpen your blades? Will this work with my blade? and does it work? And so I think we covered, does it work? Absolutely it does. And then this one, um, it's great for all those blades that you've kept. That's a lot of money that you wanna bring back. Now, we sell blades um, through Soul Machines Plus, and so uh, we understand that having a sharp blade and buying a blade is ideal, um, but eventually you're going to get a new blade because you won't be able to sharpen your blade um, all the time. And so keep that in mind as you're sharpening it. It's something that you know you're going to go through um, and find out. Um, I see another good question. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, do you need to clean uh, the diamonds? So, so yeah, we recommend cleaning the diamonds. Um, you can again, run it under soapy water uh, to make sure they stay clean. And the electric sharpener, they're really easy to take out uh, to make sure those are clean. You take care of those diamonds, those diamonds will take care of you. Um, but again, I go back to the user who has these dull blades. You know, think about the, the, the stress you're putting on your arm, the stress you're putting on your cutting mat, um, the, you know, the damage that could happen from digging into that cutting mat. Keeping a nice sharp blade at all times is ideal for your cutting needs and it's wonderful. Um, and especially through um, Sewing Machines Plus, there's great deals. And before I go on any further, Blaine, let's go ahead and tell everybody who's watching 
the wonderful promotion and discount that you get when you purchase our sharpeners, the bundle that comes with it. Well, thanks, Mark. We've got some great bundles put together. So that first one, Kyle, if you could pull that overlay up, I'll tell everybody a little bit about this. This is that electric sharpener that Mark was showing. And again, he's talking about it sharpens both blades at the same time. Hey, this is $55.97, which is a great price just for that sharpener by itself. But not only are we gonna give you the sharpener, we're gonna throw in two of the rulers. You're gonna get that three by 18 inch ruler. And you're also gonna get that bigger one, that six and a half by 24 and a half ruler, absolutely free with the purchase of this. And then we have the next one, we have the other one. And it was that manual uh, sharpener that Mark was showing you. And it's for you know, any rotary blade that you have, you can sharpen it on this. Uh, we're, it's $27.97 uh, you know, for this, and you're saving a ton of money. This is normally $57.90. You're getting that uh, manual sharpener, but we're also going to throw in the 3-inch by 18-inch ruler absolutely free with it. So we go both those specials, great, great prices on both of them. And again, uh, if y'all y'all can go to our website, soulmachinesplus.com, up in that search bar at the very top, just put in True Cut. It'll take you to the True Cut page or category page. And it'll show you all the different products we have under True Cut and with the blades, the rotary cutters and all that. But these two specials are on there again. So you can go right to the website or you can give us a call at 800-401-8151. So Mark, I know we probably have some more questions out there. And uh, so Roger, do we have any questions coming through? Yeah, they're asking about the electric sharpener and what size blades. Okay, great question. Mark, the question was, on that electric sharpener, what size of blades will it, will it sharpen? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something I was uh, loving to ask after, after those wonderful prices. Blaine, before we get into the blades, those are great prices, free rulers, a fantastic combo price. Um, and if I dare say, get both and i'm going to explain why i say get both of those packages you can have both sharpeners um so i i, I would suggest you get both and here's um here's why after i share the blades so the 60 uh the 28 and the 45 so the standard three size of blades you can sharpen in here again the 28 millimeter the 45 and the 60 millimeter and that's the same with the manual sharpener as well if you're looking to sharpen your blades all three the standard sizes will sharpen both in the manual sharpener and in the electric sharpener. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I love both those packages. And I've been hearing often that people have been buying both just because of the functionality of it. The manual sharpener stays on your cutting board and your cutting mat at all times, right? So when you're cutting it, you go from cutting to sharpening. You don't have to take your blade out. You can keep it right in there um, to sharpen your blade. The electric sharpener, Again, they're perfect for all the blades that you've kept. Um, and I'm curious, I want to, you know, see a number two in there. How many of you quilters keep your blades? You know, go ahead and put a number two in there because I'm sure you're going to see a lot of these twos and a lot of these blades being kept. And again, that's a lot of money um, that you're building up in those containers. And if you've been keeping your blades, the electric sharpener is the perfect way to bring those blades back. They're already out of your cutter, okay? that comes with tweezers, so you can grab the tweezers that this comes with, and you can grab the blade out of your used container and put them in here to sharpen it. And you'll be amazed how much money you're saving um, and over time keeping a sharp blade. You know, I talked about the easy, the safe, and accurate. Um, we cannot stress enough the importance of having a sharp blade. And so even though you can't make it to the store or the store's closed, or you have to finish this project, use these sharpeners to make sure that you stay sharp because in the end, you're really doing a, um, a lot of disjustice to your arm, to your cutting mat. And if you start ruining those, it's harder to replace your arm, right? Um, and the mats, you can replace your mats, but we wanna make sure that your arm has the energy to cut through all your fabric. And so keep that in mind that if you keep your blades, you want to have nice sharp blades and there's a lot of twos coming in blaine a lot of twos so for everybody who has a two out there you kept your blades this is what you want to buy go to so machines plus purchase through their wonderful team you know give them a call make sure that this is uh, something that you really want um, same with the linear sharpener again all these blades 
Um, we want to make sure you are staying sharp with what you're doing. You're being very accurate and you're being very safe in your cutting process. So again, both of these, you can do all three sizes. Um, and as Blaine mentioned, you get the rulers. I know Nathan had mentioned for those who didn't really see yesterday or just coming in, these rulers are fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and show you the three by 18. Both of these come three by 18 and then the electric sharpener, you get the six and a half by 24 and a half ruler with it. But these rulers, they are fantastic. Um, you know, they are um, a molded injection, which keeps it very durable, very strong. So going onto your floor, how many of us have dropped our rulers and then they crack on the edges, right? These ones, very durable. The holes are perfect marking. Let's bring this in again. Um, let's get a close up. Look at the holes again. This is such a unique ruler in the industry that it provides so many wonderful features to your cutting. And the best part is, is you can use any cutter with this. I know we'll talk a little bit about the cutting system that we provide, but these holes are perfect for marking, for holding, um, and it just gives that extra durability, plus the taller edge. That's the main thing that people love is that taller edge gives you the safety feature that we keep talking about. Your blade will not go up and over and potentially nick your fingers with our True Cut ruler. So what a wonderful pa package between the three by 18 ruler, the six and a half by 24 and a half ruler that you get. And if you get both packages, then you can get two three by 18s, one to leave home and one to travel with. And then you have both sharpeners you can keep it on your cutting table and keep the electric for all those blades that you've kept away for so many months that you can bring back. Again, I love the True Cut product. Um, I love to hear stories of people commenting like, oh, I've been wanting something like that. I do have a lot of blades. I do cut with the dull blade. I want a sharper blade. There's so many variables that come in and to be able to be a part of you and what you do and keep staying sharp saying uh, easy, um, being accurate. That is a motto of True Cut, easy, safe, and accurate. And it doesn't stop with our electric sharpener and our manual sharpener. Um, and in fact, it enhances it by keeping you um, sharp at all times. Um, again, I love this. And um, I suggest that you go on Sew Machines Plus and get them as a combo unit um, at $27 for the linear sharpener and over 50 for the electric sharpener. Um, just so you guys know, this in itself is $80. And you can get both of these sharpeners for a great price through this so fast. I, I, I can't believe that, that's phenomenal. Um, if there's any other questions, I would love to answer before we um, sound off here. Blaine, do we have any other questions? Hey Mark, we sure do. They're wanting to know if that uh, electric cutter, does it run off batteries or is it actually plug in the wall? Great question. It plugs into the wall. Um, it has an outlet that you plug it in, then you yep, just plug that into your wall. And then the back here, I'll go show, show ahead where it kind of plugs in. So you go ahead and plug it in right back there. Yep, and plug that in. Um, so it's non-battery operated. Great question. All right. Well, hey, I think that was it for the questions. I'm going to show everybody one more time how they can get these products. And if Kyle, if we can put that overlay up there and show everybody, there is your electric cutter. That is going to cut all sizes or the, the three different sizes of the 20 millimeter, the 45 millimeter, and the 60 millimeter uh, rotary blades. You can sharpen those. It sharpens both sides at the same time. We're selling it right now. It's uh, for 27, or I'm sorry, 55.97. And you're going to get for 50, 55 97, not only are you going to get that, that sharpener, you're going to get two of the, the rulers. You're going to get that three inch by 18 inch ruler. You're also going to get in that six and a half inch by 24 and a half inch ruler, absolutely free with that sharpener. And uh, everybody needs one of these sharpeners if you use a lot of rotary tools. The second one that we've got, the special we got that Mark showed, is that manual sharpener. That manual sharpener, it sits there, it's got the, it's, you know, it'll stay right on your, uh, cutting mat. It's anti-slip and basically you can just use any rotary cutter that you have in, in the same three sizes of blades and it'll sharpen that manually. And also we're throwing in, it's $27.97, but we're going to throw in that three inch by 18 inch ruler, uh, absolutely free with it. Uh, so both specials, great, great specials. And as Mark says, everybody needs both of those. So, hey, we encourage you all to go on the website right now. Just type in True Cut 
in the search bar. It'll take you to the True Cut category page. Not only do we have these two specials, but we have all the other True Cut products on there. We encourage you to go take a look at it and, uh, and purchase one of those. We love these products. So, hey, again, we want to thank Grace for being one of our sponsors. And, and Mark, thank you for being uh, on the show. And uh, I know that we'll probably see you later on in the week. Absolutely, you will. Thank you, Blaine, for having us. Appreciate it. All right. So, guys, we're going to move on right along. Uh, great products from Grace as usual. And uh, next up, hey, is going to be one of our educational classes that we've had. Uh, we've got two of these scheduled today. And uh, this next guest, I can't say enough about her, um, is Joanne Banco. She was a graduate from Progressive Fashion School that was formerly located in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, she is an author, a freelance sewing educator, self-proclaimed sewing cheerleader. Uh, she's a brother ambassador. Uh, she contributes regularly on to the official brother blog and Stitching Social. Uh, she's a guest instructor on the popular uh, TV show on, on PBS, It's So Easy. Uh, and she's also an author of a book called Wrapped in Embroidery. Please welcome a good friend of mine, Joanne Banco, to the show. Hey, everybody. Hey, Blaine. Hey, Joanne. How are you? so fast. Hey, so happy you're here. I'm excited. And I uh, got to thank you. You're the sweetest person I know. And, uh, you know, I've been kind of, I've, you know, had my little accent and I've been kind of sick. I got a, a little gift in the mail and it was from you. And I just think that was so sweet of you to do that. And I appreciate that. And we're so happy that you're here with us. And uh, I know this, with, this is in your ballpark. When you get to do education and teaching people, this is in your wheelhouse. And I know today uh, it's no exception. I love it. I love it. I was born to teach <laughs> and share the love of sewing. Absolutely. Well, I know. And, you know, you're, you inspire a lot of people around you and you and I've worked together for a lot of years at events. And I've always seen the reaction people have with you in your classes. And I can, I'm so super pumped that you're here with us uh, this week. And we got you for two different classes and uh, man, oh man, uh, today, I think this first one, we're, we're going to talk all about buttons. Is that correct? Buttons and buttonholes. Okay, button and buttonholes. Yeah, they, so they go together. They like, kind of go uh, together, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know everybody's super excited, so I'm not going to you know, hold it up anymore. Let's get going and teach everybody about, about all these button and buttonholes. Okay, very good. So would you believe that, um, first of all, today I hope to take the fear out of um, sewing buttonholes and sewing buttons on. And would you believe that at one time I had <laughs> the buttonhole phobia? <laughs> I was uh, trained in fashion school to do buttonholes by hand and buttonholes that we call bound buttonholes. Maybe some of you have, have done some of those. So we didn't even have a machine in our fashion school at that time that did machine made buttonholes. And so I hadn't done very many. And really, it wasn't until... Uh, I came upon the brother machines and got my first machine that had, you know, all the bells and whistles and had the beautiful buttonholes built in that I was able to overcome that, that fear myself. So I hope to um, help you through that today. So I'm going to show you just a couple uh, quick samples and then I'm going to switch my camera over to the machine and you won't see me, you'll see the machine um, stitching out. But one of the first things when we talk about um, buttonholes, and we're going to start with the buttonholes is uh, placement and the proper stitching for buttonholes. And what in the world do I mean by that? Well, if you went to your closet right now and you took everything out that had a buttonhole, you're probably gonna find a mishmash of all different kinds of things. So I'm gonna give you kind of the, the rules. Now remember, sewing enthusiasts are always in the driver's seat when they're in front of their sewing machine and you can break the rules as, as much as you want. But generally, let me grab this, um, this blouse here. This is a, a ready-made blouse. And generally, whenever you have a band on a blouse or very common, you'll see this on a, on a men's shirt, uh, you want your buttonholes to go um, uh, vertical. So up and down so that they're centered directly on that band. That would be what would be considered normal standard traditional. And part of the reason for that is because you're dealing with a narrow area and sometimes that's actually defined by uh, uh, a seam there and you want your buttonhole to be centered right between that. So I'll show you in a minute uh, marking for this type of buttonhole. Now on the 
opposite, which is uh, also common, is we would have garments, and this garment I constructed from scratch. Let me get that a little bit better into view there. And this um, particular uh, jacket, kind of a jacket blouse, has a facing. So, you know, when you have a facing, it goes all the way up into the um, shoulder area and then curves, and you have a much wider area there. So when you have a situation like that, your buttonholes uh, should be stitched in a horizontal um, uh, uh, layout. So that's just going to give you, um, you know, a, a little better look and the buttonholes are going to lay a little bit better on the facing that way. OK, so those are just kind of, like I said, the, the traditional rules. And keep in mind, you know, you can break those rules if, if you want to. OK, so let's just um, show you the the marking. So this would be marking for your horizontal buttonholes. And you're going to see in just a minute that I'm going to recommend marking all of your buttonholes with a T shape. That's going to give you. Um, the ability to line your buttonhole up perfectly on the machine, and it's going to allow you to stitch every buttonhole straight. Okay. When we uh, wrap up here today, I got seven tips, and so I may repeat myself a couple times, but kind of my top tips for um, for sewing buttonholes. Now, again, if we've got a you know something like a men's shirt pattern, um, you're going to have um, some type of a band area for that, and then you can see how I've marked my buttonholes um, uh, vertically, but I would go ahead and draw that T shape into each one. I'll just do that on a, on a couple, um, because that is gonna be where my starting point for each and every buttonhole is. So you would want that consistently marked with your spacing. Now let's talk about spacing for just a minute because most of your patterns are gonna come with a spacing guide, you know, these big long things that where they mark all of the buttonhole placement. And that is good, well, and fine. But here's another kind of rule that we want to break a little bit or bend a little bit um, that's going to help you a lot. And that is when you go to do your, your buttonholes, consider this as a guide. And the spacing is usually uh, very accurate for the amount of buttonholes they're calling for on the pattern and the size. And make sure you stick with what they've chosen um, and it, if you're going to use those markings. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have to reconfigure what, what the spacing is. But what they've done is they've just um, created an average. And if you have ever uh, seen somebody wearing a blouse or a shirt where it kind of looks like that button is just about ready to bust, what it means is that placement wasn't perfect for that person, okay? So how do we get perfect placement for every person? We try that garment on and we put our first buttonhole at the point of the most stress. So that's generally going to be wherever the widest part of the body is. That's going to vary from person to person. So make sure that you um, go ahead and, and, you know, find that spot, mark that one first, and then sure, go ahead and use the spacing that they allowed for each consecutive buttonhole, but start there at that, at that point of stress. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, flip my camera here for a minute. So give me just a second here. And we'll get you positioned here so that you can see the machine and you can see the bed of the machine. Got a little bit of wobblies today. Believe it or not, okay, we all experience um, technical challenges, right? I booted up my computer about two hours before the show was uh, ready to start. And guess what? No boot up. That computer has just decided to uh, decided to die on me. So, okay. So here we go. We've got that um, that T shaped marking, and I'm going to show you now how to properly place the button in the button sewing foot. And I'm using a foot that is very, very, very common. So you're going to find that the vast majority of our modern machines today use a one-step buttonholer. And with the one-step buttonholer, 
It allows you to simply slide the opening, place your button in the back, close it up nice and snug and tight. And if you notice the um, spacing between this little bumper and this little bumper is designed to match the length of the button with just a little bit of extra space. So you don't have to measure the length for the buttonhole. You only have to measure the um, starting point and the position. Okay. I'd love to know if any of you have, you know, have this in your uh, toolbox and have just been afraid to snap it on and use it. So today we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, I want you to notice that we've also got, um, let me use a little pointer tool here. We've also got very clear markings for where the center of the buttonhole should be aligned. So that's going to match my center line that I've drawn and then where the starting point should be. So this has a little green dash on the outside and a little red dash on the inside so that you can see exactly where that's gonna line up. Those markings should be directly in line with the top of my upside down T because that's essentially what that is. Now I marked my line pretty fat here today, pretty thick. You want to use a, as you know as narrow of a line as possible because every little bit counts, and you don't want to start one buttonhole at the you know beginning of that wide line and then a second buttonhole at the end of that wide line. So you want it to be consistent. So you know, kind of a do as I say, not as I did. I just wanted to make this really clear. Draw yourself a um, a fine line. And what are you going to draw it with? Well, that's kind of you know, um, personal choice. I like to use for washable items, I like to use a, uh, a washout marker. This washes out with, uh, with water. It's very, very popular. We use this for a lot of sewing, but you could use a, a chalk marker if you like. Um, you could use this type of marker. If you have a, a fabric that's really hard to mark on, I'm gonna give you kind of like a little um, out of the box tip. You could take a piece of wash away stabilizer. You could then, you know, cut your um, pattern piece to match that water soluble stabilizer and make all of your markings directly on that. Lay that over the top of your fabric and stitch through it. And that would be really, really handy if you were working with dark fabrics because it's always traditionally hard to. Um, hard to uh, mark on dark fabric. So there's just a little kind of uh, last minute tip for you there. Okay, so we know where we need to start. We don't need to know where we're going to end because that's going to be predetermined by the spacing here. Okay, we're going to get to that machine in just a minute. And I'm using my, my little brother here, but I want to mention one other thing. There are many different types of, types of buttons out there, right? Okay. We have um, buttons such as novelty buttons. Isn't that just the cutest thing, okay? Well, when you think about a novelty button, it, it doesn't have a circular shape in all likelihood. So how in the world is this buttonhole foot supposed to measure uh, a button that, you know, we need the circle because it's gonna have, the buttonhole is gonna have to go around that entire, um, you know, circumference of that. So what do we do? Well, we simply find another button. Oh, and by the way, don't we all have uh, grandma's button jar? <laughs> maybe maybe you do, maybe you don't, but um, some of these buttons in here are, are generations old and I uh, can't part with them. In fact, every time I um, you know, have to ditch a garment, I always take all the buttons off and my button jar is getting pretty, pretty full there. But now we're, we're taking a look at this here. And what we've got is this shape button, but we've got a circular button now that I found in my button box that matches that outer circumference, okay? Does that make sense? So now if I wanted to make a buttonhole for this cute little button, I would simply put this button in my foot, okay? Well, I told you I wanted to tell you everything about buttons and buttonholes today, so I've got even, even more information for you. This foot is designed for an average button, 
average button size, average button shape. There are some buttons out there that are that are shell type um, or very unique buttons that are very, very thin. And if you uh, sew a buttonhole with a really thin button, you may find that your buttonhole is simply too large for the button and your button is, you know, your button is slipping out of the buttonhole. So my first rule for any type of buttonhole stitching is it's always best to test. Many of you have heard me say that over and over and over again, but it is something that is so true. So make sure you test that. And if you have that thinner button and your buttonhole ends up being too big, then no problem. You just go ahead and find a button that is maybe, um, that might be a little too small, but I'm probably gonna find one that's just the next size down and I'm gonna use that. So on the opposite end, if you have a button that's really thick, I don't have, uh, I don't have one here that's really thick, but if you have a thicker button, you're going to probably need a little bit longer buttonhole. So do the, um, do the exact opposite. Find another button that's a little bigger and put that into your buttonhole foot. Okay, so that's probably one of my, one of my best tips. All right, so now we're ready to snap this on. And I'm going to reach in here and go ahead and snap that onto the machine. And I need to get this tail thread underneath the presser foot. So you could, you know, feed that by hand, but I like to do this really simple. I just hold the tail thread. I send my needle down. I send my needle up. And then I take something and just sweep that thread underneath. Okay. If I had a bobbin thread tail, my bobbin thread tail would be coming up there as well. So you always want to start with that underneath. All right. So now I'm getting ready to position this. I've just selected a normal square buttonhole and you can see I've already you know removed my regular foot there and I have one more really important thing to do before I start stitching this buttonhole and any of you that have done this you have probably forgotten to do it because we all have you have to stop and you have to pull down this lever that's right in the back and that's going to bump against the first ledge first little um, uh, stopper there on the buttonhole foot. And that's literally what tells the uh, buttonhole foot when to turn around, okay? Now I wanna be really consistent here because can you see how easily I could tilt this just a little bit? Well, guess what happens when we tilt that a little bit? Even the slightest little tilt, we're going to get a, uh, a cockeyed buttonhole <laughs> and we sure don't want that. So I'm not doing it here today because I don't want to block this, but I would highly recommend you might even take something like a, um, a post-it note and just go ahead and um, place that right on your machine so that it sticks and make sure that it's perfectly level on your machine. You could use a little T-square, um, use a, a quilting ruler, but make sure that that's perfectly square and once that's placed down, now every time I go to um, put this on the machine, I'm going to make sure that that is uh, butted right up to the edge there. Okay. And I see somebody asked, what's the largest button we can we can do? And hopefully we'll get to some of your questions um, at the end. The largest button is the largest button that'll fit. Now there are other options um, for that as well. We'll talk about that at the end. Okay. So now I just want to line that up and I may not be too perfect today because I am um, not as close to the machine as I would like to be. This is the perfect, perfect, perfect time to go ahead and use your start stop button if you have that in place of the foot control. So there are um, foot stitchers and there are finger stitchers and there are some of us that go, you know, that do that do both. <laughs> but um, most of the time when I'm sewing, I use my presser foot. And I start and stop my machine with the presser foot. When I'm embroidering, obviously, it's totally different. We're using that start-stop button. You can absolutely sew anything you want to by simply pressing that start button. But I like the control of a foot control because my brain is programmed to tell my, um, my foot when to start and stop. 
and not so much programmed to tell my finger when to start and stop. However, this is a whole different situation because everything's going to be automatic here. So when it's automatic, I'm going to simply press that button and it's going to stitch the whole buttonhole from start to finish. I'm going to slow it down for just a minute because I want to tell you what's happening here. This is so fabulous. These types of one-step buttonholes are designed so that both sides of the buttonhole sew in the same direction. If you've ever stitched on a machine that has a four-step buttonhole, and that's what I would call a manual buttonhole, the buttonhole sews the bar tack, then it goes um, either backward or forward, depending on the machine, and sews one of the buttonhole legs, and then it sews the next bar tack, and then it comes forward to sew that um, uh, last bar tack. And when that happens, you get a buttonhole very often that's just a little bit off because your machine doesn't sew forward exactly the same as it sews backwards. So by you know just keeping a gentle hand on this, it's gonna do everything it needs to do. And it sewed that first leg backwards. Then it's, I mean, um, it sewed, it sewed the, the straight stitch so that that first leg then could sew um, in, in the uh, uh, backwards direction. And then now it's repeating that same, same process on the opposite leg. So we'll speed that up just a little bit. All right, let's talk just for a minute while that's finishing up about buttonhole width and buttonhole length. You can absolutely adjust your stitch width or your stitch length on a buttonhole. I'm going to tell you that in most cases, I find the default setting just about perfect. But we all know that thread is a variable. And what I mean by that is there are threads that are a little bit thinner and there are threads that are a little bit thicker. So we wanna make sure that we um, you know, accommodate that. So again, do that in your test. You can change the length, you can change the width. You may even have different buttonhole styles that allow for you to um, uh, choose a, a buttonhole that's, that's wider, okay? So there you go. Does that buttonhole get more beautiful than that? I don't think so. But now it's time to open that buttonhole up. And I'm just going to grab a pin here and show you a little trick that's, you know, tried and true and been around for a long time. And that is in order to avoid cutting that buttonhole too far, you put a pin at the very end where your bar tack just begins there. Always find your sharpest seam ripper. Let me go ahead and get rid of that tail there and get that seam ripper right in the center and then slice right down the center there. You see how that pin's gonna prevent me from going too far? That is an absolute lifesaver. So again, it's a tried and true. I didn't make that up. It's been around for a long time. Let's pop this off really quick so that you can see how perfectly this buttonhole is going to, I mean, this button is going to fit into that buttonhole. Okay, now actually that one's just a little bit thick, so that might be a time when I'm going to um, choose just a little bit, a little bit thinner buttonhole. So I want to give you another little um, quick tip here. One of my favorite things to do is to use um, embroidery thread for buttonholes. Um, it, to me, it imitates silk, and this thread is just enough, you know, a little bit of a sheen that it looks pretty but it really will make a, a, a really, really pretty buttonhole. Now, uh, I see somebody um, commented about using a block. Yes, there are blocks and chisels that you can use to open a buttonhole. I find those easier to use on bigger buttonholes. On smaller buttonholes, I'm a little more um, comfortable with using, um, using a ripper. Now, take a look at this buttonhole and see, what do we have here? We've got ravelies, okay? We got frays. And that is due to the fabric itself. So this is where um, a sewer's best friend comes in. Um, using seam sealant on a buttonhole will keep that from fraying. Very often I will actually um, seal those threads 
um, before I even cut it and let it dry. So one thing you need to remember with um, seam sealant is to make sure that you don't use too much and test it on your fabric. So I always do a very light coating and then I dab this with a, a tissue or a paper towel. And yes, there are actual buttonhole scissors as well. So, you know, it's just like anything in sewing, try your own um, tools and see what, what, works, um, what works best for you. Okay, so now real quick, we're going to go ahead and um, sew a button on. So I'm gonna switch to a button sewing stitch, which is in my menu here, right there. You may or may not have that. If you don't, you could use this with a, uh, a zigzag stitch and lower your feed dogs, but this works really well. This um, buttonhole style, our button sewing style foot is very common, but you might also find one like this. And with this one, it actually gives you the ability to place your button right in that slot so it, it, it holds it in place. With this one, I'm gonna have to um, you know, keep that in a position. And what I will often do with that is use a little bit of uh, glue stick. So we're almost finished here, but like I said, we wanna actually sew that button on. So we're gonna line that up right underneath the foot. And then I'm gonna make sure that my needle is entering right into that first hole. So you gotta be a little careful with that and get that adjusted. Get that in there. Oh, let me, let me get that configured for you. Tell you what, let me get a, grab a, a little smaller button here. And if you have four holes, like I have on this one, you're gonna sew the, the first two holes first. Oh, you know what? Okay, all stitchers make mistakes now and then, don't they? This gives me a, a perfect um, time to, sh to tell you um, what not to do and then what to do. Take a look at, at your foot and every foot um, pretty much has a letter on it. And what did I do? I snapped that on the wrong way. So that's why my button wasn't going underneath the foot. This foot has an M carved into it, so I should be able to read that when I place that on the machine. All right, now we'll get back to that same place. And it's always hard when you're working about two feet away from where you normally should be. We're gonna lower that foot, and you see how that's lined up right in that first hole, lined up right in that second. Again, I'm gonna use my start-stop, it's going to automatically tie off, and I am good to go and ready to complete whatever I need. Now, I always um, err on the side of security, and I will pull these thread tails down, either by hand or by feeding a needle, needle through that, and I will tie that off by hand. I also make a habit of using that seam sealant on my um, uh, button that I've sewn, so that it doesn't uh, have a chance of coming off. There's nothing that drives you crazier than having a button come off, okay? Now, what about um, uh, buttons that have a shank on them? Well, those are not gonna be able to be sewn by machine, kind of obviously. So we're gonna have to sew this one on by hand. And I'm gonna give you just a couple recommendations for sewing that on by hand, all right? I am going to recommend that you take your um, sewing thread and you wrap it around some beeswax. So I just take thread and I flow it over the beeswax. You'll find this sometimes in chunks, sometimes in sticks, and do a double layer. And once you've got that beeswax on it, take it to your iron and iron it so it literally melts that beeswax in, and then go ahead and hand sew your button on, okay? So that's um, that's kind of my, you know, zip tips on, uh, on buttonholes. Let me go ahead and move my camera back over. We can see if we have some questions here. 
And let me go ahead and give you just those, um, those seven tips again uh, really quick. So the first one is always stabilize, interfacing. Interfacing, um, I like to use a, a shirt type interfacing. Sometimes I'll also use an added layer of tearaway underneath that, okay? But make sure um, that's not going to show, so do a test first. Mark every buttonhole accurately and then stitch consistently. Remember, you want to start that same line. Always test. Remember, thinner um, buttons might require a little smaller button. Um, thicker buttons right, might require a little small, a little larger um, buttonhole is what I meant to say. Um, use that pin to prevent you from cutting too far. Um, begin with that stress spot. And another tip is to always sew your buttonholes only once. If you look at that buttonhole, I mean, that is beautiful, beautiful, just the way it is. If I sew that twice, it's going to be too thick. And then my last tip is focus, focus, focus. Buttonholes are the finishing touch on your projects, on your garments. It's usually the last thing we do. So um, I've been known to put a do not disturb sign on the outside of my door. Um, I'm doing buttonholes right now. I don't want anything to interfere. And then follow all these tips and you're going to have beautiful buttonholes too. That's about it. Blaine, you got any questions? Hey, Joanne, we sure do. Uh, so Roger, can you read the question to me? longer compared to the finished buttonhole. Is there a reason for doing okay. that? Okay. So, Joanne, one of the questions was, why was your line that you made, when I think you did the, the T line, uh -huh. why was that longer than the actual buttonhole? Great question, because it gives me a lot more visibility when I'm trying to line up that foot. If that, if that line is short and I'm trying to, you know, I'm close to my machine and I'm trying to make sure that that's centered, um, having that longer line is just going to make it easier for me. And the length of the line doesn't matter because my buttonhole foot's going to determine the length of the buttonhole, the button. Okay, so uh, the next question was, they said, can you show us uh, how to, to, to use, what was that, Roger, again? Oh, buttonholes with an embroidery machine? Yeah, yeah, it's up on oh, the screen. Oh, okay, there Blaine. Is. Hey, you want to have me on a guest uh, uh, on one of your shows and we'll do um, all embellished buttonholes on a future show? Yeah, why don't we do that? Because <laughs> here's just to let everybody know, every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, we have a Facebook and YouTube live show that we do. And so, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get Joanne scheduled and we'll, that's what we'll make the show about. I would love to do that. I got lots, lots, lots more tips and tricks for that. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we'll do then. So y'all have to stay tuned on that and we'll put the schedule out and, uh, but uh, we'll start next Thursday. Well, I don't even know who we have coming on, but maybe we can work it out where Joanne's our guest next Thursday. I'm, I'm open. That would be great. All right. Good deal. So everybody will stay tuned for that. So is there any other questions, uh, Roger? Oh, I think that was it, Joanne. Okay. I think you did such a good job of education. Uh, I hope everybody got a lot out of that because that was very, very good. And uh, I tell you, we were having discussion uh, backstage here when you were doing your presentation and talking about, you know, that buttonhole tool that they come with a lot of the machines now has made life a lot easier oh, than it used to my. before. <laughs> it's, it's, it's saved so many heartaches and headaches <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> because um, you don't want to end, you know, I mean, imagine all the work I put into this garment. This probably took me Oh, this is this is one of the things I had on the It's So Easy show, and uh, it's a it was a real work of art. And um, you, you do the buttonholes last. You don't want any any glitches <laughs> at that point. Well, I know, and you're gonna, you're going to be coming back uh, this week again later on in the week and doing another educational class. And your other class is in it, top stitching. Is that tips correct? for top stitching? Yes. Yeah, tips for top stitching. So we look forward to that. And uh, so again, thank you so much, Joanne, for coming on and. Uh, Thank Always you. your your super super educational and a professional and we love it and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you later on the week with your other educational class. So guys, we're going to move right along and this is our next presentation and uh, our next presenter is uh, Melinda Stevenson. She is a Baby Lock educator and she's going to talk all about the Baby Lock brilliance today. And uh, you know. Uh, you know, Melinda is, uh, I think it was 10 years ago, Melinda landed a cover story on Sewing Machine News Magazine. 
And ever since then, she's been a contributor, uh, you know, to the creative uh, machine embroidery. And uh, she's been travels all over the nation teaching and she loves to, to teach and share her knowledge. And we're super excited to have Melinda uh, here on our show today. We've had her on numerous shows with us because she is so good. And so Melinda, welcome to day two of SoFest. <laughs> Thank you so much, Blaine. I am so honored to be here. You are very kind to have me. And I'm super excited to show you the machine that I'll be demonstrating today. So I hope everything is good. You're down in Florida. So is your weather okay holding up still? Yes, we're doing well um, this week. We've had a couple of um, <laughs> bad weeks. So I know, I know. Not- you know, you got kind of hammered uh, a couple of weeks ago when uh, that hit New Orleans and in the area. And I know there's some tropical storms that kind of brewing in the, the Gulf again. So hopefully it'll it'll dissipate and, and won't uh, do any more damage down there. Let us hope September is a month, isn't it, Blaine? I know you're from Louisiana, so you are very familiar with this month. Oh, I'm very familiar with all the hurricanes, trust me. So I, I'm, I'm kind of, now all I have to worry about is earthquakes and fires. <laughs> oh, so. man. Well, I know today you're going to you're going to talk a lot about the brilliance and we're super excited for you to do that. So I know you're going to have to work your way over there yes. and uh, and get on the machine and show us. And then what we'll do, I guess, as soon as you get done with your demo, if we'll have any questions, you can come back and answer those. Does that work out? That sounds great. That sounds All right. So great. if you make your way over there to your machine and, and we'll get we'll get that going. And and as uh, soon as Melinda's ready, we'll bring her back on the screen and she's going to start talking about the brilliance. But in the meantime, I got to tell you about the package we have. Kyle, if we could do that overlay on that brilliance. We have a fantastic package today on this machine. This is the Baby Lock Brilliance machine. It's from their genuine collection. The price is $9.99. And it is a great, great package. You're getting the free 60-day trial of those online classes and, uh, you know, with it as well. And so a great, great price on this uh, at $9.99. And uh, this is a fantastic machine. And we can't wait for Melinda. So is she ready, Kyle? So we're going to go right back to Melinda. She is ready to do her demo. So I'm a national educator for Baby Lock. And I'm here to show you today the Baby Lock Brilliant. I really had a good time with this machine. It is a wonderful machine. And I just want to show you this little garment that I made for my grandbaby, all on the Brilliant. And it's going to highlight all of the fun things that this machine will do, okay? You can see right here, I've created piping on my um, pockets, right? And I have some lovely buttons and buttonholes. Um, I've done this wonderful blind hem, and it looks really professional. And I had a really good time creating a secret message inside. It says, I'm made for Ellie, for Ellie, made with love by Grammy. And the other thing that I really love about this, look at this. All of the seams are finished. And it's almost like they're finished with the serger, but they're not. It's using the overcasting foot on the Baby Lock Brilliant, all right? So let me just show you a few of the, my favorite features on the machine. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on this in just a second. But I love the um, storage compartment. I love how this machine opens. It shows me all the stitches. It tells me exactly how to operate the stitches. It's simple, very simple. If I want to create a stitch, all I have to do is touch the icon that matches the page up here. And so I can touch, for example, the icon for the decorative stitches. And if I would like to um, do this little heart, all I have to do is touch that decorative stitch again for page two. And then I'm going to touch number 08 for the heart, 08. And there it is. My heart is ready. This machine has some wonderful features because not only can you create the hearts, you can create one heart or you can add other stitches to your hearts. OK, so let's say that I want to do a heart and then right next to the heart, I want to do a star and that's 07. So let's touch 07. Let's touch OK. And now we have a heart and a star. And if we want to do it one time, we keep it like that. If we want to do a whole row of hearts and stars, you just have to touch that. It is as simple as that. This is a super easy machine to use. Um, you can also um, save if you, for example, you wanted to save your uh, hearts, your hearts and your stars. All you have to do is touch 
the save pocket. It's going to tell you that you've got several other pockets um, to save. And I've already saved in pockets one, two, and three. But if I want to save in pocket four, then all I have to do is press OK. It's going to save it. And now I can get out of this um, particular stitch. I'm going to say, OK, I can get rid of that current selection. But let's say I wanted to find that selection again. All I have to do is touch this that has a little icon of a pocket on it. I'm going to touch it twice. Whoops. There we go. And then I'm going to cursor down um, to the next page. OK, here we go. Let's go to the next page. And there it is, page four. I'm going to touch OK. And there it is, all right? It is as easy as that. So that's just a few of the wonderful features of this machine that I'd like to show you today. So I'm going to show you my 10 favorite things. I'd love to show you everything, but we don't have three days. So here we go. Number one has to be the accessory storage compartment. I am not the most organized sewer. I throw feet around like a popcorn popper. But the Brilliant has this cool accessory tray that locks in the feet that I use the most often. First is the R foot or the blind hem foot. This takes all the guesswork out of creating a perfect hem for pants, dresses, skirts, curtains, tops, or anything that needs a professional looking hem. Create any hem in a matter of moments with this blind hem foot. The next foot, the M foot, is great for sewing on buttons. This foot allows you to slide the button right in so that it doesn't move on the garment as you stitch it. Quick and easy with this foot, you'll never hand sew a button again. Next is the end foot. This foot is nice and wide with a see-through center that allows you to sew decorative stitches with ease. And then next is the J foot, which is of course the all-around sewing foot that you're going to use for most of your garment and craft sewing. When I first got this machine, I couldn't figure out why the G foot or overcasting foot rated a special place in the top of the machine. But after trying it out, I understood. If you don't have a serger, or you don't want to pull out your serger, or you don't have serger thread to match your outfit, this overcasting stick actually does the work of a serger. It overcasts and seams at the same time so that your seams hold together perfectly and never fray. The eye foot is the multi-purpose zipper foot that I'm going to use today to make quick and easy piping. And, of course, hanging out on top is the A foot, the buttonhole foot, that makes certain your buttonhole is the perfect size for your button. And look at this. They don't fall out when you turn it over. They're locked in. It's, I know this is a small thing, but really when you're sewing quickly, it makes a huge difference to have everything organized. And look, there's even more room for all of the other wonderful accessories that come with the machine. Favorite thing number two are decorative stitches, but I'm first going to enable my automatic reverse reinforcement key and my automatic thread cutting key before I begin stitching. There are 109 stitches on this machine. There are so many decorative stitches things that you can do with um, specialty threads, stitches that you can do with a um, double needle. It's really a great machine for doing any sort of decorative stitch on a little girl's dress, on a tablecloth, a table runner, napkin, bags, anything. This machine will really enable you to do some really fun decorating. And the machine stitches at 850 stitches per minute. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, I love that. That's so nice. I used a cotton thread um, and you can imagine what that would look like in a long row on a tablecloth. Number three is overcasting with the G foot. There's the G foot. It has a stitch finger right in the middle, sort of like on your serger. And it allows the stitches to cast over that stitch finger and over the edge of your fabric, making a beautifully finished edge at the same time stitching together a seam. So let's look up here. Um, you're going to be using the number 13 stitch. And you can see that it's got stitches a little to the left and a little to the right. Um, and we're going to um, touch that icon and then we're going to touch 13. But you can see all of those are overcasting stitches. So you have several choices. Um, you can also use the S stitches for overcasting. And with those stitches, you would actually um, purchase an, an extra foot that cuts the fabric just like a serger. 
So I'm going to um, erase my previous stitch. I'm going to clear it. And then I'm going to choose stitch number 13. And that's going to be my over. It tells me to use the G foot. And I, I do love this, um, the ability to see what foot that I use for each stitch. And the, in the computer screen, and it shows that. So there's my G foot. Um, super easy to change feet on this machine, just like all baby lock machines. You're just going to raise your presser foot. You're going to pop your foot right underneath that presser foot. You're going to lower the presser foot and um, it'll pop right on. There it is. So the first thing that I want to show you is how easily you can overcast a single piece of fabric. Um, and this sort of keeps you from having to pull out your serger. So you can see right there that um, it has picked up and I'm keeping my fabric to just to the left of that center foot and and it holds it that foot is so nice because it holds it so that you can keep it even right there on the edge once you get to the end you want to pull your fabric back and off of the stitch fingers so you don't want to pull it to the side because it'll get caught in that little stitch finger there we go you got to pull it back and off the stitch finger and there it is look at that it kind of turns it under just a little bit. It makes a beautiful edge stitch. And then there's the back. And you can see it turns it under, under just a little bit. So now let's um, check and see what it looks like when you put two seams together. Let's see how well it holds the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and run the side seams of my little girl's dress. And you can see that, um, again, I have my fabric butted up right to the side of that um, G foot. Um, and it holds the fabric in place really nice. Uh, another thing about this machine, it has a seven piece feed dog. And I'm telling you, it pulls the fabric through so easily. It, it's really um, powerful. And we have to remember to make sure that we um, pull back rather than pull into the side because we don't want to bend the feed up the little uh, stitch finger. So now let's look and see what that seam looks like and how it holds. I'm pulling it pretty hard there, guys. That is a good seam, all right? And then on the back, it's just so neat. It looks so nice. It will not fray. I also use that overcasting stitch um, to secure my um, gathered um, bodice. And after I had used a basting stitch to put my bodice on with the gathers, then I trimmed it and I used the overcasting st stitch to neaten it, but also to um, hold it because that stitch is really, really, really secure. So you can see what this looks like. Um, and how useful this stitch actually is. Pull it off the stitch fingers again. So first it looks really nice that gathering um, and there's the gathering on the other side and now that is very secure. So my favorite thing number four is the zipper foot used as a piping foot and you can see the piping that I created on these pockets using the zipper foot as a piping foot. So the first thing that we're going to do is get that eye foot out of our handy dandy attachment case. Um, and we're going to exchange the J foot, or I'm sorry, the overcasting foot G. We're going to put that one right back in. Um, and we're going to put on the eye foot or the zipper foot. And again, super easy. You just slide it under your um, presser foot and lower the presser foot. And there it is. It's on. All right. It's ready to go. So now I'm going to create piping with the zipper foot. So I have folded my fabric in half. I've given myself a lot of extra room. I'm using one eighth inch cording. And then I'm going to slide it under my zipper foot. That zipper foot is raised slightly on the um, either side. And so there's room for that cording to go underneath it without compromising the stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide as if it were a zipper coil. We're going to slide that cord 
right underneath that zipper foot and we're going to stitch very close to the cord and the stitches are absolutely beautiful then i'm going to slide that piping right into my pocket using the zipper foot again here we go okay and i'm going to keep my fingers kind of close to that cording as you can see i'm just making sure that it stays on that zipper foot and I'm going to keep straightening just to make sure that the cording stays over to the edge. Super easy, super fast. I'm so sorry my hands are way in the way. Um, we're almost to the end. And once we get to the end, I'm going to um, allow it to reinforce and then clip. And then hold it up. There it is. I've got a little string in the way. But you can see... This makes lovely piping, really quick, really easy. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to attach the piping to the fabric. You can see that I've given it a little trim. I'm holding it to the edge of the fabric using my zipper foot still, and then I'll stitch it on. Number five is the stitch guide foot. I love this foot because it holds the fabric down as you're stitching and you can stitch any increment with it. Now I'm going to use it to you to um, put my facing around my neck and my armholes. Um, this enables me by using this stitch guide, I'm able to keep my stitches even and I'm able to keep my fabric flat. You can see I have all sorts of stitch guides on the plate of my machine as well, and they are super helpful. Again, I like using this uh, stitch guide because it enables me to keep the fabric sort of flat, um, even extended out. So I'm just going to use um, basically the inside of my presser foot, nearly a quarter of an inch seam, but I like using this. So this is what I'm going to use to um, put my um, armhole and neck facings in. Okay, I'm finishing up these stitches and let's check to see how even they are. Looks pretty even. My favorite thing, number six, are the character stitches. It's so much fun to write notes to my grandbabies after I make them an outfit. And my three-year-old granddaughter, Ellie, loves flipping her hem up and seeing for Ellie made with love show by really Grammy. how those character stitches work. So I'm going to go back to my um, opening screen. And I'm going to say, okay, to get rid of everything. Okay, so now you can see um, my, let me make it so that you can see it. Yeah, so there's my character stitches. So I'm going to touch that one. And then if I touch it again, that will show me the second outfit, the alphabet, the cursive alphabet. The third will show me um, those block letters. Um, and then there's a Greek alphabet. And then there are a few other alphabets. But there's my first one. So what I'm going to do in order to um, spell a word out, that I'm going to give each word is assigned a number. Each letter is assigned a number. Super easy. Your um, quick instruction book shows you those numbers. So, for example, what I might do is I might want to write the word love. And so in order to write the word love, it's super easy. All I have to do is write, I'm going to use I'm number 12 for L. And that's going to be okay. And then I'm going to use number 15 for O. And then I'm going to use number 22 for V. And then I'm going to use number 5 for E. And there you go. So I am ready to write love, love, love. And then if I want to add a little heart after that, then I just, all I have to do is go into my decorative stitches. And uh, my decorative stitch number 08 is my heart. So I add that. And now I've got love and a heart. And if I want to do it in a row, it looks like that. Okay, super easy to do those characters. My favorite thing, number seven, is definitely blind hemming. Um, the machine tells you which stitch. It's stitch number 31. It tells me that I'm going to need my R foot. Um, that stitch number 31, um, is it makes it super easy. There's my blind hem foot. You can see it has um, a ridge down the center that I'm going to put on this section that I'm hemming. Super easy, once again, to put on my... Um, machine, lower it onto my presser foot, and I'm ready to hem.
So to prepare my fabric, I'm first going to fold my hem up and then I'm going to fold it back. And I'm actually going to be stitching on that outside piece. OK, so you can see I'm going to slide it under my machine. I'm going to get my um, blind hem foot so that that ridge, that center part, goes right on the fold of my fabric and that little v that's going to pop up will pop up right into that fold and then when i turn it over you'll hardly be able to see that hem but it will be perfectly even and it will catch all of my fabric and here you can see what it looks like turned over there's the underside of it um, and then there is the top and there are those lovely little bitty stitches that are perfectly even I love that. My favorite thing, number eight, is creating easy buttonholes. With this buttonhole foot, all you have to do is pop your button into the buttonhole foot, and that tells your buttonhole foot exactly how big to make the button. You can see how teeny tiny this button is that I'm using for the foot. So there's the little place that you put it, you fit it in, and then you pop your um, buttonhole foot onto your machine, same the way, the exact same way that you've done it before. You just pop it underneath your presser foot, lower your presser foot and there it is ready to go so you can see here that i have marked my fabric with a with a blue mark and and it's that mark is going to go right in the middle of that presser foot and you can see the lines on the presser foot it's a center line um and it's wonderful i'm going to unplug my presser foot and i'm going to stitch this buttonhole only using the start stop button because that's something i haven't really talked about with this machine and it really is a fantastic feature um, that start stop bu button works really well um, if you don't want to use your presser foot and it's great on buttonholes because with the buttonhole oh and if it, it, your machine tells you everything i forgot to lower the buttonhole lever um, but you have and you have to do that but it will not start creating that buttonhole until you've lowered the buttonhole lever My favorite thing, number nine, is the button fitting fit. I am never going to hand sew a button on for the rest of my life. This fit is so awesome. It has a shank. Can you see that? You go back and forth. It pushes back and forth for, to create a shank on your button. So the button can be loose and not too tight, right? But the coolest thing is that you pop your button inside of the little metal pieces and then those lines show you exactly where to line up your holes so that your needle will go precisely into those holes and your button will be sewn on securely. So I place my button right on my mark and I press my start stop button. Um, I like to do it twice just for security of the button. So I'm going to let it go again. And then I'm going to pull it off of my buttonhole foot. And there it is. There is my sewn on button without having to do it by hand. I love that. And my favorite thing, number 10, are all these wonderful feet that come with the machine that I didn't even get a chance to talk about. There is the free motion quilting foot, spring loaded, makes it super easy to do free motion quilting. Then there is the walking foot. And you can do all sorts of fantastic quilting and multi-layer stitching with the walking foot. The Teflon foot is one of my favorite feet. You can stitch over leather with your Teflon foot because it doesn't get stuck. Is the open toe foot. This is a great foot that has these, whenever you're doing decorative stitches and you're trying to make sure that you keep them lined up, you can see these lines show you how to get started and make sure that they're there. Then this one right here, it's a quarter inch foot. Most people use it for quilting. I use it for top stitching around the edges of my armholes and my neck holes. And then here's this fantastic zipper foot. You can use, you can have any size zipper. Look at that. I mean, it adjusts to any size. Man, this machine, it's National Sewing Month. This machine is the machine that you need to sew with. Thank you so much for joining me for this year's Sew Fest. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the Baby Life Brilliant. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure that Blaine can answer them or um, I'll do a question answer session in just a few minutes. Thank you so much. 
Hey, great job, Melinda. And uh, so I wanna remind everybody about the machine, how you can get this machine, and then we'll go back to Melinda for some questions. But hey, I decided we're gonna do something else, guys. I, I, I looked at the price on this and I went, hey, this is a great price at $9.99, but guess what? Kyle, Roger, team, got to do something better. This is so fast, guys. So what we're going to do, along with getting that 60-day trial and that great price on this, if you call us right now at 1-800-401-8151, we're going to throw in a free sewing mat with this, a gold sewing mat, that gold, baby lock gold mat that's that comes with this. We're going to throw in a sewing mat with it for you but you have to call in to get that sewing mat. So it's a 1-800-401-8151. And uh, we're gonna throw that free mat in with it to help uh, you know, keep that vibration down on it and you know, protect the electronics on that machine. So a great, great uh, thing on that. But uh, make sure if y'all want one of these machines, the Brilliance, great, great machine. And I think uh, Melinda did a great job showing that off. But let's go back to Melinda. I think she's back from over from her uh, sewing machine. So Melinda, great uh, demonstration on that. And uh, so tell me a little bit, I mean, I know that, uh, what do you, what's your very, your thoughts about the Brilliance? I know that you, you like all the baby lock machines, but what's your, your, your personal view of the Brilliance? This is my go-to machine for sewing. Honestly, Blaine, it's, it's really heavy. Um, it's a heavy duty machine. It's super easy. And like I said, I can't, emphasize enough the um, convenience of having those feet right there, always in the same place. So they're the feet that you move, use the most for sewing. The other thing, that free 60 day trial, that's worth a mint because that's those classes show you there, there is a one hour class that shows you everything you need to know about the Brilliant. Um, it also, the classes on that uh, Baby Lock Sew Ed site also show you all sorts of other feet, um, all sorts of techniques. So if you get the machine, and then you just watch those classes for 60 days, you will be surprised at all the fabulous things that you can sew and create on this machine. So yes, it's a great machine. Well, you know, Melinda, they, I, I always kind of used to always call it love yeah. of knowledge, but now it's called so, baby And I Lock love that code. little gold mat. That's going to be really fun, Blaine. Oh. Um, it'll hold the machine yes. uh, secure. Um, yes. Not that the machine needs to be held secure because it's super heavy, but it really <laughs> is nice because it makes the machine um, quieter. So what I was going to ask you is on the, uh, I know we're getting, you get the 60 day trial of baby lock sews, but it, or sewed, but isn't it, uh, that's kind of the old, they used to call it love and knowledge, correct? Yes. That is exactly right. And now it's called Sew Ed for Sew Education. We have over 500 classes. Now we're almost 600 classes on that Sew Ed. And you can learn all sorts of things on all sorts of different machines. Yeah, every so every baby lock machine that you have, you can learn something about on the Sew Ed classes. Yeah. I watched them goes. myself blind because, you know, I, you know, you, you can always learn something. So I watch them, even though they're techniques that I already know. And I always love to see how other people use those techniques because there's always something I can learn from what somebody else does. And the educators um, that, that, are on these uh, videos are incredibly well seasoned educators. They know their business, they know their stuff, and they will, they all have something to teach you and some new techniques that you may not have thought about before. And so Melinda, good the luck with I that. That'll be you. really fun. Um, if you have any questions about me. this machine, I am more than happy to answer your questions. Um, you can reach me by email at Melinda Stevenson at gmail.com. And that's M-I-L-I-N-D-A Stevenson, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N -E um, at gmail.com. So I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, my friend Karen Parker, another educator at Baby Lock, have a show on Tuesdays. Um, we've we, we've been on a summer break, but we'll be coming back at the end of September and we can show you all sorts of different techniques on um, your machines, your sergers, your sewing machines and your embroidery machines. Well, thanks, Melinda, for, for coming on the show today. And, we, we, you know, thanks for Baby Lock. And again, guys, I want to remind you how you can get that brilliant sewing machine. Uh, this thing is is nine ninety nine. You're getting that free 60 day trial of those online classes and that's called the baby lock sewed classes. And it used to be the love of knowledge. Uh, you're getting 60 days free of that with the machine.
for $9.99. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw in one of those gold sewing mats that we're world famous for. It's the Baby Lock Gold Exact Match. We're going to throw that sewing mat in for free, but you have to call in to get that. You can't just order it on the website. You have to call in to get that free special on the sewing mat. And so give us a call at 800-401-8151. And uh, we have operators standing by. If you can't get through on the phones, I know Kyle has been putting the link uh, to the Google Sheets page in on uh, Facebook and YouTube in the chat. He'll do that. If you can't get through on the phones, just go on that Google Sheets. Once you hit that link, put your, your name, your phone number in there, and then just put the machine that you're interested in. If it's you're interested in that brilliance, put it in there. And as soon as our operators uh, get off the phones. That's that list is up. You know, it's uh, updated real time in the call center. They'll give you a call immediately and take your order or answer questions for you. So, guys, we're ready to move on. And uh, hey, I got to bring in my co-host. So we got Jane Klaus in the house. So Jane, that's are you right, ready to Blaine. go? Jane Klaus in the house. How are you? <laughs> Great to see you. Hello, SMP. Hello, everybody. I'm super pumped that you're here. And I told everybody this morning, I said, you're like the Energizer Bunny. You always have tons of energy, positivity. You're a great ambassador for sewing. And man, we're super pumped that you're going to be part of SoFest. I am so excited to be part of SoFest during National Sewing Month. And Blake, <laughs> thank you so much for asking me to be here. You know, I am so passionate about the craft and I love spreading the inspiration. You know, I, I love to learn from those that have such great knowledge of sewing and embroidering. But I also love to inspire those who may are be afraid of it and who may want to try sewing, who may have done other crafting, but this is something new for them. So I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you for co-hosting. And I'm just going to get out of the way and let you go. I know you got a guest coming right up. And I am so excited about our next guest, everybody. She is a national educator and embroidery specialist for OESD, and that is the Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design. She teaches endless embroidery techniques. She teaches us how to choose the right stabilizer. She teaches us how to do the proper hooping placement. Uh, I want to bring her on right away. It's Tamara Evans. Tamara. Hi. Hi, Tamara. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am so pleased to meet you. I've been just sort of digging around on our friend Google to find out a little bit more about you. So thanks so much for joining us today. I'm excited to hear about what all that OESD has to offer. But I have a question for you first. What's that? Question is, who inspired you to start sewing and embroidering? Um, sewing, that would be my mother, um, because I would, um, she would sew first when we were little and I would sneak out when I was supposed to be napping with my younger brother and she'd be cutting something out, this flat fabric, and then she would make it into like a jumper or, you know, clothes first. And I'm like, God, that's just magic. I want to know how that's done. So that's really what inspired me. And then, you know, embroidery, hmm, gosh, I just. Um, i done hand embroidery. I saw an embroidery machine and went, wow, that's really cool, but really? And then my husband bought it for me. So he really inspired me with that. And I love that because he's like feeding your passion and your need to create. What's your favorite thing about teaching embroidery? Oh, it's all the things I learn because I learn stuff from everybody in the audience. I mean, I go around all over the country and I pick up tips everywhere and then get to share those with other people. And I just love the the people that I meet, um, everybody in this that does this as um, a hobby or a business, they're just all really giving and kind and um, a lot of fun. So it's a great community for sure. Thank you so much for being here today. I could ask you questions for the next half hour, but we've got business to get to. Yes, so we do. I'm going to let you take it away. Tell us all about what OESD has to offer today. Okay. Let me share my screen here. Hang on one sec. There we go. Um, let's see. Share screen. Okay. So this is the one we want. Okay, 
So what I'm going to talk to you about today is stabilizer. Um, no matter where I go, whether I'm teaching dealers or uh, new embroiderers or really experienced embroiderers, everybody always wants to know more about stabilizer because I think we're constantly doing different things and we want to know what works, you know, for other things and get inspired with new ideas. So OESD is an expert in stabilizer. We've been in the business, as Kimberly told you yesterday, over 30 years now. And we, we also um, have a stabilizer line because it's very important to us with our designs that we can actually tell a customer, okay, this is what you need to use to make this design work on this fabric, you know, for this project. So we need some control over the stabilizers. And so we have a great line of stabilizers and we'll do a bit of an overview today um, so you can see what what's out there and what you can use. So what is stabilizer? Well, it's the foundation for embroidery. You have fabric that then you're going to add a bunch of stitches to, and it needs something to support that. And that's your stabilizer. It keeps the fabric from puckering and shifting during embroidery or stretching out of shape, but it also keeps that embroidery looking good through the life of the garment or article that you're embroidering on. So a great jumping off place to decide to narrow down your stabilizer choices is the stabilizer quick reference guide. Now, if you have a stabilizer sample pack, it is in that brochure. If you've ever been to an OESD event, you'll have one, but it's also online at embroideryonline.com. Go to resources and in Embroidery 101, the tutorials, you'll be able to find a copy of it there. So you might want to print it out and have it handy because on the left-hand side, you go down the list and those are different fabric types and um, you know, freestanding lace, different things you're going to stitch on. And then across the top, it has your different options. So if you decide, you know, determine the density of the design, that's how many stitches are in a certain area, then you can just scroll across with that fabric and see which stabilizers could be options. Now, you don't necessarily want to use all of those stabilizers, but it's just different ones that you could use. We'll get more into the density in just a minute. Another great place um, that I keep inside of my roll of stabilizer when I open it up is the instructions. They're always printed on the back of the uh, label for the instructions. I put it in there, roll it up, stick it in so I can pull it out if I'm not sure. Um, sometimes I get mixed up between aqua mesh and poly mesh and um, in the past if I don't do this or that's missing then you know I just kind of have to suck on the end to see if it's going to dissolve in water, um, which isn't really tasty, but it works. But if you have the label in there, then you know what it is and you know how to apply it, um, when to use it, when how to get rid of it and what it's all about. The one thing that's really important on this label is that it has the temperature, if it's a fusible stabilizer, that you need to fuse with because they vary depending on the stabilizer, whether it's a hotter iron or a little bit um, cooler iron. And this will always have that information for you. So without stabilizer or not enough stabilizer, we get crummy looking designs like these. Um, your outlines are off, no reg the registration's off, you get puckering. Um, it just doesn't look pretty. So what is stabilizer made of? Well, it's fibers um, like polyester fibers, cellulose, nylon, and then binders that hold them together. We use short fibers for tearaways and longer fibers for cutaways. Um, and the combination of these with the secret sauce of the binders results in the different types. Some are water soluble, some are not. Um, it just is depends on the stabilizer. So all of OESD stabilizers are made with a non-directional process, which means they're equally strong in all directions. So you don't have to crisscross layers to make sure you get full coverage. So why are our stabilizers different? Well, first of all, no stretch. <laughs> if a stabilizer stretches, it's not going to do you any good. You want that fabric in the hoop or whatever you're stitching on uh, to be stable and not stretch, not move. Um, and if your stabilizer stretches, then you're in trouble. 
Um, we have no grain line like fabric does in any of our stabilizers, with one exception, and that's fusible woven. And I know Kimberly talked about it a little bit yesterday. And it's really more of a fabric prep than a stabilizer. And it is woven, so it does have, you know, um, a bias to it. So, but it's fusible, so then that stops any stretching or, or um, pulling on the bias. There are no high and low spots. So again, with no stretch, no grain, no high or low spots, there's no need to crisscross layers. No need to turn one at a 45 degree angle. That means you're trying to stop something from stretching on the bias. You can use it right over the top if you need two layers. Um, all of our stabilizers that are tearaways have a multi-directional tear. So they tear cleanly in all directions. And it's consistent quality. We use these every day. All of our educators use them, our Stitch Lab, uses it to sew out designs our digitizers use them we all use it so if there was ever a problem with anything then you know we would know about it so it's our years ex experience with you guys in mind that make our stabilizers really outstanding so why are there so many kinds because we like to stitch on so much stuff um have you ever just gone shopping going hmm that's cute i wonder if i can embroider on that um I know a lot of you have. So fabric choice is one of the things. The weight and the type of the fabric, whether it stretches, whether it's woven, whether it's heavy, if it has a pile or a nap, all those things, uh, which sounds really complicated, but it's not, we take into consideration. Then the design density. This is the part that kind of gets a little interesting. Um, we've got two pictures here on the screen. One is a Festival of Roses by Jackie Robinson. And there's almost 35,000 stitches in that rose with all the shadings and highlights. Um, and it's really a four by four design. You know, it, it's a four by four area that that is. The other design, Blooming Expressions by Shannon Roberts, on the other hand, um, the dark places that you see in there, that's all the background. I love how she pulls the background. Uh, she was a She's a chalk artist. She pulls that background of the chalkboard and uses it as shading in her design. So there's no stitches in that part. So this is an eight by eight design. So that's like four times bigger than the four by four. And that has a little over 34,000 stitches in it. So which one would take more stabilizer? Well, the lighter density one, even though they're this, about the same number of stitches, one is definitely denser than the other. You can always tell a dense design if there's lots of shading in it, multiple layers. Um, you can pull up a design on your computer and watch it virtually stitch through so you can see how many layers of things are on there. It's a great, it's a great digitizing lesson as well. Um, and look and see you know just how much is in that area there's not a magic number because it does also depend on the fabric but the density is important uh, and how the pro how is the project going to be embroidered are you actually going to hoop the fabric that you're stitching on as opposed to sticking it down some way um, and so you need to decide that because if you go if you have to stick it down even though you could use the lightweight tearaway on it, if you're sticking it down, that's a different stabilizer, right? So, and the final thing is the desired finished result. What's going to happen to this after you embroider it? Is it going to be a wall hanging that nobody's ever going to see the back of? Um, except your embroidery fence, of course, will always look. Uh, or will the stabilizer show through the fabric? Maybe it's a pashmina that... Um, you want the backside of it to look as nice as the front in case it blows in the wind or whatever. So depends on what's going to happen to this item after you embroider it. Next, we'll talk about choosing stabilizer weight. So naturally, the denser or more stitches in the design, the heavier the stabilizer or the more stabilizer you need. You may get a better result with two layers of a lighter stabilizer than one of a heavier. Now, why would that be? The reason for I say that is because if you have designs with open spaces and lots of line work and outlines, and you're starting to pull a heavy stabilizer away from that, it could distort the stitches. But if you use two of a lighter weight, then you tear them away one at a time and it won't distort the stitches. You can also 
combine weights and types of stabilizers. There's a lot of times I need to use a cutaway because the fabric stretches, but it's I need something else, a little bit more support for that. So I might put a tear weight with it as long as I get the foundation right for the design. So it's like a recipe. You can just mix it up. So our stabilizers have always been categorized by color. On the labels, if it's red, it's for a cutaway, purple for a tearaway, blue for a washaway, and yellow for all of our specialty stabilizers, kind of a catch-all category or miscellaneous. So let's talk about cutaways first. When you use cutaway is when you have a fabric that stretches. So any knits, t-shirts, sweatshirts, but also denim, and I can prove to you that denim stretches because when you put those jeans on in the morning and you go out to the store and run around all day and you come home in the afternoon and they're kind of baggy, you didn't lose weight. The denim stretches. Um, so you'll want to use a cutaway on that as well. Anything that's got a twill in it um, or denim. So most wearables of also you should consider a cutaway on because the more they're washed um the more the cutaway helps to continue to support the design if you use a tearaway on a work shirt you know left chest to do a logo and that shirt's going to get washed you know at least once a week or two or three times a week um that cutaway will help maintain the integrity of the design. It'll keep it from going like this. It'll keep it looking straight and you won't have to press it. So it's a good time to use a cutaway. So removing cutaway, we cut it away. Um, that's how it's removed. So you're going to cut it away with scissors because you can't tear it. And if you have you, you want to cut it about a quarter to an eighth of an inch around your design, just being careful that you don't cut the fabric um, underneath the stabilizer. So hold it up and cut it so you can see what you're doing. And if you have any big open areas like a wreath, don't cut it out of the center of it. Leave it in there because that helps to maintain the shape of the design. So poly mesh cutaways probably are most used cutaway. Uh, it, it comes in three colors, black, white, and beige, so it won't show through fabrics. Uh, it's very strong, but it's a great choice for knits and stretchy fabrics and fabrics that you're going to launder a lot um, or garments. It's a great choice for baby garments or to be used where skin irritation can uh, occur. The polyester, or it's not polyester, it's nylon. The poly mesh, um, gets softer as it's washed and it's not scratchy at all. It's usually the bobbin stitches that are scratchy, um, not the, the poly mesh, but we have solutions for that. Um, it holds the embroidery securely um, during repeated washings and it's available in 10, 15 and 20 inch rolls. Then we have heavyweight cutaway. This is a really versatile stabilizer. Um, it's used a whole lot in the um, commercial business with embroidery um, and can sometimes, you know, if used improperly, make things stiff. But it's a great choice for denim, for sweatshirt fleece, for heavy knits, um, for also for home deck things where you can leave it in and give some more stability to it, wall hangings, pillows, that kind of thing. Um, it does soften after it's washed. Perfect choice for high stitch count designs. And again, excellent for industrial and multi-needle embroidery machines. Next, we have tearaway. So tearaways are probably the most popular design, I mean, the most popular stabilizer uh, because we like to pull that off. And, and a lot of the stuff we stitch on is woven um, or non-woven. So that's not, um, that doesn't stretch. So it supports fewer stitches than cutaway, but a lot more than wash away use it on woven fabrics or in conjunction with a cutaway on knit fabrics. So I recommend using it on quilt cottons on the back of towels, um, like both uh, dish towels and bath towels, terry towels, um, home deck fabrics, linen, and other sturdy ready to wear items like a denim jacket, hats and bags. Our stabilizers, our tearaways are made um, for use with fabrics without stretch. They tear away easily when your embroidery is complete and they don't have a directional tear 
And there's no need to crisscross layers because they're smooth and even. There's no high or low spots anywhere in them. So removing tear away, you tear it away, of course, but you really tear it away from the design. So support the design like you see in the picture here with your finger or thumb and then pull it away from the design. What could happen if you don't? Say you have uh, a really nice satin stitch monogram on a napkin and here's your design and you're pulling it back over the design instead of away from it. It's going to get to the other side of that satin before the stitches that perforated are going to let go of it. So you could have stabilizer folded under there and then it would make your design look odd. So tear it away from the outer edges, support the stitches. Um, and you can leave it in any open areas on there uh, to stay forever if you like. So support the stitches and remove one layer at a time if there's more than one. So lightweight tear away. It's great for things like red work, open designs. It's really easy to remove. Um, it's great also for sewing. I was watching a little bit on the session before with the buttonholes and sewing buttons on. It's a great thing to do with decorative stitches and buttonholes and it tears away really nice and clean. So, but it gives you that support so you don't have ripply buttonholes. Ultra clean and tear. Now this has to be my favorite stabilizer personally, at least my favorite tear away for sure. It's a high quality, medium weight, wash away tear away. What that means is it's got uh, fibers in it. All of our stabilizers are fiber based. The only paper that's in any of our stabilizers is the release paper for adhesive ones. So the binders in this tear away um, are water soluble. So what happens when you get it wet is it kind of falls apart. So if you're washing something that has little pieces stuck in behind it that you can tear away or didn't feel like taking the time to do it with a washing or so, those will go away um, and it will leave some of the stabilizer, the fibers underneath the stitches to continue to support them. So if you've got a filled design, it'll stay under there to support the design, but the rest of it will go away. You want to use it on woven fabrics, including towels. Um, and it's also avail available in fusing. I use this for uh, piecing in the hoop or even foundation piecing. You can cut a piece of it and run it through the printer to print your uh, quilt design on if you're doing foundation or paper piecing and then stitch it on that. And here's the cool thing. You don't have to tear it away. The first time that quilt gets washed once, then it's, it's broken down and there's a little bit of fiber left next to your batting and that's perfectly fine. So Ultra Clean and Tear Plus is the sticky version of Ultra Clean and Tear. I use this on terry towels. I use it on fleece. Um, it provides great stabilization for medium to high stitch count designs and use it on woven fabrics, including towels. Um, when you don't want that permanent backing left on there, you can actually just turn your towel over and spritz the design area and it lets go. Now, if you're putting it on something that has a nap or a pile, you always want to peel what's stuck to the product off at a 45 degree angle. That way you're not going with the grain across there where the loops are 45 degree angle and it won't stick to the loops and, and pull them. So uh, just a little fun fact there. So I would also use this when monogramming napkin corners, um, lots of lots of things. Anytime you need a sticky stabilizer. OK, so we do have an essential stabilizer bundle. And in this bundle, we have poly mesh, which is your cutaway for knits. This is a bundle that is designed for all you new users out there, this is great for you to use. Um, and, you know, those of you who embroider a lot, it's time to stock up. Um, it's got poly mesh as your cutaway, ultra clean and tear, your tear away, the water soluble, it's not water soluble tear away, it's water soluble binders with fibers in it that support your design. It also has the ultra clean and tear plus. So there's your sticky for sticking down napkins, collar points, um, plackets, anything that's hard to hoop 
um, and you want to stick down, it's great for that. Like towels. I always stick my towels down. They love to jump out of the hoop the second you turn your back. Then Aquamesh, which we did not talk about, um, but we will this afternoon. Um, Aquamesh is a completely water soluble stabilizer and it's fiber based. So um, it looks like fiber. So it's not a clear film. It's very strong. And we recommend that for all of our freestanding lace designs, um, freestanding lace and applique. We use it in that. Anytime you want to do something where you want all the remnants of stabilizer to go away, um, like patches or key fobs, lots of fun stuff in the hoop, um, Aquamesh is great for all of that. Then we also have a heavyweight stabilizer. Now, Kimberly talked about that yesterday because we use that a lot in our tiling scenes. Um, but you could use it on other things where you've got, you know, a heavy design and you don't want to hoop multiple layers of a lighter weight tear away. Heavyweight really is good. It's much easier to hoop than, you know, two layers of a medium or a lightweight. Um, so that's included. And then Stitch 2.0 is a topper. And we will... We will talk about toppers sometime this week, but just a little overview on toppers. I put a topper on almost everything I do. This is a clear film type topper to go over the top of your fabric before you start stitching. Um, the only time I really don't use it is if I'm quilting in the hoop or doing red work. Then I really don't. Otherwise, I use that. Um, so it, it provides a barrier um, over your fabric to keep your, your thread from sinking down into it. It just makes your embroidery look nicer. More threads left on top of the fabric so you see it more um, and it, it looks prettier. It, it goes together nicer. So that topper's in there. So you will use all of those. You've got the heavyweight for home deck and heavy designs, ultra clean and tear plus for your towels, aqua mesh for freestanding projects and lace and all of that, um, ultra clean and tear, your medium white tear away and poly mesh your cutaway. In addition to those six stabilizers, we're going to make this really attractive for you. You get the best of 2020 design collections. Now, let's take a look at what those are before we go over pricing here. You get all 10 of these collections. Um, Zen bookmarks. You would use the ultra clean and uh, the aqua mesh on that because you're going to do those all in the hoop and there's fabric on the back as well and stitch the design and um, in any color you want and then you just wet it around the edges and it's ready to go um, the freestanding quilted frames likewise aqua mesh plus um, to have a nice clean edge where the satin stitch goes around that and that'll fit there's several frames in that collection just like the zen bookmarks have a lot of different bookmarks. They're really fun. They're fun for kids to color in too with water soluble markers in case they make a mistake. They can do it again and again and again. Um, then we have squeeze the day. I love the stitching on this one. There's like chain stitch and, and some specialty hand look stitches on that. It's a really fun design collection. Feathered frills quilting. There are lots of different designs in this that you know, fit in a square, fit in a circle, do for a border, for sashing, for a corner, triangle, and you can mix and match them. Um, and not just for quilting. I use quilting designs on garments. I'll do them around the hem of a skirt or even um, on, you know, a sheet or <laughs> if you're really ambitious, a king size sheet. If not, just do the pillowcase. Um, you know, for a border around the hem on one of those or a tablecloth. So quilting designs are fun, fun to do and they're quick. Um, autumn buildable lace doilies. Ooh, just in time. You have time to stitch these for Thanksgiving. They're really pretty um, beautiful with a fall motif in it with the leaves and acorns. Uh, be a great hostess gift. There's napkin corners. There's all different shapes of lace that you can put together and it's so easy to do. If you haven't tried freestanding lace, don't be afraid. It's one of the simplest things to do. I always like that have have that running in my sewing room when I'm cleaning up. Um, it's surprising I have that much freestanding lace because I don't clean up all that much. Anyway, because it just takes a while to stitch and you can go about and do your business and then it's done. It's so easy. Everyone should try it. Um, the next collection is Thankful Harvest. This is white work and it's harvest uh, fall, but not Halloween, more Thanksgiving. 
um, pumpkins and beautiful designs. And of course you can stitch them in any color you want. It doesn't have to be white. It's just a single color design. They're single color designs. Then we have flowering snowflakes. These are really fun and they're digitized in multiple colors, uh, which make them really bright and, and cheerful and, and a fun thing when you get to the middle of winter and the holidays are over um, and you still have snow on the ground. You could also do them all in one color if you want, uh, if you prefer a more traditional white, but it's they're very pretty. Celtic quilting. This is so pretty and it's triple stitched designs and they're all Celtic knots and different shapes and sizes, circles and borders and squares. And just by itself on plain fabric would be gorgeous. Um, do placemats or napkins um, or tablecloth. Then the freestanding basket for all seasons. This is a fun thing to do. It's got the basket, which is all done in the hoop and it has a place for you to insert the ribbon. You can see on there the blue ribbon that's inserted in the handle and um, around the basket. Then it has eight different decorations that you can put into holes on the side of the basket. There's two for spring, two for summer, two for fall, and two for winter. So you can just switch out the decorations on your basket. You can put a plant in it. You could put candy in it. You could put all kinds of things in it. Um, even like cocktail napkins, Ooh, I just thought of that. Um, lots of fun things, great for a gift, maybe with some cookies in it for um, a get well gift or a welcome to the neighborhood gift. And then finally, reverse applique notebook covers. These are really fun to make. It's all done in the hoop. You put the fabric underneath and then you cut out the cork on top. Oh, I've made one of these, um, not, I made some with cork, but I also made some with our new Lux Sparkle Vinyl. It works great. Uh, Craftex would work really well on those too. Great to put a little notebook in that, you know, you can keep a shopping list or, you know, a list of what stabilizers you have at home or threads or whatever you want to put in it. Great teacher gift. Um, so all these fun designs are included in this collection for only $179 along with the stabilizer. So I'm going to tell you the best of 2020 by itself, if you just want the designs <laughs> is I think like $350 for the 10 full collections. But here you get that and six rolls of stabilizer for only 179. It's a $538 value. So don't miss out. It's a, it's a great deal. Tamara, what an amazing presentation you just gave us. That was so great. And that oh, thank you. Such a great value for everything that you yes. have. Um, lots and lots of questions. You're going to be joining yes. me a little bit later on this afternoon. Yes. Is that right? I think the yes. number one thing we need to answer is, is there a chart PDF or just a quick guide on your website that people can download so they can look at it? A quick um, stabilizer guide? Yeah. Yes. The one that I showed you at the very beginning, if you go into Embroidery Online to Resources, and then embroidery 101 so it and is and it's in there uh, there's a picture of it and you can also uh, link to download it wonderful and uh one of our viewers one of proper actually said she downloaded it she's laminating it going to use it as a quick reference guide that was such great information thank you so much oh you're so welcome i know that we're going to see you a little bit later on this afternoon right now everybody it, don't forget if you want to buy the bundle you can always go to embroideryonline.com. Use that code that's scrolling on the bottom of your screen right there, AB5GG2NM, to get 20% off any of the products there. Of course, you can always join Spree Club now to get your monthly design. We have a show special price, by the way. So you have to call SMP right here at 800-401-8151 to get that special show price. Wow, what a fantastic presentation. I want to keep the momentum going and bring Blaine back in. Hey, Blaine, did you learn? Hey, Jane, that's some great specials. And hey, our next uh, presenters are just as awesome. And we got some great specials with them too. So got to tell y'all who's coming up next. We have uh, we have Kim Sandberg and Christina uh, Whitney from Handy Quilter here. And guys, uh, these two ladies uh, you know, both started, uh, you know, sewing and, and quilting early on. 
They got more inspired when they started working from Handy Quilter. They've been working on these high-end quilting machines, and uh, now they're national educators. And, you know, I got to tell you, uh, you know, Christina, in her spare time, she likes to run in place, and Kim likes to dance. So welcome, Kim and Christina. Really call the yeah. that Here we go. Come on. <laughs> so we saw you dancing, Kim, and then we saw Christina, you know, yesterday running in place. And yeah. I got to tell y'all, we had a lot of people commenting about, about that. That was the best <laughs> analogy I think I've ever heard. And I love that, Christina, that you, how you explained that. And so, you know, I had no idea that we'd get y'all two uh, together. It was going to be like the comedy team from uh, Handy Quilter. Y'all are fantastic together. Oh, we're just together. getting started. <laughs> yeah. We, well, we hey, have I'm a little not, too I'm much going to work, I know we so. want to talk all about that moxie. So I'm going to get out of your way and let you educate everybody, you know, yes. on that moxie. Because we love the moxie. <laughs> Thanks, Blaine. Yeah, uh, so talking about the moxie today, we've got it right here, but uh, just going a little bit off of what Blaine was just saying there, Christina and I both started quilting on home machines, and we've actually yep. got one set up right here. Um, how many of you quilted like this? We've got this throat space that you can see. It's not much bigger than my hand. We were shoving those quilts through there, weren't we, Christina? Yes, I did a king size denim quilt oh. with the fleece backing <laughs> through my domestic machine. Bless you. Wanted to kill myself by the end of it. Seriously. So yeah, it's definitely doable. We've oh, yeah. done it. We, we've done it, but there's a much easier way to do it. And, yes. and this is where we just love the moxie for someone who's been quilting on that home machine and they're ready to take that next step. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about the moxie and what we can do with it. Well, first of all, let's tell people what a long arm machine is because yeah. i mean for me personally the first time i ever saw a long arm machine was when i went to training with my mother-in-law when mm -hmm. she bought her machine yeah. i had no idea what a long arm machine was or what right. it was capable of yeah it was a game changer for me oh yeah i wouldn't be here without my long arm no me literally either. me either totally i remember yeah. the first time i went into a quilt shop and they had a big machine set up in the back and you could bring your quilts in and have them quilted and i was just fascinated and yeah. the only design that they quilted was stipple over everything because this was in like 2001. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it total game changer, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So this Moxie that we have here is um, kind of our entry level machine. Mm -hmm. It's got a 15 inch throat space. So compare that throat space to what we just showed you on the domestic machine, which is like mm. maybe Four or five inches. Four or five inches. Yeah. Now, granted, that is a small machine. We know that there yeah. are bigger machines out there, but that's what a lot of us start on. It's yep. just that little that little machine. I mm -hmm. uh, quilted many a quilt in that yep. tiny little throat space. So going to fifteen inches is huge. huge. But not only is it fifteen inches throat space, mm -hmm. but look at the width. Yeah. We don't have to roll up that quilt no. and try to shove it through. It is out. It is All flat. You can see the quilt top. It is fantastic. And that is, you know, with the loft frame. Mm -hmm. So this is our eight foot loft frame. You can also get a two foot extension right. to make it a 10 foot. Exactly. Um, you can also get the moxie on what we call our little foot frame, yep. which is kind of a, a hooping system. Yeah. So a couple options that are available there. Yep. Um, so let's talk about the frame real quick. Let's do it. We kind so, of, uh, we, we were talking yesterday um, after we got done filming and we were like, you know, I think we should talk a little bit more about some of the basics when you're making that jump from quilting on your home machine to quilting on a frame mounted machine. And the biggest difference is the way you load your quilt. Exactly. So you, you don't have, you know, basting that you do ahead mm -hmm. of time. You're not pinning that mm -hmm. and then rolling it up and shoving it through. Yep. You're actually with the slot frame assembling it in three different layers. Yep. So let's, um, yeah, let's take a look, lift this up here. So we actually start, Oops, sorry. With our backing layer. And Kim, did you have the yeah. leader? The leaders are right behind you. Oh, if you want to grab those. Yeah, we've got those there. Okay. And I've got I've got my little quilt here that we had for demonstration. So on this one, this speckled fabric is the backing. Mm -hmm. And that's so this here. The leaders are actually Velcroed onto this pole that we have right here. Mm -hmm. And you can take the Velcro off if you need to. Yeah. Um, and then we'll just pin our backing fabric onto the end of the leader and then it is laid out flat yeah. and then we use this pole and we just roll it up yeah so all of the backing is rolled onto one bar 
exactly. And okay. it keeps it nice and flat, uh, wrinkle free. Like I know that sometimes I'm a little lazy and I don't really press my backs as well as I should. And this allows you, yeah, we live in the desert. It's really dry here. So we missed it a little. It does dry really fast, maybe in more humid areas. That wouldn't be the smartest thing to do, but um, you roll it up and it presses out all the wrinkles. Yep. It's great. And it keeps it nice and tight. Yeah. You don't have to deal with any sections that are shifting. Mm -hmm. it's Everything amazing. stays where it's supposed to. Correct. It's fantastic. Yeah. So were you going to pin on? Yeah, there, let's let's show them just a little bit how to pin. So I have my I have my little quilt here. And it's normally we quilt. would not have it all basted together. No. So it would be just the backing fabric at this point. So we're going to when you're pinning, it's really important. You always want to mark the center of your backing. And because you make your backing bigger than your uh, quilt top. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. People probably aren't aware of that. You have to do really... at least an extra four inches all the way around so that you can pin it and have plenty of space so that you're not maybe getting a little closer to those pins on the edge yeah. than you want to. Give yourself a little wiggle room. Yeah, you need to. So we do that. We find the center. When you first get your leaders, you mark the center. And then we pin them from the center out to the side and then from the center out to the side. Now, people always ask us, why do you pin from the center out? Well, there's a pretty good reason. If we pin from one side and go over, fabric tends to have a little give and stretch in yeah. it. And so if we're pinning from one side and pulling a little bit as we're going over, that center is not necessarily going to be lined up if we pin, pin starting over here at the edge. But if we pin the center and go out and center and go out, it keeps everything nice and centered and in the middle. We're going to do the same thing with our quilt top. Yep starting from the center. So that way we have the, all of the centers lined up. Exactly. So the backing fabric, the centers lined up, the top fabric, the centers lined up, and then we'll also take it to the, the back of the machine and line it up at the center there as well. Yep. And we just want to show you really quick. So we use these, um, we use these nice, big, sturdy corsage pins. And they are, they, there's actually a packet of these that come with the Moxie. It's one of the great things. It does come with the Moxie. And we do a really big bite. Do you actually want to put one in, Christine? I think we'd get a little bit of a better shot if you do that. So I have the one in, we have the one in the center here. And we put them, we don't want them to actually overlap over the top of each other. But we want them so that they're about a fingertip width apart. You can see that there's the end of my pin. And there's the beginning of that one. We want that little bit of space in between them. That way everything lays nice and flat and you'll just pin all the way across and then all the way out from the center on both sides. And that's how you attach your um, quilt backing and your quilt top to your leaders. So yep. we just, we, we were thinking, we're like, you know what? I know this is something people have questions about. So we didn't even tell you what a leader was last yeah, or we yesterday. Didn't. We just so, talked about them. The, they come with the frame. Yeah. The leader is just an extension of fabric that's mm -hmm. attached directly to the pole that you attach the other end to your fabric. Yeah. To roll it up exactly so. okay so yeah we can go ahead and pull that out of the way and let's let's show them the other layers here really quick we can bring set this over here yep there's another pin okay oh yeah we want to keep okay. track of those so the backing you've got it so that the right side of the fabric is facing down because right. that's the bottom of your quilt mm -hmm. and then we've got a layer of batting and with these long arm machines, you can use pretty much any batting you want. Yeah. You can yeah. use the high profile, yeah, the high loft, loft, um, polyester, yeah. wool, yep. bamboo, cotton, all kinds of yep. blends. You can even uh, double bat, Correct. meaning use two bats. Like the quilt in the background, I used two bats on. There's quite a few of the stuff that you and I tend to quilt. We, yeah. we, we do the double bat because we like the quilting to pop a little more. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got our layer of batting, mm -hmm. and then we have the top, our quilt top. Yeah. So the quilt top, you want the right side up. That's you right. definitely don't want this quilt that, that go in the wrong direction. Nope. And it, again, is rolled onto this second pole here using another leader, and it's just pinned on and then rolled up onto the pole. Yep. Okay. And the backing has a leader here at the front, and then there's a leader back here on the take-up pole. So there's actually a leader on both edges of the top and the bottom edge of the backing, but the leader that holds your quilt top, there's only one that holds the bottom edge of it. And then you bring the top edge up to the top and you baste it and start quilting. Yep. So that's why there's three leaders that come with the loft frame. Correct. And when you say you baste the top, mm -hmm. the Moxie does the basting. Yep. You don't have to 
pin no, or anything. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. So, Based stitch. Based I should stitch say using that. the fancy moxie. Yeah. Go down so. to that four or five stitches per inch and you do that stitch across the top and it just holds everything right in place. Yep. So let's show them real quick how we can advance the fabric or yeah, move the let's fabric. Let's do. Let's do. So I don't know if we can get a shot over here, but we've got some ratchets right here and some ratchet stops. So if we take those ratchet stops off, I can take my side clamp side off. Side clamps, yep. And then this back pull, I'm gonna just rotate it and it's gonna rotate both of the front two bars and the batting as a unit together. And just move that fabric up. Yep. When I've got it where I want it, I just put my ratchets back down, shift everything so it's where I'm needing to have it, put my side clamps back on, Base stitch down the sides and you're ready to stitch. Ready to start quilting that next section, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how easy it is to um, advance your quilt, essentially moving your quilt through the throat space of the machine, but you're yeah. moving it through the, um, the quiltable space within the frame mm -hmm. is what you're doing instead. It's the big difference. So hopefully that's a, a good little, uh, Clarification. Yeah, primer yeah. for those yeah. who have questions about quilting uh, using a frame, if they haven't done that before. If you guys have any other questions about that, you can go ahead and put those in the comments. We'll be happy to answer. Um, why don't we talk a little bit more about the Moxie and what okay. it comes with. So we, we've been talking about the loft frame is one of the options. It does come with that extra two foot extension if you want to add it, that is an, an additional. What are some of the other um, What are some of the other features of the Moxie that just make it awesome? The different modes that you can stitch in. Yeah. So you can stitch in manual mode. Yes. Or you can stitch in cruise or precision. Yes. And if you want a great analogy, <laughs> yes. watch the video from yesterday. That's what Blaine was talking about earlier. <laughs> where we, we jog in place and talk yes. about how precision and cruise, um, how they work. Yeah. So precision and cruise are two different ways that you can use stitch regulation. Yeah. So the Moxie will actually create the same length of stitch yep. as you're stitching along. Exactly. Whereas if you put it in manual mode, you are the one that's mm -hmm. controlling the stitch um, length. Exactly. So, yep. So, so a lot we of have, variety. Yeah, we have, we have that that we can choose. We also have a lot of uh, the great lighting on the Moxie. The Moxie's got a nice light ring right here. We actually have it turned off for filming. Um, it's so bright that it creates a halo. <laughs> it's like you can't actually see the machine that well when we have the lights turned on. So, but trust us, the lights are really nice and bright. Um, the screen, uh, although it's a little bit on the smaller side, that's okay, because we actually use the handlebar buttons to move around in those screens and choose the different modes your stitch length, um, what your motor speed's gonna be, whether you're gonna stop with your needle down or your needle up, all of those things you can choose here on the screen. Yep. So we have that. Um, I like how you mentioned though that the, the handlebars yeah. are what you use. You've got two navigate. buttons on the top on this side, two buttons on the top on this side. Yep. And depending on which button or combination of buttons that you push, that's going to change your screen. Exactly. And then usually the next question is, how do I know uh, where to go in here. How do I navigate with that? Well, the Moxie comes with something really special. So let me grab this. This is our, uh, the Moxie accessory kit. We, we like to call this a quilt party in a box, don't we? It's, it's pretty great. It comes with a lot of great things in addition to what comes with all of, all of our pushies. So, and that's a little tight. So first of all, it comes with this little chart and it shows you the different ways that you can set up the frame. We didn't even mention this. You can set up the frame in two different modes, either high or low. And depending on which way you do that will depend on which pole you load your quilt top or your quilt backing on because it, it's different. But it's all explained on this card, which is really great. Um, our next card talks about the built app. And once again, this is with the frame. It makes such a difference, yes. doesn't it? Yep. So the built app, it is an app that you put on your phone mm -hmm. or tablet or whatever. Yeah. And it has instructions that are like 3D visuals. Mm -hmm. Like you can push it and make it rotate so you can Turn see it. exactly where things are going. And yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It makes it really easy to put the frame together. Um, we actually put a frame together or we actually we helped people, didn't we? Yeah. Is that what we did? We, we were yeah. kind of involved in the testing and we helped a couple of other um, people 
put it together. Okay, so we've got a question here that fits in right with that. So how big is the quilting area if we have just the eight foot frame that comes with the so boxy? With any of our frames, you lose about one foot. Mm -hmm. So this is an eight foot frame that we've got set up. So you can quilt a width of um, 72 inches. Nope. Seven 80, feet, seven 84 feet. inches. <laughs> Again, I don't do math on camera. No, I usually don't. Seven I, feet. Seven, seven feet, feet. Seven feet, which is 84 <laughs> inches. So if you set up the eight foot frame, 84 inches. If you get the two foot extension, you get another two feet beyond that, which is 108. And she practiced that math I ahead did, of I time. I did, I practiced that. I want everybody <laughs> to know. So the next card that comes in the, the awesome little quilt party in a box here is the one that I was talking about that shows you on the back all the different, uh, what all the different icons stand for on the Moxie screen and how to navigate the Moxie screen using those buttons on the handlebars. And on the front, we've got, this is really awesome. It's a needle and thread guide. And I know that this week, uh, part of the promotion with the Moxie is a thread bundle that you get with it. So this right here tells you what size needle yeah. you need to use with your thread. Exactly. So a lot of times people think, okay, I'm using this certain fabric. What needle do I use? But you want to choose your needle depending on the weight of the, the um, thread, thread that you're using. Exactly. You match your thread to your needle. Yep. yep. And then uh, the bottom part here walks you through how to thread your machine, which is very, very helpful. <laughs> yep. You want to have it threaded. Properly. You want to have it threaded. <laughs> and it's not hard. Yeah. And then the last piece of paper in here is the fun one that we like to kind of fight over a little bit. These are stickers or decals, whichever <laughs> you want to call them. And they're awesome. They're so that you can uh, trick out your moxie if you want to, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, there's also two stickers on here that are specifically for the frame. Um, the quilt top and the quilt backing you put on the poles so that you always know which direction to turn them in and which direction to put your quilt top on and which direction to put your quilt backing on. Yep. It looks like we have a question. Is the frame height adjustable? Yes. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you yeah. can adjust that. And if you even find that when you're at the highest position and you want it higher, you can put casters on these mm -hmm. and that will add even more height to it. A little bit more height. So. We have casters on this one so we can move it around easily. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a great accessory to add to your frame. Okay, next we have the other stuff that's in here. We have our little bag that contains our boiler, tools. the tools, extra bobbins, all that good stuff. The power cord. Very important. Very important. We have the thread mast. And we actually have a second thread mast in here, which is for this, which this comes in a separate box. But this is the Moxie bobbin winder, which yes. we told you we'd show you today. So this this allows you to wind bobs in, bobbins independently. Bobs, super bobs is what I'm thinking of. Um, bobbins independently of the machine. Great little bobbin winder. So speaking of super bobs, um, with the Moxie, you can also purchase pre-wound uh, pre bobbins. Yep. And some will come with your machine. Mm -hmm. um, they are an M-class bobbins. Yep. So you can purchase pre-wounds. You can um, wind your own. Yep. There's lots of, of um, different options there. Yep. And then we have our, oh, here's our getting started bag, which we've already pulled a bunch of the thread out of. And speaking of thread, here are some of the different types of thread that come with the moxie for you to try out there's a full array here and there's a pre-wound bobbin for you to give a try and there's also a really great booklet in here that's from superior threads that talks all about threads this is this is actually really interesting read believe it or not and there's a dvd in here with bob dr bob doing a thread thread therapy with dr bob he explains threads and needles and how they work together and all that good stuff very, very important information if you're starting out as a long arm quilter or just wanting to sew in general. Yeah. It's got some great information. In I know that when I learned all this stuff, it actually even changed like my piecing and stuff because I realized I wasn't using the right type of thread. I wasn't using the right type of needle. And when I made a few of those adjustments, my sewing got so much better too, just my general sewing, my piecing. So with the, um, with the, with this comes the how to quilt kit. And this includes some instructions here. I'll hand this to you. And we talked about these a little bit yesterday. And then we also give you a yard of this awesome fabric that has a grid on it so that you can practice some stitching on it. Yep. So like we said, quilt party in a box. Yeah. So this little card gives you um, some different options of great 
uh, designs mm -hmm. to get started with. Exactly. And showed you how to do them. And then again, practice on your practice piece. Um, if you finish your practice piece, throw on some more fabric yeah. and just keep playing until you're comfortable with it. Exactly. Or do some charity quilts. Yeah. Those we do are lots always, of those when we're trying new things. Yeah, those are those are a great way to learn how to quilt. You can just try out all kinds of new things, just have fun with it, and you know that whoever gets that quilt is going to love it. Yep. So charity quilt's definitely a great way to learn how to use your long arm. Yep. Well, do we have any other questions? I know we've had a few popping up here and there. We always love to just try to answer the questions that are out there that and you have. Sorry, yeah. I totally interrupted you. <laughs> Go for it. I was going to say, unfortunately, we can't see the comments um, because our eyes are not that powerful. But if they pop them up really big on the screen, we can actually see those. See so those if well. we don't answer your question, we're not ignoring you. Okay. Can Good you question. do panographs and groovy boards with the Moxie? Yes. You would need to purchase the tabletop that goes mm -hmm. in the back, yep. um, and you will also need to get a quilt from the back kit. Um, in addition to the quilt in the back kit, which mm -hmm. comes with the handlebar and the laser light, mm -hmm. um, to do groovy boards, you would also need to get the groovy board stylus adapter. Yep, and groovy boards. And groovy boards. And groovy boards. Yeah, and to do panographs. And panographs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so. We'll probably, I think we're planning on maybe showing you a little bit more of that later this week too, on the uh, specifically on the Moxie. I know we talked about it on the Amara yesterday. So you yep. could always go back and watch that little bit, the Amara um, yeah. that we did yesterday. Yep. So. And there's other great videos out yeah. that we've done showing how to use the panographs. But you, yes, you can definitely do that on the Moxie. Yep, for sure. So, um, one word of advice, though, is make sure that when you purchase your panographs is that you don't get them so that they're so wide mm. that you can't fit them in your throat space. Yeah, and actually the next question goes along with oh. that. So Patricia's <laughs> asking how many inches of quilting area between the poles. So she's talking about the actual throat, like throat space of the machine. So we talk about this machine having 15 inches of throat space. Does that mean we actually have 15 inches of quilting space? No, not quite. Because we have this pole in the background, which has an inch and a half diameter. So we lose that. And you can't quite get the needle clear back touching this pole here. So you lose a few more inches there. I would say a safe bet with the Moxie is probably what, 10 to 12 inches of quiltable space? Yeah, to start out with, with yeah. like a panograph or something, I usually drop like six inches off yeah. the throat space so that you have a little bit of wiggle room as yeah. you as oh. you advance the quilt, you're gonna right. get build up on this bar, which is gonna drop your throat space down a little bit that. more. Yeah, exactly. So I usually just, yeah, rule of thumb, six inches off the throat space. Yeah, so you just err on the side of caution there and that way your design will fit all the way through, especially if you're doing a really big quilt. Yep. So that was a really good question though. Let's see if okay. we have any others. So I know yesterday people had asked about the, the weight. We have not oh, yeah. gotten the weight yet, but we did remember to bring the bobbin winder. <laughs> yes. And we found out later that you guys wanted to see feathers. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got that on the docket for Coming this soon. week. So we're, we're All not right, well, good deal. Your, your comments. Well, hey, that was a great presentation, uh, ladies, and uh, we really enjoyed that. So I want to remind everybody now how they can actually purchase this. So this is the Moxie 15-inch from Handy Quilter. And guys, what a great machine. This was released uh, a little bit earlier in the year. And the price is $49.95. And what you're getting with this, you're going to get that loft. You're Actually, you can, use, you can choose. If you have plenty of room, you can do the loft frame which is an eight foot frame, and you can buy an extension for that, that'll make it a 10 foot. But if you're limited on room, you can actually buy the little foot frame. We have the choice on our website, you can actually pick the little foot frame, which is a five foot frame. So if you're limited on room, don't let that stop you to get this 15 inch Moxie. Uh, and then right now we have a show special, you're getting $250 worth of thread. So we're, that thread bundle is gonna consist of some King Tut thread masterpiece, uh, Fantastico, Magnifico, Omni, the Omni V, the bottom line, the so fine and superior metallic threads are coming with that $250 thread bundle that's coming with that. So you're getting that all for $49.95, your choice of that frame, like I said, and you can also buy that extension if you want to make it a 10 foot frame and free shipping right to your door. And we also have special so fast financing available so we can zero percent interest financing if you need some help uh getting uh, you know to buy this and make those low monthly payments we have that give us a call 800-401-8151 or you can go right to the website 
and just right up in a search bar, type in Moxie. It'll take you right to the product page and you can buy it all from there. You can choose your frame. You can choose any, the bundles already included in that. So go to the website, sewingmachinesplus.com, search bar, type in Moxie, or give us a call at 800-401-8151 and make the purchase. So great, great presentation. And hey, I'm going to bring Jane right back into the screen with us. So Jane. Hey, are you, are, are you excited about all you've seen so far? I'm loving everything I've seen so far on day two of SoFest. By the way, I loved everything I saw yesterday as well, because of course I'm watching. And just so you know, um, I, I'm learning and I'm shopping all at the same time. I get to host <laughs> too. So this is the problem of hosting because then I leave and I go shop. So thanks. There for you that. go. <laughs> hey, what's well, awesome? Well, hey, I know we're going to keep moving on and you've got a special guest coming up next. So I'm going to let you uh, go ahead and introduce her. I am so excited for our next guest. I am wearing my brother blue. She is a brother educator. She has published her own line of quilt patterns. She's been featured in quilting magazines. She's created one of a kind quilt dies. She's a brother educator, like I said. And with all of those great brother machines at her fingertips, there's no limits to what she can do. She's been sewing for 35 years, so I guess she was three when she started. Maybe two, maybe one. I don't know, but I love learning from her. Please welcome Heather Banks. Hey, Heather. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? <laughs> How about that intro, huh? That was great. I need to save that for Thanksgiving dinner so I can make sure my entire family hears that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's just answer this question. We got to clear that up. If you've been sewing for 35 years, you were like two, right? Yeah, right? Like three, two, three, you hit it. Just the nail on the head. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I'm so excited about this machine that you are going to talk about. We love it at Brother. And I love being a Brother ambassador. And I love learning from you. So today we're talking about the Brother SE 1900 sewing and embroidery machine. That's right. I am so excited that I'm here to talk about it. It has so many features. Yeah, it sure does. I mean, you're going to, you, I'm going to let you talk about it because okay. I've got all of my notes here. We've got the built-in stitches. We've got the embroidery. I'm going to let you take it away, Heather. Give us all of the ins and outs, and then we'll come back and recap it for everybody. Sounds great, Jane. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here at SoFest, and I'm here with SC1900, like Jane said. And um, this is a combo sewing machine. So this is sewing and embroidery. And I want you to kind of know about some of what, what makes this machine so special. So if space has been a concern for you at all, maybe um, you're working at your dining room table, maybe uh, you uh, have a just a desk to sew at. I mean, we've all been there and those are what I frequently sew at. So if you want something that gives you a big bang for your buck, you got sewing and embroidery and it fits nicely in your space, this machine might be for you. If you travel, if you, you sew and embroider in your RV, I know lots of people who do that. I think that is so fantastic. I'm aspiring to do that someday. If you travel and you take it in your hotel room, this only weighs 22 pounds. So you can really get a, um, you can fit it in and carry it up the stairs or the elevator or whatever you're doing. And also if you are at all newer to embroidery and you kind of want a, more of a little bit more of a starter machine, you, you don't want to go total top of the line yet. And um, also I have to say, if you have a small business and you're ready to get another embroidery machine, this one might be what you're looking for as well. So I'm gonna switch over the uh, camera so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, here we go. So now what I did, was I went ahead and I put everything out because I wanted you just at first to get an idea of what we were talking about. So this is the SE1900 and you can see just based on space, this is the absolute biggest it's going to get. And this is about 25 inches long by about 14 inches in depth. So it's not a huge machine. You could easily put this on a desk or um, I mean a hotel desk, anything like that would work. Um, now, I want to say it is currently set up for embroidery, like I said, but we're also going to look at the sewing. It is electronic and it comes with a full color screen. It has a 7.4 inch workspace. So from the middle to the end of this machine here in the throat space, you get 7.4 inches. 
And like I said, it's only 22 pounds and it does have a handle up here to carry. So it is very portable and movable as you desire. Let me talk about what you get with the machine. You do get a knee lift. So that is a really nice feature if um, you don't have to take your hands off of the project. It lets you work with your hands down and the, the presser foot comes up and down on its own. I always like to mention, it comes with a full manual. So if you're a print person and you wanna see this stuff, you got it in your hands. It comes with a presser or a, um, excuse me, a foot. A, uh, it also comes with brother thread, it comes with tools, it comes with seven sewing feet plus an embroidery foot, it comes with a bunch of needles, it comes with this really cool tool which I love and all you have to do is put it on your bobbin winder and it gives you a second place for thread. So now you can run a twin needle which by the way you get with this machine. So you, you have another option and you can see up here at the top that all of the embroidery threads are up here. So um, speaking of the, the uh, feet that come with your machine, it does come with a zigzag foot, which we call our J foot or just sort of our regular uh, zigzag foot. It comes with a monogramming foot, an overcasting foot, a buttonhole foot, a blind hem foot, zipper foot, embroidery foot, and you can use other uh, brother feet that snap on. So this is one of our normal brother feet that you're probably used to. You can purchase many other brother feet and snap that on and you will be able to get much more, many more feet use out of this besides just the one that come with it, but it comes with a lot. And I happen to have seen, I caught Joanne's show earlier where she was talking about the buttonhole foot and this is just fabulous. This is the same thing she was showing earlier. So if you got that demo and that education, then you know how to use this. Of course, you can rewind it later and look at it, but it is a very easy two-step button whole foot. So you get so many things here. I'm going to move some of them out of the way so that we can keep talking. But um, now I did mention, of course, this is an embroidery machine and it comes with a five by seven hoop. And this is the plastic grid that comes within the hoop so that you can use this to very easily line up your designs. So we have a five by seven embroidery hoop and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and put also the bobbin back inside. This is just a simple drop-in bobbin. With the drop-in bobbin, you do not have to pull your embroidery thread up to um, what before you start sewing. You know, a lot of times you may be used to dropping your needle and pulling your embroidery th thread out. But with the easy drop-in bobbin, you don't have to do that, which is a really nice feature. Okay, so I'm going to slide this underneath. Now I have to get a little bit in the way for a moment because I'm over on the side and I'm just going to push this in. It is not easy from the side. That's all I have to say, but I got this. Okay, popped in, took me a minute from over here, but I did it. Okay, so here's the, like I said, the um, it's been hooped, it's got stabilizer and it's got fabric on top. It's ready to embroider. I wanna show you a little bit about the screen. And like I mentioned, it was full color. So let's go a little bit closer. So it includes 138 built-in designs. So there's a couple categories here that you can scroll through, kind of give you an idea of what some of them look like. Uh, like I said, it does include the five by seven hoop, but you can also use a four by four or one and a half by two inch hoop. Those are just sold separately, but uh, it does let you use any of those. You can, this is a great machine for monogramming or personalizing. And let me show you a couple things where I've done that. So here you can see that I have a bib and this font that you see here that I made, this where it spells out Ashley, that is one of the included fonts that easily fit in the five by five inch by seven inch hoop. So you, if you have been used to working with a four by four hoop, you may have been used to sometimes having to split names or split designs and that fit without an issue. Um, here is a quilt label that I created and all of this fit in my hoop. There was no issue. Um, you can see how it actually has a multicolored feature. So you can choose, you can change the letter for each uh, in a word 
to different colors. And all of this would fit in the hoop. Here's something a little bit smaller, but again, no problem with the hoop. And all of the fonts that I'm showing you, all of these fonts are built in. So there are seven English fonts in this machine, and here are three examples using them. So personalization, you know, whether that's uniforms, jackets, towels, bags, you know, we love to embroider because we love to uh, personalize. I would, don't want to forget to mention that over on the side is a USB flash drive port. So you can import designs. So you are in no way limited to what comes with the machine. You just save them to your computer and then save them to a flash drive and then they can be imported. And let me give you an idea of how that works. So if I'm on my main screen, and I've inserted my flash drive. I simply go to the flash drive icon and I have one saved right here. This one is on my USB and then I press set and there you go. It just shows up. Now I can even save these, not Disney, but I can save other designs directly to the machine. So you do not have to stay reliant on your flash drive. So I do love that I can import my designs and this machine will hold up to about a megabyte of uh, data. Great, so now that we're on the color screen, now I can't emphasize enough how much I love a color screen because it, it has so many features. Not only can you get a very good idea of what the design is going to look like, you can also get a good clue about what colors you need without having to have the specific brand of thread that maybe that was used in the machine. So for instance, if I go here, my B is the first thing stitching out. Now I can see because it's a color screen that it's blue. Perfect. I don't have to know that 017 is a blue thread. So right off the bat, and then I can see right here that the next spool is green. So this is one of the reasons that I think a full color screen is so useful. This is green here in the window. The next one's purple. It's not necessary for me to know what those numbers mean. And that is one of the things that I really love. Another thing that I love, love about this machine is that it has all kinds of editing features. So let me add, let me, you know, do those monograms that people are always asking us to do. And I can add it to my design. I can either use my finger or there's a move key. I can resize so, you know, things can get smaller. And I'm doing all of this on the screen. So if you don't own software or software isn't something you're ready to get into, you can do your editing right here and you don't have to worry about, you know, can I even see what the design looks like? I mean, that is extremely clear and I'm able to, uh, to make my changes. I can, not only can I uh, resize it and move it, I can mirror image it, I can rotate it. So you may be familiar with some of these buttons if you have a brother machine, uh, maybe not if, this, if you're new to it. Once I create my design, I can again save that to my machine or to a flash drive and remove it and put it in my computer, uh, whatever I wanna do with it. So there's really a lot built into this machine for embroidery and you can see now how easy it is to combine designs. Uh, so let me show you something that I did stitch with this machine and this is a notebook cover. And this is cork. So I wanted you to see that cork stitches very easily on this machine. This is a black cork with a, a gold on the inside. This design came out of this machine. I just love this design. It's such a pretty floral. And the initials also came, from, this is a font that's built into the machine. So if you're wondering, you know, what kind of sizes can I get with a five by seven hoop? This would be something very easily that you could do. Perfect. Okay. Let's keep going. Actually, because this is embroidery, let me kind of show you that if you are a machine embroiderer and you like applique, this machine does have kids' designs built in. And this is an applique design, which I'm having kind of a hard time making flat. And um, you can do uh, applique as well. So lots of fun things to do with this machine. All right, let's look at something on actually Let's look at the sewing side a little bit because I don't have a whole lot of time and I want you to see both. Now you're probably wondering if you haven't seen this machine before, how long it takes to convert 
this machine from sewing to embroidery, right? Because you want this to be convenient, you want this to be easy. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna move my accessories out of the way so that you can see that this is actually an almost zero conversion time between taking, going, moving from embroidery and over to sewing. First thing that's important is I don't want any of the electronics to be affected by this, so I turn it off. And then there's a handle underneath. I slide it out. I'm gonna move it out of the way. So that's as big as the embroidery arm is. And then I'm going to just slide the flat bed, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> into place. And that's all there was. So now this is an, a sewing machine. It's very simple, it's very quick. We'll turn it back on. It really is a very low maintenance machine in terms of transferring over from the embroidery to the sewing. Great, now that we're sewing, let me talk a little bit about that. There are 240 stitches built in and I know I'm gonna have to move this just a little bit because I moved that. So let me make the screen a little bit easier to see. All right, 240 different stitches built into this machine. You could go from decorative to uh, straight stitches. Now you'll notice that again, this is all full color. And over on the side, it's telling you what foot to use. And it's showing you what the, the stitch looks like. It's saying this is 100%. And um, you can do a lot. So let me kind of go into what you can do with the sewing. All right, so I have a piece of fabric right here. And of course, the most basic thing that the machine should do, and we do have to change out our foot. So this is a good opportunity for me to show you very quickly what that looks like. So we had the embroidery foot on our machine. Oops, change so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, so. We have currently the embroidery machine or embroidery foot on the machine. And I'm going to simply loosen the screw and remove that. So there's the embroidery foot. And I'm gonna set that aside. And then I want to put my J foot or just sort of the general foot back on. So I'm going to slide that, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> underneath and screw that back on. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, but this little white strip right here, and you've, you've probably seen it on your sewing machine, <coughs> excuse me, that I've seen it many times, this little white piece is actually here to make threading your needle easier. It makes it clearer and easier to see the thread going through the needle. And I didn't know that either, as long as I've been sewing and someone recently pointed that out to me. So I thought that was a really interesting tip. Okay, let's go ahead. All I'm gonna do is go back to our basic straight stitch. And this is e that we have either left or right justified. And what I've done is I have made my stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my fabric. So if you quilt, <coughs> excuse me, this is a wonderful machine for piecing. And so you can see here, that I have my stitch a quarter of an inch away. Now you get, like I said, many different stitches that are included. So let me go back. One of my favorite stitches to use is the blanket stitch. And if I scroll over, you'll see this is the blanket stitch right here. I like to make it a little bit wider. So here we have that. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the blanket stitch. Now, I like to use the blanket stitch a lot for my bindings. And one of the features of this machine is it has the ability to shift the needle to the left and right. So if you are trying to line up your, your stitch with the edge of a binding, <clears throat> excuse me, and let me give you an example. So this is a blanket stitch, and I do, it, I know that it is the same color, but if I were to line this up and I wanted to make sure, maybe I'm going to put my foot all the way to the edge, and I wanna make sure that my needle will drop on the edge of the binding, and it's not doing that right now. One of the things I can do is I can use left, right, shift to move my needle. So let me show you so you can see the needle move. 
<clears throat> so see how the needle is going to the edge of the fabric. Now it does have um, the ability to get it to exactly where you want your stitch to go. So that is one of my favorite features. <clears throat> Sorry, I am coughing, so I'm gonna take a drink of water. All right, yay. So <laughs> we have left to right shift, and that is absolutely one of my fe favorite features. Another way you can use that is for instance with a zipper. Now I'm not gonna stop to put my zipper foot on right now, but <clears throat> if I use this, I can go left and right. Let me go back to a straight stitch. And you can see that I can get my stitch closer or farther away depending on what I'm sewing. And I frequently use this with zippers. I find it to be a very useful tool. <coughs> okay, let's talk stretchy fabric. So if you are a garment sewer or maybe someone who sews with performance fabrics, you know, that super stretchy, shiny stuff that can be hard to sew with, is this a good machine for something like that? All right, let's look. So if we were to use just a regular straight stitch, no changes or anything different. I'm just gonna go back to the main screen, choose the main, uh, main straight stitch. Let's just take a look there really quick. Now, I would not use this stitch, but I kinda wanna show you the, the difference. So what I'll do is take that out, and this is just a regular straight stitch. And if I pull it, you can see, I mean, I don't, I don't want to use that in my garment sewing with this kind of fabric. And this may be a deterrent and you might be thinking, well, shoot, I, I can't use this. Let's try a different stitch. So we have several things. We have a triple stretch stitch. We have a stem stitch or just the traditional zigzag. Any of those should really work for us, but I'm kind of a fan of the stem stitch personally. So let's give that a shot. And we'll take a look and then we will check that out. So no breaking, nothing happening, and it's it makes a nice stitch. So there are, this is a good machine for knits. You can definitely you do garment sewing with this machine. You can do decorative sewing, and it's good for sewing up to about a quarter of an inch. And here we have a couple pieces of batting and two pieces of fabric. So this is basically like our quilt sandwich. And if I go into my decorative stitches and maybe do some kind of other fun ones, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and try that one out. You'll be able to see that this really does do a good job even on quilting something with these kind of layers. This isn't a machine for, you know, your heavy, heavy duty foam and leather, things like that. But I can definitely sew through cork. I can sew through vinyl. And let me show you that. So here you can see a really nice decorative stitch. Here I have cork and I'm going to go ahead and fold that. I don't know, let's, let me see, I've got that folded. So it's three layers there. And we'll go ahead and put that down. And I'm gonna go ahead, just show you like if you were building a purse or a bag and you just wanted to be able to sew. So you can see I'm easily, the machine is no way struggling to get through those three layers of nice cork. And this is a fabric backed cork. It's a nice cork and a good stitch. Uh, that looks really nice and in about the same for for most materials um, Like I said the machine the machine is rated for about six millimeters in thickness But you could definitely expect to do your quilting and your uh, decorative stitches going through all of those layers And here's an example You could definitely be doing your applique So this is the blanket stitch again sort of one of my favorites and you can see that it was very easy for me to base down my uh, my wool <clears throat> and be able to do a lot with that. Here is another example of some of the decorative stitches that are built into this machine. Here are those buttonholes. <coughs> Excuse me, um, Joanne did such a great job showing how to use that foot this morning. And you can see here, I actually put together three stitches and that is what I used on my 
fib, which I just set down. Here it is. So in addition to the fact that I did the embroidery, this is a custom decorative stitch. <clears throat> it's just three stitches in a row, repeated. These are buttonholes with a uh, ribbon that's stretched through these. So this is actually a, a multitude of techniques from embroidery to decorative stitches that are custom to buttonholes. And <coughs> excuse me, you can easily do that with your machine. Let me go back and show you that if I were to go into my decorative stitches, and that's what I did with the bib, you can pick one, but if I go here, sorry, if I come here, I can turn that off and just pick one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and pick another one and just pick one, and then I'll go ahead and pick one more stitch, and now we will also just choose one. And let's take a look at what that looks like. And you can, you can go ahead and, and uh, audition it. <coughs> and that is what I did. If I come back to my main sewing screen and I choose the sewing machine, here is the stitch that I used on the bib. And we can use the, oops, I want to go back. Here, pick that one, set it. And now you'll be able to see if I choose this button, what that looks like. And it's just this, this stitch step stitched out de in a decorative manner. So you can use your, you can create your own stitches. Of course, this machine cr also contains brothers, my custom stitch. So you can make stitches completely from scratch. But I have to say, this is a really fantastic machine. It does have, different fonts on the sewing side, so you could add those as well. But um, for, for me personally, I would use the embroidery side for that. Uh, but there are a lot of different um, options to choose from with this machine. So again, if let me go back to the home screen, if you are looking for something that has a very nice size, it allows you to travel, allows you to use this in um, a smaller space, or even like I said, just as a second machine. I have one other thing I was gonna show you, and that would be, for instance, this is a patch. So maybe this is just a pair of denim. Uh, maybe it could be jeans, could be anything really. And I have just fused a piece of cotton on top, you know, just simulating that what I had was a patch that needed to go on top and cover up, say, a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot down and show you one of the stitches we have. This is our side sewing stitch. Now we have straight side sewing and we have zigzag. And I'm gonna show you, notice how they go up, they go down, they go side to side. I would like to stitch my patch without having, I want to be able to put my jeans into the free arm without having to rotate it back and forth. So let me go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead, I've chosen my side stitch. Let's go ahead, oops, sorry, I wanna go down. Chose the wrong one. Go to the next screen, I'm gonna go straight down. And let's try that out. So if this indeed were something like a pair of jeans or a shirt sleeve, I would not be able to turn this piece. I would I would have to take it out and then start over. Well, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose back and we'll go ahead and sew. And notice how it's doing a side stitch, a side step. And this is just such a fabulous stitch. You can use this in lots of different applications, not something, not just something where you would be um, oops, I wasn't paying attention and I went in the wrong direction, but there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And then I'm going to go upward and press start. So see how I can go through the whole thing. I could put a uh, pocket on a shirt this way and I could just stop with this stitch. So for instance, if I don't continue and I just take this straight off, then I could, this could be a pocket and it could just go straight over and up, and then I could slide something in the top. So you could definitely use this for patches, for pockets, for sewing on handles. They could go crisscross. There's a lot you could do with this stitch as well. Keep in mind, we strongly recommend that you do use the right needle for the job. So this machine uses anywhere from a 65 needle up to a 100, and it takes thread from 30 weight to 90 weight. 
<coughs> excuse me. So it's a very versatile. And like I said, it does come with a 60 weight thread for your bobbin. And that is the weight that this machine has been calibrated for in the factory. So just a really fun, exciting machine. And uh, it's just, it, it does a lot, I guess is what I'm saying for its size. And it's a great entry machine at this price point. If you're looking for something that's a combination sewing and embroidery. Let me come back to this camera. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this machine. I kind of don't want to give it up. <laughs> Of course you don't want to give it up, Heather. What a great demo. And I love this little machine because it, it does have such a small little footprint. It is lightweight. It's portable, but it does so much. You've got all of those embroidery designs. You've got all of those built-in stitches. And I got to tell you, everybody was really fascinated that it can sew and embroider on cork and vinyl, and they love the side stitching. All those things, me too. I mean, I was definitely throwing lots of stuff at it thinking, what if I'm a bag maker? What if I make uh, gymnastics outfits? You know, you're going to want to switch back and forth or what's your favorite? So it does a lot. It handles it well. And like you said, uh, and, and you don't even, you don't even talking about the machine. You were talking, I think about the tools for the job with the spool of thread that comes with it. But again, I always say, if you want to get something done right, you need to have the right tools for the job. And this brother sewing and embroidery machine will do that for you. It is a super popular machine. People are loving it. And today, They've got a really, really fantastic price on this machine, Heather. It is a show special. There's what it's going to cost you normally if you don't uh, get the show special. Um, to get the special, you got to call in 800-401-8151. It's the SE 1900 Sewing and Embroidery Machine from Brother. We love our Brother Sewing Machines. Uh, for this great savings, call 800-401-8151 for this fantastic machine. Now, super popular. If you wanna get this and add it to your crafty stash, your sewing stash, it's a great idea. If you wanna get one for uh, a granddaughter, a grandson, or a daughter or son, and send it to them at college, I think this is a great price to do that with this fantastic machine. And I, I, I think Heather's got, by the way, thank you, Heather, if you're still watching. And I know you need to have a little sip of water because you were such a trooper uh, having a little uh, cough going through it. I've been there. I've done that. And you did fantastic. I'm so glad to see you on the show today. So we're going to keep things moving. Make sure you call and get that SE 1900 from Brother. Everybody was asking what the model was. And that's what it is. We're going to have a little education right now, friends. What do you think about that? I've been loving all of the education classes. And our next educator is going to teach us how to sew a blind hem. Let me tell you a little bit about Carrie Cunningham. She's actually a neighbor of mine right here, uh, just outside of Chicago. I'm downtown. She's out there in Schaumburg. But um, she is passionate about sewing and embroidery. And lucky for us, she's been teaching adults and children since 2008. She loves to see the smiles of pride on her students when they make something themselves. I love that sense of satisfaction too, Carrie. She's the owner of Endless Designs by Carrie. And you can read more about her and get inspired at her blog at SewCarrieSew.com. Uh, we're gonna talk about this new technique and I'd like to bring Carrie on if she's here. Hey, Carrie, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm so good. I was so excited to see that you and I are like, like miles, just miles away from each other. We're very close to each other. Uh, but I know that you have, you have known Blaine for a really long time. I have, I think maybe 2016 ish somewhere in there. Yeah, I know. Uh, Blaine and I, were, we were talking off the air and he's like, oh, Carrie's so great. I've known her a long time. I'm so glad she's presenting. Uh, she's just really a true expert at, at what she does. Carrie, I'm going to I'm going to drive out. I'll be I'll be in your sewing classes very, very soon because we can always use a little more education. So with that, I will let you teach us about a blind hem. Everybody say hi to Carrie. Hi, everyone. So blind hems, let's get straight into it. Um, you want to start with the blind hem foot. You can do it with a zigzag machine, which I did for years before I discovered this foot or before this foot came out. But let me switch my camera so you can see this foot a little bit closer. Give me a second. 
Don't let that black screen scare you. <laughs> okay, so here's the foot. It has a little flange on the back side of it, and it actually moves just a little bit, not much. It's in the center, and what you'll do is you'll butt your fabric up against that flange, and that flange will help you to sew straight. Actually, you'll get a perfect straight stitch with it. Um, but yeah, so it looks a little odd. Let's see if I can show you here. There you go. It looks a little odd, but um, it's a great foot for, for this project, for this process technique. So the way you put them on is this is just a snap-on foot. You don't need screwdriver or any of that stuff. You put it on like you would put on any of your snap feet. And I like to get, I always like to get my thread between the toes so it's back out of the way. And there it goes. So it's out of the way. I'm using a tan, kind of tan-ish fabric. And I'm using red thread so you can see. So a couple of things that's really important here is that you know how to fold your fabric for these blind hands. So I'm going to start with this one because this has been, the edge has been served. So let me turn it around. So here's your hem here. Here's your skirt, dress, whatever here. Um, and if we have time, I'll show you how to do pants, pants cuff or pants hem. But this has been served. And then I fold it up like you would fold up any hem. So the inside of the garment, here's the wrong side of the fabric. Here's the right side. This is all wrong side and it's folded up. On on dresses and jackets, if it's a woven fabric, I like to do about an inch and a half on the hem. And this is exactly an inch and a half. And so you want to take this and turn it back. I'm going to show you a couple times. When you turn it back, if you look at the end of your fabric, you get almost like a little S. Can you see the three parts there? Let me enlarge my screen so I can see what you're seeing. So again, if you turn it back, you get almost like that little S curve there, three parts. So I'll show you again. So, and this is the part that people struggle with the most is how to fold their fabric. So here's your top of your fabric, your dress or whatever. Here's the bottom. This is your hand that you folded up once, searched it, finish it however you want to finish it. Um, and then you serve it and you press it in place. And a little tip about pressing things in place is when you press this, you don't want to press up against the fabric yet, this part of the fabric. You just want to press your fold because what you don't want to get is indentations on the wrong side, on the right side of your fabric. If you see there, you can see a little bit of an indentation there, right there, where I did that by mistake. Don't make that mistake. It will press out in most cases, but some fabrics it won't go away. So again, you take this and you turn it back. And there's your little three-part S. And then what it looks like on the inside, because you're working from the inside, is like this. If you're new at this, or you're uncomfortable with this, you can base all of this in place or even pin it in place. And you'll take this and put it down on the machine so that the flange is, let me get something to point with, so that the flange is right here, right up against this fold. So this is your inside fold, not that fold you did on the outside. This is where you flipped everything over. So there's your serger stitches, and every you're looking at all the wrong side of the fabric now. And then you set your machine to a blind stitch, whatever your setting is, mine is number eight on my machine. And my stitch length is 2.0. You can change that if you wanted to. And my stitch length is zero. And it's gonna kind of zigzag. Don't let it scare you. <laughs> Don't let it scare you. There's no fear in sewing, right? So again, my fold is up against the flange. And if you notice, I folded this back just with that uh, serge edge sticking out. And then you just go. So sometimes your first stitch will look a little um, like it's kind of getting caught around the foot. It's not. It's not. It'll just get out of the way. And then as long as you can keep it along that flange, you should be okay. There is an adjustable foot, uh, blind hand foot, that you can adjust if you needed to, if you needed it to. And here you can also move your needle over to the right just a little bit. You don't have a long way to go. So if you do move it to the right, test it by hand cranking it so you don't hit it. 
and just kind of watch where you are. Notice I don't I don't use pins or basting stitches that often. So, but I go a little bit slower on this process. And I always tell people that you can't control your fabric from way back here. You can only control it on the bit of the machine. So if you notice my hands are back here. And this is a this is a linen, so you can actually press this down with your finger a little bit. It'll press nicely with a little crease for you. I'm gonna go all the way to the end. And remember my fingers were back here and now it's here. So now I can move back again. Make sure I'm on the edge, make sure I'm back planned. And even when you get to that end, don't let it get away from you. I don't know if you saw me, but it kind of moved over and I just kind of pushed it back. This is an inanimate object that you are in control of. <laughs> and I'm at the end, I'll just cut it. Depending on what you're doing, you could do a little bit of a back stitch there. I don't really like back stitching with my blind hem foot, but if you felt you needed to. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna give it a little press with my hand. Just little body heat there. And then I'll show you what that stitch looks like. And remember, I did red thread. And you can't see it. Let me show you from a different angle. Let me show you from my angle. Okay, so here we are. And I'll give you a close up. And you cannot see that red thread. I had red at the top and the bottom. You can't see it at all. And this is what it looks like from the inside. Well, on this one, you can't really tell because the surges did just kind of cover it up, but I'll show you another one. This is what it looks like folded up, and then you're going to fold it back out to the outside of your fabric, and you should not be able to see those stitches, even with a different color. You would, of course, use like a tan or a beige thread in here in normal cases, but again, I did red so you can see what I'm doing. And you'll see it better on the next sample or the next stitch. So this fold is a little bit different. It is, let's talk about this. So you have to think about the weight of your fabric um, and whether you need to serge it, edge finish it, zigzag the finish. What you wanna think about what that weight is gonna do to the bottom of your garment, but also to the hem itself. You don't want the hem to be so bulky that um, you know, it's kind of, remember those pants we used to buy and they used to flip flop around our ankles? That was the hem. It was too either too deep or too heavy. <laughs> That's why that happened. Not because your pants weight was too high. <laughs> it was the weight of the fabric and the weight of the hem with, um, combined with the weight of the thread. So here, we're gonna pretend this is all open, completely open. And this is the bottom of my pants here. This is, or we're talking skirts at this point for a reason. So here, this is the bottom of my skirt or dress or even a jacket here. This is the bottom, this is the top. And then we're gonna fold here. We're gonna hide the seam. So let's say this is a really lightweight fabric, which this actually is. And I don't want the bulk of the surgeon stitches because that's another bulk that you're adding. So here, I just wanna fold it back. And this one is folded back about a half inch, I believe. I forgot what I did already. Let's look. Yes. <laughs> so this one is folded back a half inch, wrong side of the fabric, fold it down, and then it's folded again that one and a half inch hem that I want. So all of your raw edges are on the inside. See there? It's hiding in there. Tie nicely with no extra bulk. And this one, you particularly want to be careful when you iron. You only want to iron here by itself. You don't want the iron touching over here. You want the iron to touch here. And then, so you would do this first by itself, press this in place, and then fold it over, but only iron here. Because if you don't, now that you've got that piece folded to the inside, you will definitely see the seam of that on the outside or the impression of that on the outside. And you don't want to see that either. You want everything to be blind, including the hem itself. So we'll put it on the machine. 
you've got an S curl. We still have an S curl. The only difference is it's folded that quarter inch or half inch to the inside, but you still have your three parts, one, two, three there. And you'll fold it back. And this would be a good time to use pins or basting stitch. I don't usually use them, but I will for you. Let me put a few pins in here, just so you can see. And I don't really like using pins on blind hems because I also don't want puckers in my blind hem. And as you, sometimes when you pin, the pins will kind of push your fabric. We've all seen that, right? <laughs> It'll push your fabric over. We've seen it on things that aren't blind hems and it kind of gets in the way. So I'm gonna pin it back to about where my, the same width of my serger stitch. And then I'm gonna use the flange on the foot itself the same way. Let me turn back to the machine. Give me a second. You know what's really interesting is that when um, Wayne asked me to do the bind him, I, <laughs> I said to him, that's interesting because I was gonna do that live in my group, in my Facebook group, and now here we are. All right. So we're back at the machine. So here's my pins. And all they're doing is holding that, that um, down, holding that hem down. So I'll show you again. I'll open it up real quick here. So here's my folded piece. Just fold it over first. Here's my second one. The hem itself is folded up. And then this is where I turned it back. And I put a pin in here. I'll put it on the machine and set it up against the edge of the flange again, that same fold, just like we did on the other one. And I'll start just a few stitches. I don't want to hit the pins or the pin head, so make sure you don't sew over your pins. And if you keep along that flange, you're going to be surprised at how beautiful this all comes out. So here's another pin and I don't know if you can see but my fabric is pushing up a little bit there that's one of the reasons I don't like pins but again if you need to pin or base just to get started for practice go ahead and do that and even as an advanced uh, advanced source you can still use your pins when you take the pins out the fabric does relax a little bit I'm a little bit crooked, but you'll see the idea once I'm done here. So this is a woven fabric, meaning a non-stretch fabric. You can also do this on a knit fabric. Uh, I actually like it on heavier knits. I like doing a blind hem on heavier knits. And I had a jacket out that I did a blind hem on. I put it away, sorry. I saw it land on my cutting table and I didn't know why it was there, so I put it away. <laughs> okay. So there's a hem. You can see just little bits of the, the red sticking through there. But this is what the, let me bring you back to me and I'll show you what both sides look like. Okay, all right. So there's the right side of our fabric. Let me turn it upside down to me. That's right side up to you. So there's the top, the raw edge is the top, and there's our hem at the bottom. And you can barely see those red stitches, just barely. Uh, if this was the same color as this fabric, once you press it, you wouldn't even see the indentations from it. It would all press away. But this is what it looks like on the wrong side. The mechanics of this is that it will stitch two to three stitches and then it'll zigzag in. So we got here, let me lay it down on the machine. I think you can see it better. If I can't see it, so I'll do it from here. Okay. 
So again, here's our raw edge up here, top of the dress, top of the skirt. And here's what the inside of it looks like. So you can see, let me get something smaller to point with. So you can see that it stitches, a few stitches here. And then this is where it, this is where it zags. And that's what it looks like on the inside of that fold. So you got a few stitches. It's either three to four stitches here. And then it came up here and just barely kissed that fabric. And then it did it. It went back down and it came back across, came up again, kissed it and back it down. And it just continues to do that all the way across. So you get a really nice look on both sides. And I do actually like this look. You'll see this in a lot of women's ready to wear pants. On men's, it's a slightly different stitch, but it's the same mechanism um, with a different machine or a different foot that they use in commercial garments. I've actually used those machines. They're a little bit intimidating when you look at them, but uh, I use them as a young adult or preteen or a teen. <laughs> so, so I was never afraid of them. I didn't know you were supposed to be afraid of them. So again, so it just goes across and then zags and then comes back. And then when you press it, Again, you won't have those stitches showing. Because if you can barely see these red stitches, just imagine what it would be if I did beige. If I did beige, you wouldn't be able to see it at all. So yeah, so it comes out really, really nice. There's our little tiny kisses, very tiny kisses. Okay, and the other thing I was hoping I would have time to show you, it looks like I do. is I want to show you how to do this in the round. So if you're hemming pants, because a lot of people have asked that question before, if you're hemming pants, I can find my sample. So if you're hemming pants, here's your, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened with the lighting. Maybe it's just waiting to come back. There we are, a little better. Um, Oh, there we are. <laughs> so here's the top of your pants, the raw edge again. Disregard my crookedness there. It was a quick cut. But here's your cuff. So on this cuff, I did the same thing I did on that second piece. I left it raw. And when you look at commercial garments, you'll see that that's usually raw. And it's folded down twice like we did before. So you get this look on the inside of your garment. We've all seen that even those of us who don't so have seen that. Uh, and then you just turn it down again. But what I'll do is I'll move my machine just a little bit over here and I'm gonna take off my flatbed and leave my pre-arm available. And so we'll do the same thing and we'll turn it up so that you can see it. Okay, so here's our hem, and now all we have to do is turn this under one time. So I'll show you. So inside is my raw edge, my half inch there, and then my fold, my full hem, one and a half. Um, and even on men's wear, I wouldn't go more than one and a half. I have gone further than that on kids' pants whose parents wanted them to be able to let them out later. Uh, but generally I don't. I stick with the one and a half for men and maybe a little bit smaller for women on pants. Um, but for women, I'd only go an inch. I wouldn't go beyond an inch. That's, that's almost too small. If you wanted to have a professional look. And so now I've got the whole cuff folded in. And now I can put it on my free arm of my machine. And then I'll do the same thing. So I'll line it up with the flange on the presser foot. This flange has a little bit of give, but it doesn't truly move. So if, it, if you have one that looks like it's wiggling a little bit, that's okay, it should be. You want to have some slack. So I'm taking it off because my side seams aren't matched up and I want those matched up. So now they are. So again, this is a pants cuff. It could be um, a jacket cuff. Uh, it could be a, the cuff of a sleeve, anything in the round. You just 
basically you all you're doing different is taking off your free arm and sliding the whole piece on there because it wouldn't have fit over that bed. There's no way. And I line it up with the plant. And just so I'm using the same 2.0 length and zero in width. And I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. That last one I pinned, this one I'm not pinning. So pressing here is important too. You want to press that first part that you turn in, that half inch uh, raw edge, separate from the cup itself. You want those presses to be separate. So you don't want the iron covering the whole thing. And then one of the things you can use, and I don't have it nearby is your um, not the Taylor's ham. I can't think of the name of the other one, the longer one. <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. Uh, but you can put that inside your pants cuff to press it too. So I'm just making sure that um, Everything is up that that fold is against the flange. I'm coming, I'm coming around the mountain. I'm almost at the end here. So if you wanted to back stitch or lock stitch this, you want to do it while it's going straight, not when it's coming over to do that kiss. So I like to just do um just one little lock there in place. So there we go. And we'll take it off. I'm going to cut away my loose threads. And this is what it looks like from the inside. I'll come back to me and show you there too. And then when I turn everything to the right side, you can see my little kisses. So these are the one, the 2.0 distance here. Um, and if you lengthen that, that stitch, your straight, the, if you lengthen the stitch, then you'll get more distance there. All right, let's show you again. So this is finished. That's what it looks like. Get it in the camera view there. Okay. There, you can see it there. So that's the wrong side of the garment. And then you turn it to the inside. This is what those stitches look like. And you can barely see it. So if you were pressing the crease, which I don't think many people do creases anymore, the men do in their dress pants for sure. So if you had a crease, I'll do a finger crease here. Oh, thank you, Barb. I just noticed the first comment. I'm sure there were other comments that I didn't see, but. <laughs> so here's your men's, your men's pants, for sure. They're dress pants. And there's your nice crease. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah. There's your nice crease. Jacqueline, I'm going to answer that in just a second. And then there's the side of your pants. And he does not have any stitches that's showing. Because again, this is red. You can see little peaks of red, but your same color thread or close color thread would just totally disappear. It really is a nice finish. As far as doing it on knit, um, I have done it on this. It depends on the weight of the knit and the look that I'm going for. I do have that one jacket. Um, and again, I'm sorry, it's not close by, that I did do a blind hem on. I really did a more technique, but once I finished it, I liked it. So that fabric was a, was a ponte? No, it was not a ponte. Yes, it was a ponte. It was a ponte knit, a medium weight ponte knit, and it had big pockets on the outside. So those pockets kind of hung down and it didn't have any other top stitching going on on it anywhere. So I didn't want any of that stitching to see. So for that, I chose the blind hem inside that, that jacket because I had the heavy pockets pulling the weight of it down already. And I didn't want the pockets to overtake the hem. So I added that kind of hem to the jacket 
to give the bottom of it more weight. Thank you, Denise. Life changer. <laughs> so again, the pressing, uh, I do want to talk about that one more time because it really is important. Hey, Carrie. When press, hey, Carrie. hey, when you what press, if, you really just want to press one portion at a time. Carrie, an amazing oh, you, demo. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone just, and, and the thing is, you know, as a sewer, you never stop learning and, and we've all done blind hems, but then for me, I don't do them as often as I should. And so then I forget and then I need another demo. So yours was fantastic. Uh, it always seems complicated, but then when we watch somebody like you, you just explain it all and it's so easy. Remind us again of the press flip speech that you're using and then also what your uh, allowance was. Okay. So my stitch length is 2.0. The width is zero. Even though it says zero, it's still going to swing over. So don't let that scare you. And always test. Test everything, ladies. Just test and guys. Test everything. Um, because you might want to change that. You might want that length to be longer. You may not want that short distance between your picks. You may want a longer distance. Just depends on what you're doing. Uh, always think about the weight of your fabric and what you're doing. That's why you want to test. Um, as far as the hem, that's a linen fabric. So I chose a half inch turn and then a one inch, one and a half inch full turn. That's where the raw edge ended up on the inside. On the serge end, this is about three eighths of an inch. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's what your serge is gonna give you. And you can set that, you can change that as well if you wanted to. But that three eighths was just enough for it to come to swing over to the back to the fabric. And again, this was another one and a half inch. Uh, so I mean, Carrie, what a great demo. I think that the the bottom line is that practice makes perfect, right? So when you're teaching yeah. your adult and your and your kids, um, what's the one thing you want everyone to remember? Two things is that when you're when you're sewing something, remember at some point I call this in, this fabric an inanimate object. It's an inanimate object. It does what you tell it to do. And when it doesn't always do that, then it's a new design. <laughs> it's not a trash garment. It's right. not a trash project. Turn it into something else. I have a wall hanging behind me that I did some foil on with my scanner cut when I first got it. Uh, and for the first time, I turned the t-shirt with the collar facing me. I put the design on it upside down. <laughs> I, I didn't I didn't panic, but I was a little flustered. I showed it to my friend, one of my friends, Molly, Molly Maid from Molly Maid, and she said, Oh, put it on a quilt. And I thought, well, I only have the front. Then I thought, no, I have a back too. So I made two wall hangings. New I, totally new design. I, I love wear, it. All those I still have it. <laughs> creative mistakes. I would say you can never make a mistake when you're being creative. creative. You no, can always turn it into a wall you hanging. Really can't. You really can't. And the other thing I tell them is um even my kid, kiddos, I walk them through several of the presser feet. I'll walk them through whatever came with their machine and have them use all the presser feet, either first or second day of their classes. So they're not afraid of them and show them how they use. I may not show them every single way that foot can be used, but I give them a feel for it. So don't be afraid to pull those presser feet out that we haven't used. Don't be afraid to pick that blind stitch that's, that's built into your machine. <laughs> and and, and, and some have it go in both directions. So yeah, don't be afraid to play around. It's fun. I love that idea. Play around, learn, practice. As, as kids would, you're just not afraid. And somebody did mention like, oh, I always wonder what all of those feet were for. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll start playing with them. Now, Carrie, everybody can find you at Endless Designs by Carrie. That's on Facebook. And that designs is D-Z-N-S. So it's Endless D-Z-N-S by Carrie. And that's on Facebook. That's Facebook, Instagram, my Facebook group, my Facebook business page. Yes. So and if they website. have any further I'm questions, good. they can ask you. And the good thing for us is that we can always watch a replay of your demo after the show yes. today and take better notes. Take better notes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, thank you so much. You are quite welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Wow, what a fantastic demo. That is Carrie Cunningham. Just like really, really fantastic. I will be rewatching that again to see all of her information. Um, we're having a great day today, day two of the So Fest, and it's gonna continue on and on, but right now, oh, I know you're gonna like this. We've got some giveaways, and I'm gonna bring Blaine back to the show with me. 
so we can do those giveaways together. Hey, Blaine. Hey, Jane. Hey, uh, Carrie was awesome as usual. And, uh, you know, Carrie and I, I, you know, she used to come to some of my great big events I would do back in Baton Rouge and things. And, I, you know, I met, I, I think she said 2016, but I think it was even before then. I, I remember her very well. And I know that she's, uh, she works with Reen Wilcoxon of Embroidery Garden a lot. And so uh, we're very happy that, that Carrie came on and, and was helped us with the education today. And but I'm ready to give some stuff away, aren't you? I'm so ready to give some stuff away. The education really has been fantastic, not only today, but yesterday as well. And and so it's it's so much fun, but it's always fun to take a break and give things away, Blaine. Oh, it is, it is. So the first thing we're gonna give away today, Jane, it is a Grace Finesse 16 thread set. And uh, this winner is coming from YouTube and I'm just gonna let you announce the winner. Okay, that sounds great. Oh, congratulations. The winner is Frank Palmer. Frank, you are the winner of the thread set. That's fantastic. All right. And then our next item that we're giving away, Jane, is the Daylight Foldy Go LED light. Oh, yes. And our winner's coming to us from Facebook. This is a great, great, you're going to love this. The winner is Ann Keller. And congratulations. You are the winner of the Daylight and then our final giveaway for this this time frame is a baby lock vibrant uh serger and our winner is coming to us from youtube and the winner is linda hilliard now everybody don't forget if you're a winner you need to email contest at sewingmachinesplus.com say your name tell us what you want so we know it was you linda you are the winner of this one that is right. So don't forget, if you, you know, like Jane said, if you're one of our winners, email us at contest, plural, with an S on the end of it, at sewingmachinesplus.com. Make sure that you put your name and your shipping address where you want your prize shipped to. And then what will even help us out, too, is just put in there what you won. You don't have to do that because we, we we know what you won, but it helps speed things up sometimes because they, they don't have to be matching it up. So, hey, Jane, some great, great giveaways, and we're going to have some more giveaways this afternoon. And and uh, we're all all week we're going to be doing it. But I got to remind everybody exactly how they can win. So if you're just tuning in or, or they didn't get the chance to get in this morning, how you can win is participation. So basically, if you're watching on YouTube, the best way to do it is go up there and hit that bell notification, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And you can also make comments or ask questions, and that's going to actually enter you in all those different ways, enters your name in the, for the drawing. If you're on Facebook, you do the same thing. You can share the video. You can like it. You can make comments, ask questions. That will get them in entered as well. And if you were one of the voters that voted on the contest, our garment making contest that we had for garments and home decor, uh, if you voted on that, your vote will get you a, a, a spot in there as well. So all those different methods, and the more participation you have each day and every day, the more votes you get in, or more chances, I should say, to get picked, because it's all done randomly by a computer system, software a program that we have, and it just basically takes those, those algorithms, takes all that, that participation, uh, the, all those different times you do, and it, it grabs, you know, grabs a name out. So that's how you can win. So if everybody knows, and even if you're watching a tape delay, Jane, like you said, somebody that say they're working and they're watching this later on tonight and they're watching the replay, they have a chance as well, because if they go in and just make comments and ask questions after the, the this video live broadcast is over, it puts their their name in for a chance. For the next for the next day, the next show, right? Yeah, so many exactly. ways to win. So whether you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on YouTube. In fact, I went to your website and just clicked right on the cover page, and it took me right there to watch it. Uh, I believe it was on YouTube. So I, I yes. love the idea. Interact with us. Tell us what you think. Ask a question. I love seeing the questions so that we can ask the presenters. <clears throat> you're exactly right. Hey, one of the things I'd like to do real quick, Jane, just for fun, I'd like for everybody right now that's watching if this is your first day put a number one on type in number one and if you've watched yesterday and today put a number two and if you watched coast to coast if you have watched from start to finish yesterday and you've watched start to finish till now you haven't walked away from your tv put a three we want to see how many people have watched you know each day and i want to see how many people have uh, been watching 
been here with us the whole time. <laughs> Look at all the ones and twos. I haven't seen a three yet. Let's get a three. Number one, number one. <laughs> I'm seeing it. I'm seeing a lot of twos. So, oh, I see three. some threes. Look up. Karen. Yeah, it's going, it's oh, going yeah. to fast. I can't hardly see them. But, hey, I tell you what, we have, you know, we have, I call it our loyal customers. We have some customers that uh, are with us every single Thursday. They come to every, you know, event that we have on, online. They do all these big events. They're always with us. And, they, I, you know, we have them watching from Monday all the way through till Friday. They'll watch the whole thing every hour because we're here, you know, about seven hours a day. Yeah. And uh, so some of them are troopers. They hang right in there with us and watch the whole show. And, and we're so happy that they do. Uh, and it's so much fun to, to be able to share this with all of our customers and, and have great guests like you coming on and, and sharing all their knowledge and things. So it is fantastic. I, I really enjoy this. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It is a little addicting because... <laughs> <laughs> yesterday i it really is i just put it on i have it on i'm i mean just you know working around it i'll do it in between shoots or do it in between whatever it is that i'm working on but it's but you're there you're there the presenters are there the educators are there and then i'm sucked in and i'm watching and i'm like oh blaine's gonna be so proud of me like i'm watching every <laughs> single minute of this thing <laughs> Well, you know, you're exactly right. And I think that's what a lot of people do. You know, they, they, uh, I, we get uh, comments and emails all the time. People say, you know, I'm not supposed to be watching this at work, but I've got it playing in the background and I listen to it. And they, they, they open the screen up and watch it when they get a chance, something they really want to see. And, and I, the best one is I, I think I told this to Angela yesterday. I had somebody was, uh, came on and said, you know, hey, uh, I'm, I'm watching this, I'm driving somewhere on a trip, they were on their trip going somewhere and I'm watching your show. And I was like thinking, well, Hey, uh, I hope you're not driving, but they were the one that was driving. <laughs> so I was like, driving. that's kind of, a, kind of dangerous driving and watching yeah, yeah. our show at the same I mean, time. So let's just be honest. We've all done it, especially when you're on Blaine, these shows we want to tune in, but no, we need to say, do not watch the show. If you're driving, have someone else drive you and watch while you're driving. I get you there don't you want to get a minute of it because it all really is so educational and informative. And one of the things I love, Blaine, is that, you know, you've got all these great show specials. You've got all these amazing products and great brands and the education. During the, the, the products, you're learning. You know, they're, I'm learning so much and I, and I forget, like, Oh, I could actually buy this. So uh, I don't know if you want to hear that, but I think it's great because it's literally seven hours of complete learning for a craft and a passion that I and so many people have. Well, and you know, Jane, what we do, you know, a lot of people probably already know this about Sewing Machines Plus, you know, since we do a lot of shows and, and I talk about this, but, you know, one of the things that we really work hard on, you know, we're the number one dealer for just about every manufacturer out there. And what we really work hard on is pricing. And so, you know, my philosophy is, you know, we're a buying agent for the customer and I try to get the best deals I can get from the manufacturers and I, we pass that savings right onto the customer. So it's not all about us trying to make more money. It's about us really providing a great product and at a good price. So, you know, we always tell everybody, hey, we're not going to be undersold. I mean, we're going to match any price out there. If anybody has a price they can beat us on, we're going to match it. And you know, and a lot of times what people don't understand is, you know, the manufacturers have what they call map pricing and it's called minimum, minimum advertised pricing. And that's a lot of times it's the only way we can do it. So sometimes you'll hear me say, hey, I can't tell you what the price is over the air, but you have to call in to get the best price. And it's and, because of that, and, map pricing. Right. And that's because of that. And what I could have done, even with that manufacturer, I may have negotiated a, a lot better cost to be able to get that savings for the customer, but I can't advertise it on air. So when I tell you call in special, or I tell you, you know, this is a great price, you're getting a really good price. And on the call in specials, normally they are just rock bottom, great, great pricing. And we really work hard to do that. And uh, when we're doing these shows like this, you know, Kyle's team, the whole marketing team, that's what they do. They work really hard on the pricing. I work hard on it. I, I'm calling, you know, the presidents of all these companies and, and, and trying to get them to give us a really good price on the machines so we can pass that savings right on the customers. And that's what makes these, you know, festivals that we do so awesome is you can come and, you know, it's kind of like walking to the Houston Quilt Festival. Uh, you know, used to, you're, wow. you're expecting to get a deal, yeah. but, you know, right now you can, you don't have to travel. You can stay right at your home and we're trying to bring this to your doorstep. 
Yeah, and the cool thing is, you know, you really do have your finger on the pulse of what's happening and what people want. So you're bringing us these super popular machines. You're bringing us uh, ideas and education that people are talking about. And so what I love about these virtual fest is that we can get all of that great knowledge and we're also getting a great deal on that so because you know what's going on you're bringing it then to us your friends you're exactly right I so they were your friends because i know everybody yeah. everybody that's writing in is like hey because everyone's watching <laughs> every week <laughs> well you know and and we do we really try to to work hard and you know even on the customer service side and, and everything that we do we try to you know Normally, you know, you naturally at a company, you have to have return policies and certain policies in place. But, you know, our, our customer service team, you know, they have one motto and basically it's try to find a way to say yes. And we try our best to say yes to customers and, and figure a way to, to have solutions for every problem. And, uh, you know, because we want them to be shopping with us for life. We want them to you know, buy their first machine and their last machine from us. We want them to be with us for their entire, you know, sewing career. And uh, so to me, you have to treat people, you know, like your family. And I always talk about this with our crew. I say, you know, if there's a problem, if that was your mother, grandmother, or, or, or dad or grandpa or somebody that had a problem, you're probably going to give them a little bit extra special treatment. That's just a natural way of people doing things. So I said, well, think about that same way with anybody that calls in, any of our customers, because guess what? That is somebody's mother, grandmother, grandpa, or, or dad. And it may not be yours, but you know what? If you treat them right, they're always going to come back to you. So that's what we really strive to do. And I hope that, you know, we're, we're doing Sometimes, you know, we, we're like every, every that's company, so we nice. fall a little short sometimes, but we really try our hearts in the right place. I promise you. Yeah, and I think what's really, really, really cool is that, you know, you you hit it on the head with the virtual fest that you're doing and the programming that you do, because not only do we get to, you know, like programming is just not on that first screen that we see all the time. So this is the way that people are going to grow up with Sewing Machines Plus. They're going to grow up learning about this craft and they're going to learn about products this way on YouTube and on Facebook and watching over mom's shoulder and being next to grandma. So, I mean, kudos to you for, for really creating a brand of, of one of a kind programming. Well, thank you, Jane. And Hey, thank you for, for joining us. And Hey, I'm ready to go to our next presenter. We got a fantastic presenter coming up. It's from Janome. We got Alba Fedeke in uh, coming in and we're going to talk all about the 9850 uh, machine. So I'm going to let you bow out. We're going to bring Albuk in and we're going to see you here just in a few minutes, Jane. You bet. Thanks, Wayne. All righty. So, hey, let's bring Alba in. Oh, is it commercial break? Oh, I'm sorry. So we're going to have a little commercial break, everybody, to stretch your legs. Uh, I forgot about that. I, I was getting so excited for the show. But yeah, we're going to let everybody, we always promised y'all, because everybody said, hey, if we're watching this, for seven hours, we need a break. We need to be able to go, you know, refill our coffee cup. We need to go to the restroom. So, hey, we're gonna have a really quick break. What time are we coming back, Kyle? Uh, about 10 minutes. In 10 minutes? Be probably, uh, okay, all right, so we're gonna be right back in 10 minutes. And uh, so y'all put your, set your timers and we'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Thread your serger in a fraction of the time when you use the Jet Air threading on the Baby Lock Celebrate. With a gentle push on the lever, the upper and lower loopers are threaded, and you can do them in any order. The built-in threader makes quick work of needle threading. In no time at all, you'll be breezing through all of your projects. Setting up your serger can be easy. Let your Baby Lock retailer show you how. A lot of helpful features right at your fingertips on the front of the Baby Lock Brilliant. First, we have the start stop button. You can touch this anytime to stitch, and it's going to let you know if you've forgotten to do something like lowering the presser foot, and it will also let you know that you have to disconnect the foot controller in order to use the start stop button for sewing. Above that, we have the reverse button. Anytime you touch the reverse button as you're sewing, the machine is going to stitch in continuous reverse as long as you hold on to that button. And when you release, it will start stitching forward again. This button serves a second purpose when you've programmed a lock or a thread cut 
at the end of the seam, it's how you're going to let the machine know that you've reached the end of the seam and you're ready for it to lock in those stitches and cut the thread. Above that, we have the reinforcement button. When you are stitching a decorative stitch, you can touch reinforcement and a green LED light will appear, letting you know that the machine acknowledges that you want it to lock in the stitch. It's going to complete the decorative stitch, then lock in and thread cut if you have programmed that as well. Next, you have your needle position button. Anytime you touch the needle position, it will lift or lower the needle position. Next, you have the thread cutter button. No matter where you are in a stitch, you can always cut the thread simply by touching the thread cutter button. As we move across the machine, we'll find speed control. You can program your machine to stitch at the fastest speed or the slowest speed or anywhere in between. On the front of the machine, you'll find that you've got several buttons as well. First, we have the automatic tie-off. When you program in that automatic tie-off, when you begin a seam, the Brilliant's going to lock in your stitches, and at the end of the seam, again, you'll touch your reverse button, and it's going to lock in the stitches at the end of the seam. You can also program an automatic tie-off and trim with the scissor button. And now at the end of your seam, your machine will lock in the stitch and cut the threads. Start your creative journey to sewing and embroidery with the Baby Lock Verve. Whether you're a beginner or you're looking for a great travel machine, the Baby Lock Verve is just what you're looking for. Create beautiful projects easily with the Baby Lock Verve's large LCD color touch screen. With a simple touch, you can quickly navigate the machine. Help is a breeze with the built in videos that can assist you at any time. With 191 utility and decorative sewing stitches, you'll always have the perfect stitch for any project. The Verve also allows you to stitch a speedy 850 stitches per minute. And thanks to the wider throat space and included extension table, you can tackle larger projects. The LED lighting, advanced needle threader, and quick set bobbin further enhance the sewing features of the Baby Luck Verve. And when you need to pack your machine, the included hard carrying case will offer extra protection. Embroidery is so easy. Embellish your projects with one of the 95 built-in embroidery designs, 140 frames, or beautiful uppercase floral alphabet. Easily import designs with the USB slot on the verb. And one of the most exciting features on this machine is the ability to combine embroidery designs on one page. Personalize all your creations with the 10 built-in fonts, multi-line text, and font editing. Visit your local Baby Lock retailer today and see everything that the Verve can help you achieve. Upsize your creativity with more room to design.
Presenting the Innovis NQ1700E, the latest embroidery sensation from Brother. Are smaller hoop sizes cramping your style? Step up to a larger 6x10 canvas to stitch your masterpieces. The Innovis NQ1700E delivers all you need to design on a larger scale with advanced features and smart conveniences that expand your creativity. Explore 258 built-in embroidery designs with 140 frame pattern combinations and 13 embroidery fonts. Send designs wirelessly using design database transfer. A nearly five square inch LCD color touchscreen with an intuitive interface simplifies on-screen editing. All with drag and drop convenience. And hey, you've got gifts to give and crafts to sell. Boost your productivity with embroidery speeds up to 850 stitches per minute, plus an efficient and simple color sort feature. Plus, the optional 5x7 magnetic hoop lets you manage thicker fabrics with ease. Upsize your creativity with the all new, all smart Innovis NQ1700E, only from your friends at Brother. Demo one at your brother dealer today. Back and uh, welcome back for Hoop Fest Day Two. And so we're ready to go to our next presenter. Uh, we they uh, it's Alba Fetiki with Janome. They had a little bit of technical difficulty, so but they were able to get us a videotape of her doing this presentation on the 9850. We're going to show that videotape now. As soon as the videotape's over, I'll come in the overlay and show y'all how you can get this great machine. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Y'all can hear me now? Yeah. All right, so having a little bit of audio problems there. Hopefully everybody can hear me now. Uh, Janome, uh, the, there was no audio with the video they just sent us, so uh, we're gonna figure that out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and jump ahead and show the 14,000. Uh, that was what Alba was supposed to show this afternoon, and we'll be trying to work on the audio part of the 9850. And uh, so anyway, we'll do that 14,000 now, and then we'll come back and try to get that other one fixed for you. Hello everyone, welcome to the Janome Sewing Studio. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the Memory Craft 14,000. This is a truly amazing machine. This is a sewing machine, an embroidery machine. It quilts, it does home deck. It could handle heavy fabrics and even the most delicate of fabrics. I will be going over with you what is included with the machine and giving you a brief overview of the screen and just navigating through the machine. Now let's get started with what's included in the machine. So I'm going to have you look at all of the feet that are included with this machine. And there are some that I'm going to be pointing out specifically like these two right here. These are AccuFeed feet. And AccuFeed is Janome's built-in walking foot. And you not only get one AccuFeed foot, but you get two. So there is the standard dual width and then the single width or narrower foot. And these also come with interchangeable plates. So on the wider of the two, you get an open toe and a standard version. And on the narrow, you get a standard and a zipper foot. Imagine being able to put in all those zippers with that additional benefit of a built-in walking foot and having the feed dogs on top and on the bottom. 
I'm going to be showing you the built-in walking foot as it's on the machine, but I did want to take a little bit of time and go over some of the other items that are included. Now, if you're a quilter, this is for you. You not only get a standard darning foot or free motion foot, you also get three free motion feet that are snap on free motion feet. And what I love about those is there's absolutely no move and no hopping. So it makes doing those intricate designs really easy. And no matter what type of sewist you are, you're bound to have that right foot that you need. Look at that variety. I love that you know me really gives you a great package with your machine. So you can start just about any project with everything that is included with the machine. Now, I said that this was a sewing and embroidery machine. So I want to show you the hoops that are included. And four hoops are included with the machine. I have the largest and the smallest on the table and the two in between besides me. So that largest tube is 9.1 by 11.8 inches. That is just the perfect size to do a full jacket back. That is one embroidery area. So there's no need for splitting designs. Just incredible that you're getting that large of an embroidery area. And just as important as how large can I embroider is how small can I embroider too? And our free arm hoop is this one right over here. And that one is 3.9 by 1.8. That is perfect for embroidering on cuffs and collars and pockets of all sorts. I absolutely love that free arm hoop. And then behind me, hanging on the wall, are the two that are in between the five and a half by five and a half. This is a really popular common size. And then the 9.1 by 9.1. I love using this on all of my quilt blocks. Just absolutely amazing. And you'll also notice that I have an additional plate on the table. So two stitch plates come with the machine and I'm going to show you just how easy it is to switch those plates out. I mentioned that two stitch plates come with the Memorycraft 14,000. I have the standard stitch plate on the machine, but I wanted to show you the straight stitch stitch plate. So you'll notice that there are three holes in this stitch plate, a center needle position, a right needle position, and a left needle position. And what I like is that that right needle position is not round, but oval. So it allows you to adjust your needle for a scant quarter inch or for other needle positions that you may want to specify. Now, I love how easily the needle plates come on and off of the machine. I am going to lock my machine and lift my foot, and that goes to extra high lift so that I could remove the plate. But you'll notice I have no screwdriver, no tool with me, because this is an easy off plate. With a push of a button, I am able to remove that plate and this one here is that zigzag plate with a wide opening and the other goes on. I'm going to press it in place and it lets me know that I have the straight stitch plate on my machine. So I get that nice indicator. So all of the plates are not only do you get to, but they're censored plates. You will notice that only the stitches that I could use with this plate are available. Janome thinks of everything. Don't you just hate when you put a straight stitch plate on, select a stitch that isn't appropriate and break a needle? 
that won't happen anymore. So I love the fact that the, sh the plates are censored and the machine knows exactly which plate I have on the machine. And as easily as I put that plate on, I could switch back and forth between the zigzag plate and the straight stitch plate. And very easily that plate is going to come off and I am going to put that zigzag plate on. It's going to give me my warning to make sure you're using the proper foot. And now all of my stitches are available to me. I absolutely love the censored plates. And again, I was talking about that package that you get with Janome. If you've bought a plate recently, a stitch plate, you know that this is a pricey item. I love that it's included in with my machine. I am going to move that off to the side and put my machine back together. I had spoken that you get the AccuFeed system in with the machine. And the AccuFeed system is Janome's built-in walking foot, meaning that I have feed dogs on the top as well as built into the machine. And let me show you how that works. What I am going to do is I am just going to sew ever so slowly so that you could see those upper feed dogs in action. And you will see them just walking and pulling and feeding my fabric. Look at how perfectly straight that is moving without me even holding that fabric. And I love the fact that I'm able to adjust my speed right on the front of the machine. So that AccuFeed system is absolutely wonderful. One thing that I also love with the Janome AccuFeed system, most built-in walking feed and walking feed in general, you're only able to do straight stitches. Well, with Janome's AccuFeed, I can use any of my decorative stitches that are built into the machine. And look at what a great selection of decorative stitches you have on the Memory Craft 14,000. I'm now going to come to the screen of the machine and I'm going to show you how easy it is to navigate and get to these decorative stitches. You'll notice that each one is in a boxed compartment. And when I touch my home screen, it allows me to get to my straight utility and then to all of my decorative stitches. Now, the one particular stitch that I love is in my pictograph section. And here is my pictograph section right over here. So when I touch that, it will bring up that section of the decorative stitches. And look at how beautifully large those icons are. Janome knew I put down my glasses and I could never find them when I'm in the middle of a project. So they made the icons so much larger to make it easier on, my, on the sewist. And I absolutely adore this little bow tie. And even with my built-in walking foot, I said that I could do those decorative stitches, regardless of the speed. And I am able to go from 400 stitches a minute all the way to a thousand stitches a minute and everything in between. Now I wanna make sure I complete and I don't show you a partially sewn bow tie. So I touched my locking stitch and that completed my pattern. So no more getting half of something sewn. Look at how absolutely beautiful and perfect that's stitched. Even though I was using a walking foot, which generally you cannot use with decorative stitches. 
I just love that Janome has really thought of all of those details. Now I mentioned that you get additional or op additional feet with that walking foot. So I am going to lock my machine for safety and raise my foot again. And look at how easily I am able to remove one foot and put another one on. And I'm just gonna get that thread out of my way. and it just snaps into place, making it really easy to switch from one type of foot to another. Now the open toe makes it really nice and easy to see what I am stitching. And again, being able to use that upper feed dog along with that lower feed dog makes it absolutely wonderful. And I have that option of the narrow foot as well. And that narrow foot makes it really easy to do quarter inch piecing, to do large bulky items. I find this very handy. And the foot that you get that's interchangeable with that is a zipper foot. I love being able to add on zippers with the use of that upper and lower feed dog system, that dual feed system. Now I've switched to a standard sewing foot on my memory craft 14,000, but you may have noticed this wide, large opening. This from the needle all the way to the edge is 13.7 inches of throat space absolutely perfect for those larger projects, the quilts, the home deck projects, those big bulky tote bags and purses that you may be making. So I absolutely love that wide open area. And one thing, it's always the little things that get me excited on the machine. And one thing that I absolutely love is the light that pulls out. I just absolutely love that I could tilt and that I could adjust that. And that light is specifically where I need it, right at that needle, so that I could really see what I am doing. Now, I had mentioned to you that this machine could handle heavy, lightweight quilting fabrics. It takes you to all types of sewing. So I am going to put a single layer of cotton fabric I am going to go to a straight stitch and I am going to go from that single layer of fabric, sewing off my fabric onto a quilt sandwich. And look at how easily with that superior feed system, I am able to navigate and move that fabric. Now you may be saying, but what about those thick, heavy, bulky items. This is 12 layers of denim. Look at how thick that is in between my fingers. That's about a quarter of an inch thick. And I always say that if it could fit under the foot, the machine could sew it. I have that extra high lift that I can make sure to get my item underneath my foot. I have not changed needles. I have not changed threads. And look at how effortlessly you could hear that bulk that it's going through. And I'm going to use my scissor button to cut my needle thread and my bobbin thread. And it lifted that foot and absolutely beautiful stitching back and front without adjusting a thing. As I said, I made no adjustments. Normally when you go from very fine single layer fabric uh, to something that thick, you're making tension adjustments, stitch length adjustments, you need to change a needle, but this machine really handles all types of fabrics beautifully. And on my quilt sandwich, 
no puckering. This is the bobbin side that I was sewing on. Here is that front side, even with a standard sewing foot and the layers of fabric, look at how beautiful of a job that did. And I was talking about that superior feed system and the superior feed system is that seven piece feed dog system on the machine. And that just allows the fabric to feed effortlessly into the machine. And I'm gonna show that one more time. And this is a snap-on foot. And I do have auto lift. So with that foot in the up position, I am able to touch my start button and it will lower the foot and just start sewing. Now look, with fingertips, look at how easily I am able to move that fabric. And I have almost a perfect circle here. Almost, I said. So look at how easily I was able to maneuver that fabric and how beautiful it kept that nice and flat and even, and even going to that back side. No puckering, no movement because of that superior feed system that Janome is known for. Now, some of you may be quilters in the group, and I had mentioned the snap-on free motion foot. So let me put that behind some fabric so that you could see that. This is one of three of the snap-on free motion feet, and I'm going to put this on the machine, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up the machine to do free motion quilting. So on the screen, I want to tell the machine that I am going to free motion quilt and have the machine set this up for me automatically. And I love that I'm able to do that. I'm going to touch that home button. And in my home screen, I have sewing applications. So I'm going to tell you what sewing applications is before I go into it. These are preset sewing options that when I tell the machine I am doing this type of sewing, it will automatically bring me to the stitch I need with all of the settings that I need in the machine to get optimal results. So when I touch sewing applications, I have a lot of different options. I not only have sewing machine options, but I have optional foot options. It's a lot of options. So with the foot icon, these are some of the optional feet that you can purchase in addition to the machine and beading, ribbon sequence, piping, and it will set the machine up to do those functions. So I want to go to my quilting functions. And right over here, I have a quilting icon and I want to do free motion quilting. And you probably didn't even hear that, but my feed dogs dropped automatically. I have the option of using the standard hopping foot, but that is not what I put on my machine. I put on my machine a snap on foot. So by telling the machine what I've put on it, it will set itself up for perfect results with this foot. I am going to touch start and that will allow me to raise my uh, bobbin thread. And then it will allow me to continue and do free motion. And I am just doing a meandering design. But I love the fact that this foot does not pop. So if I were going around an applique 
I could get very precise and really see what I am doing. And look at those perfect results. I was barely holding that fabric and I am just getting beautiful results each and every time. So those are the snap on free motion feet. And you're getting that echo foot, which is really nice because it's a cupped foot, perfect for going around appliques or bulky seams, as well as a closed toe and an open toe option for that foot. Just lots of different feet that I can go back and forth to and beautiful snap-on options. So sewing applications is gonna give me a few more options that I wanted to show you. And the applique is one of them that I wanted to show you. I know I love to applique and sometimes I just have a hard time remembering what those settings are. And I love the fact that my Janome 14,000 has that preset in the screen. So the most common applique stitches or buttonhole stitches are right up top. And then I have the zigzag stitch. And this is what I wanted to show you. But on the screen, you're going to notice an M and R, those two look the same. So it even identifies my starting needle position. So right now on my machine, my needle is in the middle. When I touch that applique stitch with an R, my needle is moved to the right-hand position, giving me a right needle position to start with, with my applique. Of course, this is all for preference, and I love the fact that they thought about that and put it in. But now my zigzag. When I do applique and I do want to use a zigzag, I don't want a standard zigzag. I want to go to a satin stitch. And remembering what those settings are, especially if you're new to applique, can sometimes be troublesome and you have to go to that manual and look it up, which it is there, but I like that it's preset. So my width is set at 3.5 and my length is set at 0.35, the most common settings for doing satin stitching. And even with my satin stitching, I could follow a curve. I could really do some beautiful detail. And let me show you what a beautiful satin stitch that does. Look at how perfect that is. Absolutely stunning. And even though my width and length are preset, I am able to adjust that to get it to exactly what I need. So I love this bottom section of the screen. It's the two most common settings that you will change. My width and my length and I have a plus and a minus, and I am able to adjust these as I'm sewing or at any point, whether I'm sewing or not. I love having those features in there. I am going back to a straight stitch. I've talked about the needle and whether it's a right-hand position, a left-hand position, and sometimes when I'm doing sewing, it is easier if I could move my needle than move my project, especially when I'm top stitching. This particular machine, the maximum stitch width is nine millimeters. So I could do beautifully wide stitches, but I also have 91 needle positions. So right now, my needle position is at 4.5, and I'm going to just lift up that fabric in the back and move my needle position so that you could see that. And I am moving that to the left, and now I'm going to move to the right. And I'm moving very quickly 
or I could move one at a time where you barely even notice it. So 91 needle positions. And this is absolutely beautiful. Like I said, for me, I really like this for top stitching because I can use the opening in my foot or my foot as a guide and get my needle to exactly where I need it to be. Having the right tools makes your projects excel to that next level. So now that we've spoken about some of the sewing features that are in this phenomenal machine, I'm going to talk about embroidery. So you'll notice I do not have any tools. I do not have anything out. I am going to show you how quickly and easily I can switch from embroidery into sewing. And I'm going to direct you to looking at the back of the machine. I love that Janome has a rolling linear arm and that the embroidery arm is in the back of the machine. It gave me my room to have all of my stuff, both to the right and left of my machine. So with a push of a button, I am going to open up that embroidery arm and that is step one to getting ready for embroidery. And then on my machine, I am going to tell it, I want to toggle and I want to go from sewing into embroidery. Are you ready for this? Really, really easy. Here's my double machine icon. And with a touch of that button, it is going to switch from embroidery, from sewing into embroidery. And I am all ready to start embroidery. One of the features that I love with the Janome Memory Craft 14,000 is the resume mode. And this is my pop-up question on my screen. What resume mode is, and it's come in really handy just a few weeks ago, in fact. If for any reason in the middle of an embroidery design, the power goes out or you need to stop embroidering and shut down your machine, your machine will remember exactly where you left off at that needle penetration point. So it will resume that last embroidery. Now, I don't want to resume my last embroidery. I am going to start something new. And the Memory Crop 14,000 has 350 built-in designs. Let me show you some of those. My icon for the flower will bring me into my embroidery designs. And I'm starting to look at them and there are nine pages of embroidery designs. As I said, 350 designs built into the machine. I have the option of viewing them by hoop size or by category. So let me show you what some of those categories are. And as you can see here, these are folders of designs and I have, I'm on page one of four. So lots of different categories and lots of different types of designs. Here, I'm going to choose my cross stitch designs. Now I may want to choose by size of design or hoop size in particular. I'm gonna to go to the very smallest of the hoops that 3.9 by 1.6 or the FA10 hoop. When I choose that hoop size, this will only show me designs that will fit that particular area. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about that FA hoop, the free arm hoop. I am going to move this onto the machine and this connects right on that embroidery arm very easily and it just locks in place. Now I had mentioned that that was a free arm hoop and let me tell you what that means. I can remove my storage tray and utilize the free arm portion of that embroidery machine and sewing machine 
to utilize this hoop. So if I were doing a tote bag, a pant leg, a sleeve, I could hoop that and utilize that open area of the machine and be able to use this hoop and embroider. This is something that is exclusive to Janome and no other brand machine has this option. And that is because of how the embroidery arm is situated in the back of the machine. And I'm back to my home page of my embroidery screen and I am going to show you the lettering options. The lettering options are the fonts that are built into the machine. There are 11 different fonts. I find that incredible. So various types of fonts, but one in particular that I wanted to show you is this micro gothic. This is a five millimeter lettering. It is just the perfect size to recreate a logo or do lettering on a chest, a left chest pocket. And of course, all of the Janome embroidery machines have two and three letter monographs. So just a complete lettering option and you'll be able to do just about anything your mind sets it to. So I love the fact that so much is built into the machine between all of the decorative stitches, the built-in embroidery designs and the built-in fonts. Just a good review, 13.7 inches in that throat space and even off to the left of the machine, just a nice wide area that you get. I think that you'll absolutely love the Memory Craft 14,000. Don't forget to reach out to your Janome dealer and ask them some questions about the 14,000. Make sure to ask about their phenomenal pricing as well as any financing options that they may have. But most importantly, don't forget to tell them Alba sent you. Well, hey everybody, great job by Alba there and uh, on that 14,000. So, hey, I'm gonna tell y'all how y'all can get the 14,000. We've got a great, great show special on the 14,000 uh, this week. And hey, we only have eight of these left. There's only eight left of these machines. They're $69.99. That is a fantastic price. And if that's not enough, hey, we got a free bonus kit with it that you can get. And we, it's actually a call-in special. You can call in and we actually have a better price on this machine, but you have to call in to get that special price. But what comes in that value pack, that bonus kit, you're getting that Janome border guide, uh, the gathering foot, the ribbon sequin foot. You're getting the AccuFill quilting kit, two packs of denim needles size 14, two packs of top stitch needles size 14, binder foot, the Ultra Glide, the AccuFeed ruffler, one pack of 10 bobbins and two packs of universal needles size 14. So you're getting that bonus pack. Plus we got a special, uh, you know, sewing uh, machines plus sew festival price for you. It's normally $69.99 is what we sell this for. Give us a call at 800-401-8151, and we're going to have a great, great price. There's only eight of these machines left. This has been a really popular machine with Janome, and uh, with SMP, we have sold a ton of these machines. We have, uh, you know, our sales staff is standing by right now. If you can't get through on the phones, again, Kyle is going to put that Google Sheets link up in the chat on both YouTube and Facebook. And what you do is you just hit that link, it'll open up Google Sheets, put your name, a phone number that they can call you at, and just put what product you're interested in. And soon as uh, you know operator gets freed up, they're gonna give you a call. That gets updated in our call center real time immediately, and they'll be giving you a call. But guys, I'm telling you, if you're a Janome fan out there, this is one of their top of the line machines. This is an incredible machine. Alba really showed off all the features on this machine at $69.99. What a bargain, uh, especially with that bonus kit we're throwing in, but we're going to beat that. So if you call in, we're going to give you that show special price today, this week only, or until we run out. We have eight of them left, and I promise you when they're gone, the price is gone. All right, guys. 
So we're ready to move on. And uh, hey, coming up next, we have the uh, great duo team of Kim and Christina over at, at Handy Quilter. And you know they, they've been talking about the Moxie, they've talked about some long arms. We're gonna dive all into Pro Stitcher robotics for these machines. So uh, Kim and Christina, are y'all there? Yeah, we're here. We are. Hey. Well, thank y'all for coming back on the show again. And hey, we're excited for y'all to show about Pro Stitcher because, you know, everybody always talks about the quilting machines and everything. And, and, and you know, they talk about robotics, but, you know, robotics are extremely easy, but it's very intimidating to a lot of people. So I really want y'all to explain that and how it works. And I'm sure we're going to get people excited about robotics. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. We're really excited. I know, Kim, personally, this is like your go-to quilting. Oh, it's, my, it's my love. <laughs> it's my love. I love, I love quilting with the Pro Stitcher. And Blaine's exactly right. It really is easy to do. So we want to just talk to you first just a little bit about some of the basic features of the Pro Stitcher. And then we're going to dive in. We've actually got a little, a couple of things we're going to show you how to do with the Pro Stitcher that Christina and I both do all the time. We both, we both quilt with the Pro Stitcher. I definitely quilt a little more with the Pro Stitcher than Christina does, but we both use it all the time in all of our quilting. We absolutely love the Pro Stitcher. So first of all, just so everybody understands, uh, Pro Stitcher is uh, software on a tablet, and then it's also the carriage that the machine sits on has motors in it, and it actually moves the machine and does the quilting. Um, it's that that's what the pro stitcher system is people often think oh it's just the software or the tablet but that carriage that has the motors is really what works the magic right correct yeah so the pro stitcher system can actually go on pretty much any of the handy quilter machines we can put it on uh simply's amara's uh forte forte Infinities. infinity um, we do have a version of the Pro Stitcher coming out soon for Moxie. It's going to be called Pro Stitcher Lite. Yep. It's going to be debuting at Houston at the end of next month, and it will be shipping in November. Is what yep. the plans are right now. And that can be used for our Simply 16 as well. Yep, that's exactly right. So we're really excited about that. And really, that's just a simplified version of Pro Stitcher. But we're going to talk about Pro Stitcher today and some of the great things that it can do. So we, uh, one of the really cool things about the Pro Stitcher is it comes with a huge library of designs, doesn't it, Christina? Tons. Tons. So we've got the Postature Library, mm -hmm. but in addition to that, we have all of um, some special designers that yep. have submitted designs that are on there as well. Yeah. So lots, 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 lots to choose from. I know, I know many, many people that are like, I am just going to use all the designs in the Pro Stitcher and they do. And there are tons to pick from. And usually when we have updates come out, we include new designs also. So, yep. and if you do want to go and buy more designs, you sure can. You can always uh, purchase online, digital designs online, save them on a USB and then bring them to the machine and stitch them out too. Yeah. So I think, we should set up a design. We should just show them how easy it really is, right? Yeah. We need to also mention to them about designer because it comes oh, with that's their right. stitcher. Another one of my favorites that I love. <laughs> so there's actually software that uh, the Pro Stitcher team has developed. Uh, oh, it's been, oh, God, it's almost been two years, hasn't it? It's been a little while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's called Pro Stitcher Designer that comes with Pro Stitcher now, and it allows you to easily edit and create your own digital quilting designs, which mm -hmm. I know that Christina and I both, um, we create designs with it when you you just can't quite find that perfect design. But I know for me, I've, I've actually gotten to the point where I use it almost more just for editing designs yeah. to make them fit exactly perfectly on that project. Yep. It's just personalizing the designs mm -hmm. to make it how you want it to be. Exactly. So, great exactly. software program. It is. And it comes with your Pro Stitcher. Yep, it does. It's really great. Okay. So let's, uh, let's, let's take a look here. So here on the quilt, you guys can see that I've got a, uh, a purple block that's just been basted down. Um, Christina basted this down earlier, and she actually used the channel locks that Pro Stitcher has so that you'll only be able to move in straight lines, either from side to side or up and down and then also just touching the button that has the basting stitch. And we're gonna quilt a design in here and do a little bit of essentially re reverse applique, right? We're gonna stitch out the design and then we're gonna cut away some of this purple fabric so that you can see the black underneath. I think that was the plan, right? Um, 
Sure. Sure. <laughs> I was thinking the other way around, but you know. Okay. So we're gonna Go we're gonna pop up here on the screen so you guys can see the pro stitcher screen right now while I'm setting things up. So if you look on the screen, those orange crosshairs represent where my needle is. So I'm gonna move it up here to the top corner of my block and I'm gonna select the area tab and then touch two corner and it places that design, that area dot there. And I'm going to move my crosshairs down here to the other corner and touch two corner again. And then I'll touch that refresh button. And you can see here on the screen, I've got this pink box. Can I interrupt real yeah. quick just to clarify for people watching? Because they can't see the purple box or the purple square. Oh, right. That, right. right. So you, when you put your first point down, mm -hmm. you had moved your machine. Yes. So the needle was in the top left-hand corner. I moved it originally here in this top corner here. And I touched my first two point and then I moved it down to the opposite corner down here and I touched that on my second point. And you guys can actually see, you can see those crosshairs moving on the screen up there in the corner that represent right where those two orange lines cross, that's where my needle is. Okay. So I have that area set up um, exactly what matches up with my fabric now. Now what I want to do is open a design. And we talked about this design library earlier a little bit. So I'm going to select the file tab and then design from the ribbon and open. And you guys are going to see my design library here. If you guys look here where I'm just scrolling here along this side, these are all the folders that come with designs. So those aren't just the designs. Those are the folders, folders. that all of the designs are inside of. And you can so, see when blocks. I select a folder, there's a whole bunch of designs in that folder. So we have, it comes with lots and lots of designs. We actually were debating about this earlier. I believe, I believe there's close to a thousand designs that come, come with it. We were trying to decide if the shell, cell sheet we were looking at, I think, I think it might actually be a little bit of an older one. So I want to choose a design from the PS designs. So that's the pro stitcher designs folder. And just a little note, most of the designs here in the uh, PS designs are ones that have been designed by uh, handy quilter educators, the studio educators. So uh, we'll select the blocks here, and then we wanted to quilt a cute little flower. Oh, we're going to do this one here, this flower five. So I do that, I touch open, and my design opens in my area. And you guys can see that it's not quite going to fill that space there on the screen. So we have some great tools that allow us to um, modify this design so it will completely fill that area. So we'll select the modify tab, and we're going to use the superpower um, um, feature. It's called skew. So if we do that and we touch skew, it just makes that design completely fill the area. It looks so good. What do you think, Christina? I think that looks fabulous. Okay. I'm, I'm wondering if people might be a little confused when we throw out these names of where the buttons are. So let's show them how we do our one, two, three. Oh, right. Okay. Christina always reminds me, brings me <laughs> back. <laughs> so whenever we select something in Pro Stitcher, looking here at the screen, we always select a tab first here at the top. And you can see we've got different tabs, area, modify, repeat, just some of the different options. And then as we change the tab, the buttons here on this second row, the ribbon change. And then when I select a different button on the ribbon, my sidebar over here on the right hand side of the screen changes. And you can see that I can select different buttons here to change, um, modify aspects of the design. So that's one of the things that makes ProStitcher really easy to use is uh, it really is a simple um, one, format two, to follow. follow. Yeah, the one, two, three. And we have lots of videos on ProStitcher.com that walk you through how to use ProStitcher and Designer. We do. We, we have those. So, uh, okay. So we've got this. I think it looks pretty good. Should we stitch? I want to see it stitch. Okay. So I'm going to touch my baseline button. That just uh, freezes all those changes I've made. It doesn't save them, but it freezes them. Then we'll touch the Pro Stitcher tab. And we'll have the quilt button selected on the ribbon, which was already selected there. And over here in my sidebar on the right-hand side, I've got uh, my stitch selected. All the buttons that are green are selected. So I think we're ready to go ahead and stitch. So we'll we'll let you guys take a look here at the um, actually on the fabric. And I you guys give me just a second here. I played around with that thread so much I wrapped it clear on the foot. So I'm going to touch the run button, and I have a verify settings thing pop up on the screen, and I look at it and go everything's great. I'll touch the proceed. 
The machine's gonna pull, move over and do you see that? It just took that first little stitch for me and it does a pause. And what I can do is I can actually just move the machine to the side a little bit and then grab my bobbin thread there. And I'm gonna hold on to both of those threads and touch resume and the machine will start stitching. So the machine knows where to go. It knows exactly time. where to go. And we are stitching at a good speed today, which is awesome. And you can see there on the corner of the screen, You can see there in the corner of the screen that as it stitches, the lines turn gold. So I know where I have stitched. And look at how beautifully that stitched out. It looks so good, doesn't it? Fabulous. Fabulous. And you notice that the machine, the machine was moving pretty quickly. We have, right now we're letting the software, um, we have this special feature called OptiStitch that the software is able to figure out <laughs> to optimize its stitching. So it, it looks at the size of the design, the stitches per inch that I have chosen, and it calculates the optimal speed to stitch at. And so it curves it, and the points. Yeah, curves and everything. So it stitched that absolutely beautifully with no problems and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move the machine to the side and do my needle down, needle up and clip my threads, and then I have this perfect design. So, Christina, do you wanna come trim away some of this stuff? I think that that looks really great. What do you guys think of my flower? I think it's fabulous. I think it's fabulous. I've already said. And there's no way if I was uh, free motion quilting that I would get it that perfect within my, my block right there. Yes. Um, why don't I trade you sides okay. and you can show them how to save a design. Hmm, that's a great idea. So that we can use this again exactly how it yep. is. Um, do you care if I stitch cut on nope. the outside? Go for it. Okay. So we're just gonna, Christina's gonna trim away some of that thread. And I'm gonna show you guys on the screen here. So to save this design, because we modified it, you remember that we made it a little bigger so that it would fit in this area. We're gonna select the file tab and then I'm gonna to touch save on the ribbon and I get a little drop down here. And I actually have a couple of options of how I can save this. I wanna save this one as a workspace because the workspace will allow me to also save that area that I created, which we're gonna to wanna to use again. Actually, when we talk to you about ProStitcher again later this week, we are gonna to wanna to use the whole thing. So I'm gonna type in and touch clear and I'm gonna type in Kim's flower. We'll see if I can spell. Okay, good job. I'm so Same. impressed that you're being mature with your name. <laughs> yes, well, I'm trying not to be too much of a <laughs> sideshow. So now I have that saved, and I know I have it saved because under my file tab, I can tap the workspace button, and you can see that right there underneath open, it says Kim's flower. So if I touch that, it will open that design again with that area so that I can do some. Uh, some more stitching with it down the road. So stitching with a pro stitcher is just awesome. I uh, One of the things that uh, I always kind of laugh at when people say this, that they'll say things like, you know, computerized quilting is cheating. And I say, oh, no, it's not, no, it's not. It's a, it's a skill set in and of itself that you have to learn. Now, just like Blaine said earlier, it really is easy to learn how to use the pro stitcher, but you got to learn how to use it. So by doing, by just using it and uh, the repetition, quilting a lot of quilts, uh, working on a lot of fun projects, you master the skill of using it and you become a true pro stitcher. I always have a little fun with that one. You can be pro pro stitcher. Uh, one of the other things that is really commonly used with a pro stitcher that a lot of people uh, even th it's the whole reason why they buy a pro stitcher is maybe they want to start a home quilting business. They want to quilt for others, or they just are really high volume piecers. They make a ton of quilt tops. And so they want to do a lot of edge to edge designs, maybe not so much of the custom stuff, which setting up this flower, the way that we did this, this is a little bit more of the custom quilting. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of how to set up an edge to edge design and show you how easy it is in Pro Stitcher. So we'll take a look here at the screen. First of all, I'm gonna select the file tab 
And then I'm going to touch clear all and it's going to wipe away that other design. Next, I need to set up my area first. So I'll move my machine to the top corner and go to area and touch two corner. And because I would know the size of my quilt, I can actually just enter in a size here. So we're going to say that this is a twin size quilt. So we're going to make it 60 by 90. That's a pretty common quilt size, right, Christina? Yep. Okay. So there's my entire area for my quilt, 60 by 90. And I want to set up a design. So we will go to file tap design open and we'll go back into that design library. And I want to choose something from the continuous line library. Why? Because when you're doing an edge to edge, you have to use a continuous line. Christina always keeps me on track. Um, we need designs that actually snap together so that they will stitch continuously from one edge of the quilt to the other. These are also known as edge to edge designs, border to border designs. I'm trying to think if there's other that the people call them. They, some, some people call them pantos too, because uh, a lot of these same designs, you know, if you printed them out, you can use them as pantographs. So let's pick, let's pick a fun design. What's a design that you like in this uh, PS Designs, Christina? Oh, Lost Street Breeze is always a good one. How about Feather Delight? Feather Delight. Let's do Feather Delight. Feather Delight. Okay, yeah, this is a fun one. I like this. This one is an all over feather design. Really cute. So as this is, this opened over here on the uh, right side of the screen, you can see the dimensions of it. So the design itself is 12 and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches tall. Well, I want to quilt this out a little bit faster. So I want to modify the height of that design first, which is really easy to do in Pro Stitcher. So I'll select the modify tab and then resize on the ribbon, which is already selected. And this lock button here, I just turned it off. I'm going to turn it back on is really important. That maintains the aspect ratio so that my feathers have that same exact look, no matter how much larger I make my design. I'm going to choose height. And then down here, I'll just tap in this little number box and this little um, keypad pops up and I'm going to make it 12 inches. Let's try 12 and see how it looks. What do you think? 12, enter. I usually set mine up so that I use up my entire throat space. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a with an Amara, so how big, how tall would we make it then? I Amara. would go for about because yeah, we could go bigger than twelve. Inches. Let's do fourteen, just to be on the safe side, right? You know what? Good call. That looks really good. I'm going to baseline that change in the design. I'm just going to freeze that change, and then we'll go to the repeat tab. And we'll repeat this. We'll touch the fill button and it is going to fill with as many repeats as can fit in there. Now we can clearly see that this isn't enough. So we're going to do a little bit more modification. We'll add at least one more horizontal repeat. Um, let's go to vertical. And I just tapped the screen. Sorry about that vertical. Let's add another repeat and then we need to reduce the gap. So you guys can see that I'm just tapping this gap button. I'm actually just going to hold it and bring those designs closer together because we don't want quite as big of a gap. So this is there. a design that we call nesting. Yeah. So instead of it being like straight across at the bottom, it kind of curves and goes up and down. So we need those two rows to kind of stick in there together. Be close enough together, exactly. And I'm gonna add in, let's add in two more. What do you think? I think that looks pretty good. I think it looks fabulous. Yeah. That's my word for the day. Fabulous. fabulous. I love it. Next, we'll baseline to, to lock those changes. And then you can clearly see that I've got a bunch of this design outside of the area. I want to crop that away because I don't want to quilt that. So we'll go to modify, choose crop on the ribbon, and then we're going to crop the outside. And then I have a ton of start and stops, which I do not want. So I'll tap the edges button. And now I just have start and stops at the beginning of my rows. So in the last couple of minutes, you've completely set up the entire quilt. To exactly. Be stitched out. Exactly. So super quick, yeah. super easy. Yep. You would want to baseline it and then definitely save the design save before the you design. start stitching. Yeah. Um, Take it from then, two pros. Yeah. We yeah. know. <laughs> we learn by experience. You right? always get that phone call. You got to go pick up a kid or you, it's just, you know, it's 1130 at night and you just can't do another row. That way you have your design saved and you can uh, finish it later. Yep. So at this point, I will just go to my pro stitcher tab 
and hit quilt and I can go ahead and start stitching. It's as simple as that. That's fabulous. So here's one thing that I want to um, ask about. Well, okay. Point out. Yes. <laughs> um, what happens when we run out of bobbin or we oh. have a thread break in the middle of this pattern? Do we have so. to re-stitch over the whole thing? No, no. Do we have to go stitch, meaning that the machine moves, but it just mm -hmm. doesn't stitch until you get to your spot? No, nope. no. Nope. There are so many fabulous features in this program. Yeah. You can change your start point to wherever you need it to be exactly. in the program. Exactly. Or in the design. So let's show them how to do that just really quickly. I'm going to actually just move the machine over here a little bit. And let's zoom in just a little bit so that everybody can see here on the screen a little bit more what we're doing here. We'll zoom in just a little bit more. So you can see where the crosshairs are there. Actually, Christine, I might have you touch the buttons. Okay. So let's say that right there where the crosshairs are is where I had a, a, my bobbin ran out because I forgot to check my bobbin before I started stitching. Okay, I'm so, going to zoom in even more. Yeah, go for it. I'm going to draw a little box. That's great. Right in there. Okay. So I want to start stitching again right there because it's best to start stitching where there's a point or something like that. It's easier to do. So Christina, walk us through the steps of how we would put the start point here so that we can start stitching exactly where we want to. Excellent. So on the top of tabs, we already have the Pro Stitcher tab selected. Mm -hmm. It's green. So in our ribbon below that, we have our new start and end. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to turn green. We come over to the right hand sidebar. We've got the column that says start auto. We have a column that says end and it's got auto underneath it. I want it to start there. Right. So I'm going to tap that auto button and watch as I move my machine, that start point is going to go wherever it can that's closest to where my crosshairs are. But if I want to lock it in place, I'm going to hit that auto button under mm -hmm. the start column one more time. Yep. And now I can move my machine and that start button is locked right there. Exactly. So now when I go back to the quilt button in the ribbon mm -hmm. and hit run, it is going to start stitching right where I selected it. Exactly. So it's super easy to recover from a thread break. So do we have any questions? That's that's kind of a really super quick overview, <laughs> the basics. But this, I mean, these really are the features that we use all the time with Pro Stitcher that we that just make quilting so easy with the Pro Stitcher. So let's see if we have any questions. While we wait for some Ooh. questions to come up, we cut out the flower. Yeah. So we oh, need yeah. everybody to come back on Friday to see what we're going to do with this flower. Yes. Just a little teaser. We have a, a little there. Okay, okay. so we, we have a question that says, could you use a laptop with this? So actually, uh, the Pro Stitcher, when you want to stitch with it, you have to use it set up as the system is with the laptop. But the Pro with Stitcher, the oh yeah. Sorry, okay. with, the, with the tablet. But you can download the Pro Stitcher software from ProStitcher.com onto a Windows-based or laptop or tablet, if you have a tablet that or you desktop. just use at home or a desktop. And you can use it in simulation. It's actually a really great way to learn how to use Pro Stitcher. Uh, you can play around with it, look through the designs, uh, practice setting things up. It's, it's a great way to do it. So yes, you can use a laptop with this. The laptop won't run the machine no. though. You'd have no. to take your design in a USB and plug it into the, the tablet to make exactly. it actually run though. Okay. Okay. What's this next question? So the next question says, does the Pro Stitcher sew from one side or right to left then left to right? Uh, okay. This goes back to the mechanics of how a long arm works. Does the Pro Stitcher have the capability that you could stitch anywhere within that row space? Absolutely. Yep. However, for the very best stitch quality, you always want to be moving in a generally from left to right direction. Uh, it has to do with the way that sewing machines are engineered and actually the direction that the bobbin turns. So although, yes, you can set up an edge edge and sew from left to right and then come back and go from right to left, you may find that that right to left it might give you just a little bit of a headache. Sometimes it's easier just to bring it back. but that doesn't mean you can't give it a try because sure. it is capable of doing it. Yeah. And if it's a design that you kind of trick the machine mm -hmm. to think it's going like up and down and all around and changing directions, you won't notice it as much. Yeah. But if you're stitching like a straight line from right to left, mm -hmm. you're more likely to have issues. Mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. You'll be happier. Just go ahead and move it back over to the left and start again. Yep. So good question. Really good question. 
Well, hey, ladies, that was a great presentation on the Pro Stitcher. I, I absolutely love the Pro Stitcher. And mm -hmm. when we go to trade shows, I'm always the one that it uses the Pro Stitcher and does the demonstrations. And, you know, I don't know what y'all's favorite feature is on it, but my absolute favorite feature on that is that record feature where, you know, if I have a friend that does perfect feathers, we can record it. I can put it in, save it in a file and use it anytime I want and duplicate it. So I love that feature of the Pro Stitcher but I'm gonna show everybody how they can get their very own Pro Stitcher to add to their quilting machine. We have it right now, everybody. The special is, it's $10,995 for that Pro Stitcher. Uh, and you're gonna get a $500 thread bundle with it. And that thread uh, bundle, you're getting that King Tut, that Masterpiece, uh, Fantastico, Magnifico, Omni, the Omni V, the bottom line, so fine, and that Superior Metallic thread. That bundle comes with it's a $500 value. The Pro Stitcher is $10,995, and that is shipped right to your door and for free. And guess what? You can get Pro Stitcher. You know, Pro Stitcher makes uh, a, a robotic programs for a, a few different manufacturers. They make it for all the handy quilter machines. They make it for our very own King Quilter machine. And then I think they make it for Janome and Baby Lock, one of their machines. So, Pro Stitcher, they make it for, you know, four different companies out there. So even if you don't have a handy quilter and you want to get a Pro Stitcher, it might work on one of your quilting machines, but you can give us a call at 800-401-8151. We have agents standing by and all of our salespeople on the phones are experts when it comes to long arm machines and Pro Stitcher and the robotics. They can really guide you and answer your questions. But I tell you, uh, uh, Kimberly and, 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 uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm Kim and, and Christina did a great job uh, of explaining it. It made it very easy. And, you know, the problem with Pro Stitcher is just very intimidating. But I'm telling you, once you start using this program, it makes it so easy. And if you're wanting to do, you know, quilting for a living in, in a business, uh, it is so awesome. You can save your, you know, all your designs in there. Uh, you know, if you have different clients, you can save it in for them and make files. So it is, it is an awesome, awesome program. So guys, we're ready to move on. I'm gonna bring Jane back in. And Jane, so, uh, you're back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to be back. I just ran well, away for a little bit, fixed some lighting, changed my shirt, and uh, here I am, ready to go. I'm telling you, we're happy you're back. You know, we had a little bit of technical uh, difficulties with Janome and we got all that worked out. We're back on schedule now. We've kind of up, you know, everybody's moved their schedules up a little bit. So we're right back on track. And I know you're raring to go and uh, you got Tamara coming back up and uh, y'all going to talk about some OESD stuff. OESD is what we're talking about right now. Thank you so much, Blaine. Hi, everybody. I am Jane Klaus. Excited to be here for day two of So Fest. It's been so great so far. So let's keep things moving right along. Like Blaine said, I am going to be talking about OESD with our friend. She's a national educator and embroidery specialist. I'm gonna bring her in right now. Put your hands together for Tamara Evans. Hey, how are hey. you? Thank you so much for joining us again this afternoon. You did a great presentation on Stabilizer earlier today. Are we going to keep the ball rolling with that? We absolutely are. I'm going to do one of my favorites, which is specialty stabilizers. Oh. And I have some really exciting stuff at the end that you'll definitely want to stay tuned for. Well, it's we're really literally, fun. everybody is locked to the channel right now, watching cool. everything all day. We especially want to hear more from you, so I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Great. Thanks, Jane. I'll do that. So first of all, let me share my screen with you. And... Takes me a second. This, and I apologize, the rowdy dogs in the back, if you can hear them. Um, there we go. Okay. All right. So here we go on specialty stabilizers. So when do we use specialty stabilizers? Well, we use them when we want to do something special. <laughs> um, like, there we go. Um, like fiber form for creating freestanding objects um, like the rocket ship and the star when we want to do applique we can make it easier and we're actually going to do a whole class on applique later in the week um, fusible products like fuse and seal and soft web and some others so let's get started 
first we're going to talk about fuse and fleece. This is really, <coughs> pardon me, chokes me up, um, an interesting stabilizer. It is fusible on one side and it is a very, 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 very thin piece of batting. Um, so it's, it's like, you know, kind of in between batting and a piece of flannel. But what it does is it gives you some loft in your embroidered items. So if you really want to make your red work stand out, you could use this because it gives it a little bit of loft to the fabric. Um, if you want to quilt a quilt block and put it in a pillow and it looked, you know, quilted without having to do the whole back to it, you can do that. It also adds stabilization and, and texture to things like tote bags and mug rugs. Um, and you would use it on woven fabrics, but it is a permanent fuse. So here's a couple of samples using it with uh, our piece to perfection purple stars and also on a mug rug. Say it's simple coasters by Susan Rooney. Those are so cute. But you use a steam iron to bond the fleece to the back of the fabric. But you can also use it as a standalone on firmly woven fabrics with a low stitch count when you want to like we use it in the mug rugs that stitch and turn, and then when we turn them inside out, it's fused to the back so that it doesn't come open. Um, if you're using multi, multiple layers of fuse and fleece because you want it to be a little bit thicker, then just press one onto the back of the project and then press another one onto the back of that. So it can be laundered in the washer and dryer, doesn't shrink. It's really just a nice product. Here's an example of how I used it with this um, tree skirt. And these were relatively light designs, but when I cut out, I needed to cut out my octagon first so that I had the shape I wanted, but then it was difficult to get two sides of it in the hoop um, because they were at different angles. So I used fuse and fleece as a leader cloth, much like you would with a long arm quilting machine. So I left it long so I, the hoop had something to grab onto. So it's really fun. And you can find those instructions if you're more curious of how that was done in holiday stitches. And with all of our designs, if you go in, if there's a project included, you can go in and look at where it's click on where it says preview sewing information, and it'll bring up the PDF right there on your computer. You can read through the whole lesson. Uh, without having to buy the, the pack. We just want to inspire you to do more and interesting things. So we're always putting lots of projects in, in to our collections. Another project that I just love, I'm never without it, is Fuse and Seal. It is a permanent fusible film and it comes both in a roll and in a package. So flat sheets um, and the way it works, it's not really for sewing or stabilizing anything. It's for adhering to things together. For example, these patches that you see, I would take a patch and put it right side up over the glue side of my fuse and seal and trace it, then cut it out. And there's a paper release on the back. Then I take the fusible side of the fuse and seal and put it to the back of the patch, uh, press it in place. And then again, read those instructions so you know what kind of heat you need to get a good fuse on the fuse and seal. Uh, Use it to the back of my patch, and then I peel off the paper. Sometimes it's easier to score it and peel it off, and then fuse it to whatever surface I want. I actually fused one of these uh, patches to a metal um, little thing I used to put my notions in uh, at my sewing, I mean, at my uh, ironing board. So you can fuse it to anything that you can apply heat to. So it makes it really versatile. Girl Scout patches, Boy Scout patches, Motorcycle Club patches. You know, you could pay for your habit by taking in some of those projects. Oops, went too far. Fuse and seal. There we go. Uh, fiber form. Now, this now comes on a roll, which is very nice. So it doesn't have any creases in it. And it is 10 inches by 2 yards. Fiber form is stiff, uh, but very pliable. 
Um, it adds structure to things. So like door hangers and luggage tags, uh, we would put that inside of it. You could actually use it on almost any applique, even if we don't call for it in the project instructions. Um, what I would recommend, because it's a little thicker, is that you pre-cut the fiber form to fit your applique by using the uh, placement line and then cover over it with your fabric and then you can uh, cut in place if you like. So it's very easy to manipulate. It needles beautifully. It's machine washable. It's dry cleanable. Um, you just can't destroy it. I also use it in sewing. If I'm doing bags and I want even more structure than what fusion fleece would give me, I'll, I'll include it in the sides of the bags. So it's very nice, fun project and works great with embroidery. Then we have gentle touch backing. Gentle touch is something if you tuned in this morning and I said the poly mesh does not make, uh, it's not scratchy to your skin. It's very soft and it, um, not scratchy, but the bobbin stitches are. This is what you use to cover up those bobbin stitches. You want to cut a piece of gentle touch backing and one side is fusible and you can tell really easily because it's the rough side and you want to put that rough side down on the back of your embroidery and i recommend that you curve the edges um, it helps to keep it from peeling up um, like it wants to do sometimes and you curve the edges and press that really well it's a permanent fuse it will last through washing drying and everything and you can also use it for mending get a hole in a sweater or a knit shirt or you know where you cut one of those rough tags out actually you could just put it over the tag and then your the tag wouldn't scratch it if you reheat it then you can take it off um but like if you get a hole in a t-shirt or something like that turn it right, right wrong side up put the gentle touch backing over it fuse it and the hole is gone so great thing to have around the house and also when you're stitching for babies, children, or anybody who's got sensitive skin. But the funnest thing, let's talk about really hard to hoop items. Um, and I mean really hard to hoop items like mm, hats. You know, there's all kinds of tools out there for hats and, and some of them work great and some of them don't. Um, and some uh, other things that we want to embroider on that we just can't actually get it in the hoop and holding on really well. So let's take a look at Hydra Stick Tearaway. Now we call this a specialty, it's in the specialty category as far as my presentation is concerned. This is actually a tearaway stabilizer. And the nice thing about Hydra Stick Tearaway is that it um, is less expensive than a sticky. It also, you just get that glue side of the stabilizer. You'll hoop it, the glue side up. Um, it's kind of shiny. You can tell which side it is and just barely get it damp. You know, if you can find, which they probably don't make anymore, um, those little sponge and bottle things like you used to wet stamps with, or even just a foam brush. I often will use my fingers in a cup of water and just swish it over there just to get it slight, just damp, just tacky. Don't over wet it because then you have to wait for the glue to dry. And um, I'm an impatient embroiderer, so I don't want to wait that long. Uh, so just spritz it a little or, you know, and get it activated. Then you can lay your things down on it and it will hold it it will hold it really, really good. Um, so, and then to get it off, you would re-moisten it and tear it away, just like a regular table, tear away. So let's see it in action. So she's hooping that with the glue side up. Little spritz. Thank you. 
was that now I will tell you that you do have to embroider responsibly oops I'm going the wrong way um, when you have that a tennis shoe on there you need to make sure oops, here we go you need to make sure that you slow your machine down a little bit and watch so that you know you aren't taking your machine in to be served so you do have to be careful with that um, one thing I want to point out with the hat is I, it's kind of hard to, not hard, but it's awkward. Um, if you tape that sweatband up, and I'll do a couple of clips on the sides to hold it, and then just some tape to, to pull it back and tape it to the brim so that you're not stitching on the sweatband. Um, and it looks way more professional that way. Um, our perfect embroidery tape, the tearaway kind, works great for this. So, it's a great tape to have on hand and you get it at a discount today. So to flatten the brim, this is really cool. Just take a ruler. She had a wooden ruler. This one, um, I was using a quilter's ruler. Um, just any hard, firm, flat surface that isn't going to bend. And then use binder clips to clip the bill to it and it flattens it out. So then you can put the rest of it in the hoop and it works very well. So here it is, hooped, um, and just stick it down to the stabilizer. Make sure um, after you've wetted it and then um, pull that down. You want to get the design as far down to the brim as possible so that the design is not up here when it should be here. Um, when you're done, remove the hat from the hoop and you saw she just spritzed it and tore it away and i would then tear away the rest of the stabilizer in there you could even put gentle touch on this if you think it's a little bit rough for somebody's head um, and remove the topper and clips um, and i did use a topper on this particular hat because it does make your designs look better so that's all there is to it so what else could you do with hydro stick well i did a store-bought zipper pouch. I really wanted to do this because um, it's so cute and I wanted to put a little crown design on it. But what I ran into is it's a lime zipper pouch, which is fine. But you know what stuck to the hydro stick? Just the lining. So I had to, once I got that stuck, and the lining was, you know, pretty taut with the fabric. Um, I just stayed dependent on each side through the stabilizer and that really held it nicely um, and then used another uh, quilters clip up at the top and to hold it out of the way and just put it on my machine and stitched it and came up with this really cute little zipper pouch so really fun to do and again easy for it to tear away you can add a tassel to it and this was really an inexpensive zipper pouch and now it looks simply regal so we do have a specialty bundle for you. And that bundle includes Hydro Stick, Tearaway, Fuse and Fleece, the Gentle Touch backing to go over the back of your designs, Fuse and Seal, the glue, and Soft Whip, which is a very, very light 
uh, paper-backed, um, and like a, a, a fibery adhesive. It's very, very lightweight, but that will, you can bond two layers of fabric together. So you could use it for applique. It's printable, so you could pre-cut your appliques. And we'll get into that more later in the week. Kimberly will be back with um, a lot of fun stuff for you. But in this bundle, you are going to get some really cool designs. Some of my favorites. Um, aquatic Adventures tiling scene. There are nine different sea creatures on here and there's nine tiles and it's so easy to go together. If you've ever been going, oh, I want to try a tiling scene, but I'm scared. This is a great one, especially if you have little kids in your family or you just like the sea life. Be cute in the bathroom. Um, and it also has the applique separate. Then there's in the hoop mug rugs that you could use your fuse and fleece with that as well as the aquatic adventures tiling scene. Um, in, they're all done in the hoop. There's three that are pieced and three that are applique. So you can use your sock web on that one too. Then we have painted floral appliques. I love these. They're, they're kind of stylized, uh, but it's got a little bit of very light shading on them with zigzag stitches and kind of open stitches with the fabric underneath. So you can really create some cool looks uh, with it. It's great for garments because it's not real heavy, um, but also beautiful on anything else. And then saltwater game fish, because what's more fun than a fishing hat? So you can do your, your caps with that and have a really fun time. So the total value of this collection or this bundle is $292. And you can get it online for $129 today. So take advantage and do some fun stuff. You know, Christmas is going to be here before we know it and the holidays and... Oh, I'm excited, um, but I got to get busy stitching. So do we have, oh, one thing I wanted to reiterate, Kimberly talked about this free club yesterday. If you're interested, be sure to call Sewing Machines Plus to register. Okay, so Jane, do we have any questions? Maybe I'll look at People are amazed by that video demo that you just did with the ball caps and the the tongues of the shoes. That's amazing. Where everyone's like, I would have just done that so long ago. So what a great, what a great opportunity to be able to embroider on everything. And in fact, my favorite quote that you said today was so many kinds of stabilizer because we like to stitch on so many things. Right. <laughs> we and, do. And you've proven that today. So here's a question from Helen. Can you embroider on the brim of a hat or is it too thick? Um, I would be... I would be very hesitant to do that. Oh, oh no, I'll tell you what you can do though. Here's what you do. You stitch it on um, hoop some aqua mesh stabilizer with tool, you know, that real thin mesh. Stitch your design on that, take it out, rinse away the stabilizer, and you can pretty much tear away the tool. Then you have yep. a standalone design. Then you get your fuse and fleece, Trace the design, glue it to the back, take it off, glue it to the brim. Save your easy. machine. What yeah, a great really easy. Solution. That was a good question. I like that. Re 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 refresh us again. We're going to use which stabilizers to do that? You want to use aqua mesh. You want to wash away stabilizer because you want it to all go away. And then, and not any little fuzzies around the edge. Then um, stitch your design and really a filled design will work best for this you don't want anything with open stitches um you could try it and i probably would but i'm a field design i know will work well and then stitch your design take it out rinse away the stabilizer trim away or tear away the tool and then you've got a standalone embroidery design so you put the fuse and seal that's permanent on right. the back fuse it Tear the paper off and then fuse it yep. to the brim of your cap. Got it. So it's fuse and seal, and then it's the um uh I just lost the name of that first one. Aqua mesh. Aqua mesh and fuse and seal. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay. Um you're welcome. Let's talk about this. The uh there are some questions from before. What do you use? Somebody asked earlier, what stabilizer are you using for a towel? I like Ultra Clean and Tear Plus. And the reason I like it is if I've got any open spaces in the design, once I've washed that towel once or twice, you don't see the stabilizer. I don't like to see a glob of stabilizer on the back of a towel. Wow. Um, 
that's just my preference. Yeah, so okay. Aqua Mesh Plus, and I stick it down and then use a topper on that. And then what stabilizer do you recommend for hand embroidery? Oh, hmm. Let me go back in my Wayback Machine when I used to do that. Um, <laughs> it's flowing in your brain right now. Is yeah. Your brain you know, um, I would probably use Ultra Clean and Tear because it's soft. Um, it's going to give my my fabric a little more stability, keep it from stretching. I would use the fusible and then hoop it because there is a Ultra Clean and Tear fusible. Um, that's a good question. I love Stump the Educator. Um, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, you could do that. That would work really well, I think. I mean, and I'm and I'm collecting these. These are questions from our earlier segment as well. Yeah, because I talked too long this morning. And there, there, there is a chart online, and we could go to embroideryonline.com, and we could find that chart with all the different uses for all your stabilizers because there are really so many and so many fantastic. I do. I will fess up. I did go online and bought some stabilizer after that first show. Oh, good. So, so, so it really, it really worked on the host as well. Um, so let's remind everybody uh, what we have today in our specials because everything is so great. You can go to embroideryonline.com and use the coupon code. It's scrolling up down the bottom of your screen. You can get 20% off all the products that you see there. And the coupon code is AB5GG2NM. I won't say it again. It's on your screen. But go to embroideryonline.com. You'll get 20% off there. And then also, this is really fantastic. And I believe that Kimberly talked about it uh, yesterday. Is this correct? The, uh -huh. uh, the Spree Club. And yeah. the Spree Club is when you sign up for the yearly Spree Club, you get a monthly design. Is that right? Oh, no. You get, like, collections every month. Um, this month in September, we have nine collections. We say six to eight. I haven't seen it be only six collections in ages. Um, and it's both from OESD and Scissor Tail Stitches. So really for the price of a design collection or two, you've got everything we make for an entire year. And we don't hold anything back. The tiling scenes that are special for Christmas, all of that, you get it all. So it's fun to, you know, look and see what you've got. And if you do the physical version, it's a machine ready USB. So you can just take it right to your machine, plug it in and start stitching. I mean, the ideas are truly endless with joining the Spree Club with what you've shown us today. So right. the Spree Club, you can join right now. You get all of these um, packages. We've got a very special show price. It is exclusive to sewingmachinesplus.com. You got to call in. To get that special pricing, we know the phone number, 800-401-8151. So go ahead and do that. Get the special pricing because, I mean, you can't really beat this deal. It is really fantastic. But again, the bundle that you mentioned as well. Yes. Right. So let's show that bundle one more time. Okay. Let me share screen again here. Oh, yeah. And... I, I thought Kyle was showing it in the back there. Oh, there it is. So you're getting the specialty bundle. You're getting your hydro stick, the tear away, the fuse and fleece, fuse and seal, the gentle touch, the softwood, plus full four embroidery collections. That's a great, fantastic price. And they're great collections. It's a full collection, not just designs. It's and and Tamara, tell me this: what is as we're as we're talking about embroidery and we're getting excited with all these these new ideas? What's the one thing that you want to? us to take away from your discussion on stabilizers today? Well, the one thing I really want you all to know is that um, don't be afraid to try something. Um, I think that's the main thing. If you go, oh, I don't know about doing that. You know, <laughs> one of the places when I started embroidering where I'd get blanks to try different fabrics or things, I got a Goodwill or a thrift shop and you can find all kinds of stuff um, that it's okay if you mess it up. Um, so if you want to try the tennis shoes, go to get a pair of tennis shoes or go to Walmart and get inexpensive ones. I mean, um, shoes that are just about to be given away or tossed probably. away. You can play yeah. around with those. So, I love the idea. And if you don't have a 10 needle, because it's a lot of times we'll get a cute little uh, bag like you had and say, I, you know, like, how am I going to do that? But right. I don't have a 10 needle, but you're showing us this is a really fantastic way to, to do embroidery and add embellishments to almost anything that we have. Right. And this stabilizer has been around for a long time. It's just that when the sticky ones came out, um, people 
felt like that was a little bit easier, but it doesn't hold the same at all. You can do towels with um, that as well. Just make sure you wet them before you pull it off. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to try stuff. There's not really a learning curve with embroidery. You can go, huh? I mean, I, I met a lady a week ago, two weeks ago, who her first thing she ever did was the Starry Night Santa tiling scene. And I was like, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that wasn't you know. even practice. She just did it. Yeah. She she just like jumped in without even holding her nose. It was great. Yeah. And everybody's loving the idea of going to a thrift store to to work and, and to do these practices. And we always say practice makes perfect. I love, I love your idea of don't be afraid. Just try it. Because the worst thing you're gonna do is you're gonna learn from it and you're gonna try the next thing. Right. Um, I want I want to answer a couple of questions too. The, the bundle is on embroideryonline.com to yes. join the spree club. You're going to go, you're going to call. So I'm Jean's Claus at 800-401-8151 to get the special show pricing. So you're not going to be able to get the pricing anywhere else, only by calling 800-401-8151. But right. today, the extra bonus is if you go to Embroidery Online and you use the coupon code, you will get 20% off your purchases there. And that's where the bundle is. Yes. All the bundles are on there and there's all kinds of other stuff too. All kinds of other stuff. All, I all kinds there. of other stuff. Yep. I went there right after our, our first uh, conversation earlier today because I was like, what? I, I didn't even know. I need this. I must have it. So what'd you get? Uh, I got some stabilizer. I was okay. going to get the bundle, but then I just ended up getting a heavyweight, lightweight, and medium weight tearaway, which I remember from the first presentation, you were like, these are the most popular because, yes. Tamara, I am not as adventurous as most as I'm as I'm preaching that you need to practice. I should probably get some of the um, the aqua mesh, and I should get some of the, the, uh, the, the water-soluble ones. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back after this one. Well, maybe. I mean, and there's really, it, there's not like a prescribed process to becoming a good embroiderer. It's like, do what you want to do. As long as you know how to thread your machine, wind a bobbin and hoop something, go, you know, read the instructions and do it. It's, that's all you need to know. Now, the other really cool thing about OESD is that we're talking about the stabilizers there. So we're talking mm -hmm. about the spree club. We're talking about the bundles. But you have all of these great designs as well. Yes, we do. We do. And you have designs for all seasons and all occasions. Yes, yes. And in fact, there's a design special going on right now that if you, well, if you were to buy that bundle or, um, and, or $79 in product, you get a special holiday celebration collection for free. Um, and it's a really nice collection in September, October, November. So you want to buy, go each month. There are three different collections. And we love our holiday collections as well. A really great question here. Um, two questions I want to get to. What's the best to use in infant and baby clothing? And does it, does it matter? Um, I would always, whatever you use, back it with the gentle touch because their skin can be really sensitive. Um, and depending on what you're doing, if it's a knit, like a onesie, I would definitely use the fusible poly mesh. Um, it's nylon, so it's not going to be rough on their skin. You're still going to cover it, but you want to cover those bobbin stitches. But you fuse it on and then you can stitch your design and it won't stretch and get distorted. So. And, and, and actually, you're right. And I, I said, does it matter? Because I was thinking fabric is fabric. If, it, you know, infant clothing is very thin, but, you know, we don't want it rubbing against the baby skin, nor do we mm -hmm. want it rubbing against our skin. One of the questions that we had earlier was, do you put something else on the cutaway so it isn't against your skin? And what, what do you recommend to put against it? Against the cutaway. Oh, well, if you're doing a really heavy design, like on a, a sweatshirt, maybe a sweatshirt for, for a child or, or whoever, if you're doing a heavy design, um, you first want to stop the stretch with your cutaway. And then you can add other layers of, of tearaway to it to give it a little bit more strength or give it more support. And then you tear that away, trim away the cutaway, cover it with your gentle touch and you're good to go. 
Uh, very good. Okay, guys, you're going to get prices when you call 800 401 8151. You'll get this very special show price when you call Sewing Machines Plus. Operators are standing by to take your orders. They'll tell you everything you need to know about it. But that's where you're going to get your special pricing. If you go to embroideryonline.com, that's where you're going to find the bundle and you can get the pricing there as well. One right. last question before we turn. Uh, someone says, uh, Rita says she struggles with puckers so much and it's discouraging. Can you turn our pucker, puckers into smiles? I can. Um, if you want to go on embroideryonline.com and look up the perfect embroidery press cloth. Oh. If you think about what happens when you're embroidering, you're adding extra threads into fabric that's, you know, was fine just the way it was, uh, but better with embroidery. And so you're bound to have a few puckers. Um, this will get rid of those. It'll have the fabric accept and welcome your embroidery threads into its structure. Um, and you place the your embroidery face down on the press cloth and you can use steam, you can use starch, um, whatever the fabric will take. And then that gets rid of all the puckers around it. Yeah. I travel with one. So yeah. if I have to press clothes, you know, you never know with ironing boards and hotel rooms, but if there's a placket or cuffs or collars, things like that, where you might have buttons, I just put the buttons face down into it and go like this on the back and it's pressed. You it's are a easy. wealth of knowledge. Tamara Evans, thank yeah. you so much. You're for welcome. Us, everybody. Uh, again, you don't want to miss joining the Spree Club, so be sure. Thanks, Mara. She's uh, she's gone. I mean, amazing. Like the second you think you're at a loss, she's got the answer for you. So again, call 800-401-8151 to get the special pricing on the Spree Club, or go ahead and get that 20% off on all of those bundles and all that cool stuff they have at embroideryonline.com. So I'm gonna turn it over to Blaine, who's gonna turn it into another fantastic presentation. Hey, Blaine. Hey, Jane. Great hey, job. Okay? Thank you. Is it okay that I use the show a little bit for my own education as well? Hey, it's quite all right. We are all getting educated this week. And uh, I mean, I learn something every time we do these shows because it's so, so many good people presenting. So speaking of great presenters, hey, I got coming up next. It's Mark Martin from Handy Quilter. And I'm from Grace. I'm sorry, from Grace. And uh, Mark Martin from Grace is coming up next. And uh, Mark's been there about 10 years. He's the uh, uh, customer relations manager, and we're super excited to have Mark here with Grace. So, Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Blaine. I'm very excited to be here from the Grace Company. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm. <laughs> um, you know, it's probably the bald head. We're, we're we're all over the place. We could be in any parts of the business here. So, <laughs> Blaine, how's the show been for you guys today? Hey, it's been great. We're uh, having a great show. It, yesterday was fantastic. Today's fantastic. And uh, so, hey, we're ready to uh, see all about some of the frames that you're going to show us. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm really excited to show off the, the frame that we have. You know, earlier I was talking about the True Cut, which I'm very passionate about. And I just can't tell you the excitement I have to show you the frame that is going to be versatile. I know yesterday Nathan was talking about the cutie frame. Um, this is in the same family as a cutie frame. Um, and it has a little more uh, features. Um, it's a little bigger, but this is called our Q Zone Hoop. Um, we actually have a couple of these frames in the in the hoop line. Uh, you saw yesterday the Cutie Frame. Today, this is the Q Zone Hoop. We also have the Q Zone Hoop Pro, and all of which are a hoop style frame. And that's really important. You know, Blaine, I I, I just get overly excited to show something that that takes the element of quilting to the next level. Um, space, uh, cost, um, uh, availability, uh, compatibility. There's a lot of things that could go into choosing the right frame for your setup. And much like the cutie frame, I'm gonna treat this as like an accessory. We talked about the cutie frame yesterday as an accessory to your machine. The Q-Zone Hoop standard, which is what this is, is just like the same. It allows you to use your domestic machine. It allows you to do large quilts. And I just have to throw this question out there. Those who do, who, those who have a sit down table, put a number one in the comments. You know, those who are, who are sitting down, trying to do their quilting sitting down, uh, throw a number one in there. Uh, first of all, hats, hats off and a clap to those who do that because 
it is really incredible to be able to move large quilts around to do heavy, I mean, maybe a queen, a king, those heavy types of quilts. And we're trying to move it around a sit down table. And we have a sit down table because of size, a space, and possibly because of cost, right? Now with the hoop frame, you're able to do all of that. And those who I see, I see a lot of ones coming through, which is great. These are the customers who have, again, a sit down and look into their quilt. Now, not everybody who has a sit down decides to do their quilt from the beginning to the end. Uh, most of them will try to take it off and, and have someone else do their quilting, um, rent a unit and do quilting that way. But nothing says this is your quilt more than you finishing your own quilt, right? And with this wonderful frame slash accessory, I like to call it, you can finish your frame or your quilt, sorry, from start to finish. Um, and it's going to be a whole lot easier to do multiple quilts um, at once by doing this setup. Now, what separates this from a sit down? A couple of things. One, we know a sit down, we're moving the fabric around underneath the machine. And a lot of quilters are really good at doing that. But I know over time, it could put strain on your shoulders, your arms, your fingers. And have you ever tried to do a feather or even something simple like um, stippling around moving the fabric? Well, it's quite challenging to say the most. And for those who have, again, hats off to you. Um, wonderful job. But the cues on hoop takes it to the next level where you can now move your machine on top of the fabric. And I like to relate that to your pen and paper. You know, if you were to get uh, a pen out and if you were going to write your name, you're going to move your pen around the paper instead of moving the paper underneath the pen. Much like we see here, here's your pen and you're moving your own machine around the top of the fabric to do your feathering or your stippling or doing daisies um, or crosshats. Um, any image that you want, it is easier to do it this way than the other way. Now, I have a lot of quilters who get to who get a chance I get to talk with on the phone and I get to see it at the shows. And that's what I, that's what I hear a lot uh, when we go and we present this wonderful frame, the hoop, that it will take your next level of quilting where you want it to be. And if you have those quilts, right? I mean, how many of us have, again, five, 10, 15 quilt tops that are ready to do the quilting, but yet we maybe stop ourselves and say, huh, it's gonna take me a little while to do these types of quilts. I'm gonna either load everything up in my car and then go rent out a, a system, or I'm just gonna do the quilting myself on the sit down. And again, uh, not a problem with that, but we are looking at ways to make a little more efficient, uh, to be faster and to enjoy quilting, You know, eliminate the stress that we feel in our upper body as we're trying to manage large quilts. So again, this is a cues on hoop. And you can see we have on here, we have a Juki machine. We'll get into the machines that are compatible with this frame. And as you can see, it's set up already with the fabric on. The beautiful thing about this system, Blaine, is you can do any size of quilt. You wanna do a king size quilt, great. You wanna do a queen, great. Smaller, even better. You're not limited to the size of quilting based off this size of, of frame slash accessory for your machine. It's four and a half feet. It does come with legs uh, and you can put casters on it to move it in your sewing room where you want it to be. Uh, so if you think about this, if you look at your sewing room and you're doing a sit down and you have that table and you have other, you have room in, in there because I know how fast your sewing room can build. This is perfect to put in to do your quilting. It doesn't take up take up much more space than a sit down table, yet you can move through your quilts a whole lot faster and more enjoyable. So again, this is a four and a half foot frame and we call it a hoop style, kind of like what Nathan, if you guys saw, saw Nathan's video yesterday with the cutie, and then we talked about the hand quilting process, how you have the clips around. When you're done hand quilting, you just hoop the fabric or much like an embroidery system, the same where you have the fabric clipped this is that same process. So if you've already familiar with that, 
um, then this is what you do on the hoop frame. We have these clips that hold the fabric in place and it's nice and taut, um, allows you to have everything that you want on a rolling rail frame system. And that, my quilters, <laughs> is where you would find you don't really um, lose much, right? That's why we like the rolling rail frame systems because you can do large quilts. However, you need to have large frames in order to do so. And when you're doing those uh, quilts that size, you're rolling the fabric on the rail. And also you have ratcheting systems that hold your fabric nice and taut so it doesn't flap around. And so again, I talk about that sacrifice. You didn't have to sacrifice anything to go down to this hoop frame. Um, and you can have the same ratcheting, just in a different style. So I'm gonna show you um, our clips um, on how they work because I already have the frame set up with the fabric. I'm gonna, after that, show you kind of where, where we came to this point. But let's go ahead and get a close up on how, how these clips look. I'm gonna take one off. And much like the cutie frame, it has ridges in there. And so these ridges twist around the square rails that lock it into place. And so that's the fantastic thing about this frame is again, you're not sacrificing anything. And in fact, you're able to have um, a compact frame slash accessory in your room doing the same size of quilting. So these ridges I talked about, when it goes on your rail, you can twist those and that is where your ratching system takes place as we're moving those around. So you have the sides, you have the front, and then you have the ones in the back. And the ones in the back, they don't twist, they hold the fabric in a, um, in a uh, row, in a tight, nice, that keeps the fabric from wanting to fall behind. So you roll that up and clip it on the ones in the front. But like, as I mentioned, this is where we're at right now. And then let's rewind and go back to see how I got to this point. It's very simple um, with moving the machine on and off the frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do that. I'm gonna just step around here and I'm going to show back here, there are three thumb screws. I'm just gonna remove, um, remove them. And take, this, uh, take this off. And again, this is the process that you will go through to take your fabric or even to hoop your fabric when you're done quilting. This is what you wanna do when you're done. And again, it's very simple uh, to do so. So we're going ahead and, and get that ready. And then let's go ahead and uh, get the machine here. All right. So it, it will take a little bit of time to get your fabric when you're done hooping or when you, when you want to change out your fabric, but it's very doable, very easy. And again, it's that simple. So that rail is already through the throat of the machine. And now I can take my machine off. And this is really nice because how many of you, uh, throw a number two in there, if you use the same machine for your piecing and your quilting, right? And what I mean by that is obviously if you're doing your piecing and now you gotta do your quilting. So throw a number two in there, if you use the same machine to do just that. And this is how simple it is uh, to get that um, off. I'm gonna go and clip the machine here. All right. So there is my machine. And now I'm just moving it right off. All right. And I'm gonna show you the top plate where your machine sits. I'm gonna set these down. Okay, we got some. Okay, this is the top plate. Let's get a good picture on here. So this top plate is where your machine will sit. Much like the cutie frame, it sits right on, and one of these fell off, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. These are the machine stabilizers to make sure your machine stays right on. So we have four of those that keep the machine right on. So this is the top plate that goes with this hoop frame. You need this with any domestic machine as needed. If you're going to use this with our Cunic machines, you do not need the top plate. It just sits right onto the bottom carriage uh, that we have rolling along, uh, along the frame. 
So here's the top plate that your machine was set on, and we're going to go ahead and put that right back on here. All right, just like so. So this is what your machine will look like, or your frame, without your machine. It's very simple. We have the fabric on, and now we're ready uh, to put our machine on. And so again, if you threw a number two in there, if you're the quilter that takes your machine on and off your sit down table to do your piecing into your quilting, you can see it's very simple to do the same with the hoop frame. And again, that's, I mean, there's a lot of cool features about this hoop frame um, that again, will take your quilting to the next level, especially when you're doing your free motion quilting and moving the machine around, which we'll get into um, in a minute. So we're going ahead and put the machine right back on. I'm going to just take another walk behind this frame and we're going to grab the machine here and set it right on. And then with these clips, I'm going to clip them up to the machine to keep them in place. We're going to take the rail and do the same, put it right back to the throat of the machine and tighten that down. We'll tighten this down. As you can see, again, very simple, very easy. It doesn't take all that, all that effort and time. So we'll go ahead and unroll. What's nice about this rolling is much like a rolling rail, when your rail through the throat machine starts building that fabric, your throw space, so if you want to use a smaller throat, your throw space is going to lose inches um, really, really fast. If you're using a smaller machine, that uh, rail continues to build the fabric, and now you have, you're left with a smaller throw machine. With the hoop frame, because you have a soft roll, you're able to move that roll on top of the rail. And I'll show you here what I mean in a minute, but that way you are able to get the full stroke of your machine even with the roll in the back. And that is phenomenal. I mean, if you think about it and you want to use your own machine and that's the idea of using this, you are using the full stroke from start to finish. Um, and obviously there are longer arm machines this frame will fit up to our 19 inch Cunic machine. So you can start with the smaller machine and grow. And we'll get into that as well. Um, the ability to buy Grace products and start somewhere and to build upon is something phenomenal. And that just makes me smile because it's just so fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and put the uh, fabric back on here. I'm gonna see if I can do this uh, very simple here underneath that okay just like so and i'm going to grab the clips now these clips on the back have ridges as well and this is where your bungees will hold into place to keep it um, nice and uniformed as we put that on okay now it is as simple as rolling the fabric in the back so this process is what you'll be doing from start to finish. Once you attach your fabric onto your frame, these clips hold it in place. And then when you're ready, you simply take these clips off and they are very simple to come off. And these front ones as well have those ridges. So the front ones and the side ones come off and then you're able to clip them back down and twist that to get it nice and taut. And then go ahead and just roll the back end here. And we'll clip them. Grab the other clip. All right. And as you can see, the roll, the rail in the back, this is floating up top. So I'm able to move this front and back so it's out of the way of the throat. You can bring it forward again to keep your full stroke of your machine moving all the way from the front and all the way to the back, which is fantastic. Okay, so that is with any domestic machine. I mean, think about the machine you have, right? If you have uh, an old Singer or a Fa Viking Juki and you already own a machine, Bernina, it doesn't matter what machine you have. 
What matters is you're able to use what you've already invested in. So this is the machine that you had purchased that you love and that you want to go ahead and start your quilting journey. Go ahead and take that machine and put it on the hoop frame. Again, I'm going to say that again. You can take your own machine and put it on a frame slash accessory and do your quilting, which is fantastic. Four and a half feet. It doesn't even get um, any better than that. Um, and so this is a nine inch throat. We have already up. Um, the other nice thing is you can get uh, side bungees. So just like the professional uh, figure frames, you get side bungee cords. You, you can have that as a well as well um, for the standard hoop frame. And they just simply go ahead and pull that on there. And then you'd want to get some uh, tension on there and then twist this. You keep it nice and taut as you're quilting. So the Q-Zone hoop frame, uh, versatile, fits in your sewing room. You're able to use your own machine. And again, um, ask yourself a couple questions. If this product works for you, think about the reasons why. Uh, think about what you're doing now as far as the process. Um, think about if you've been renting out a machine and getting people to do your quilts from start or for at the finish point. Uh, something where you want to do it from your, uh, for yourself. From the beginning to the end, you're able to do just that. So there's a couple questions I, that I would have you ask yourself as you're looking at getting something for your domestic machine. Um, one, obviously, do you have room for four and a half foot um, accessory uh, for your machine? Uh, number two is, you know, what machine am I using? Um, am I going to take it on and off the frame? Um, like I said, there's a lot of people who do that already. If you don't want to do that, this frame will fit up to a 19 inch machine and through Sewing Machines Plus, there's wonderful deals on our Cunic machines that you can pair up with um, the standard hoop frame if you're not looking to use your very own machine. Again, that's the ideal thing is taking what you already have and building on that. Um, there is not uh, really a huge amount that you got to go for um, in the beginning. You're able to make the nice purchase now and then down the road, as your quilting journey grows, you're going to grow and you're going to want something that's going to fit your needs. And that may be a larger throat um, at that point in time. So again, the Q-Zone um, hoop standard uh, frame. Um, before I get into uh, the quilting, Blaine, I'm going to turn this on. But if we can uh, come back over to you, because I know that this frame comes with something free. And I would love for you to share with those viewers what this frame will come with when they purchase it. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, I want to remind everybody this this uh, Grace Q Zone frame, uh, man, what a great, great uh, you know frame this is. Especially like Mark was saying, any of your domestic machines that you already have will fit right up on this. And uh, guys, this thing is a thousand eighty nine dollars, so you could get into quilting for just a little over a thousand dollars at your home using your own machine now. And right now, we have a great special going on this. We have a free bonus bundle. It's worth $600 that we're gonna throw in absolutely free with this. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in those start right cloth leaders. Uh, those are about $160 value. Uh, you can see them up on the screen right there. We're gonna throw in that Gracie laser. Uh, that's about a $50 laser that you can pull on it that you can do to use it to do pantographs and things. And then we're also gonna do uh, that Quilters Creative Design Pro software. That's a $399. Uh, value and that is for creating pantographs and things so a uh, great great bundle we're going to do in it it's a thousand eighty nine dollars that we're going to have and guys uh, we're even financing this thing we got special financing we'll finance this thing for 18 months for you zero percent interest that's about sixty dollars a month and uh, you might even give us a call and uh, they might can even work with you on that so again uh, give us a call at 800-401-8151. We have uh, sales agents standing by to take your call. And you can go right on our website. Uh, if you go to sewingmachinesplus.com, go up in the very top at the search bar and just type in Grace Q-Zone Hoop Frame. Or you can probably just put Q-Zone in that search bar and it's going to take you right to the product page so you can see all that. So let's go back to Mark. So Mark, a great, great bundle we have today on this thing. Absolutely, Blaine. That's such a phenomenal thing. You and your team do such a phenomenal job to get these products out there. And just another excitement I want to share are that is that bundle. 
that is a fantastic, fantastic bundle that you're going to be getting. And I have them right here I'm going to show. So just like Blaine said, you get this wonderful design software uh, that you're able to, um, to do your patterns. I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys close up here. So this design pattern um, gives you uh, um, the ability to design from scratch and to get your pantographs um, to become like, like a pro, if you will. You know, you're able to design your own patterns. So you get this. You also get the laser. So when you design your patterns, you can go ahead and attach this laser onto the carriage. And this laser actually attaches at the top, if you would like. You can also do it at the bottom. So you have a couple places to attach this laser. But that is fantastic as you're looking into your quilting. So the laser, and last but not least, as uh, Blaine mentioned, these cloth leaders. And these cloth leaders, um, they are essential to your quilting. Um, if you want to go from edge to edge, this comes in the pack. It's 112 inches, so you can do your king size quilt. Uh, so that is huge. Fantastic bundle, Blaine. That is just phenomenal. I'm going to set these down right here. Um, okay, so again, if you're thinking about getting an accessory for your product, this will be what you're wanting to do. With that accessory bundle and the phenomenal price of this hoop frame, that's a win. That's a win-win right there. Uh, you get all these wonderful pr uh, products. You get to use your own machine. And that is, again, that comfort level. The Q-Zone hoop standard keeps you in that comfort level where you're using something you've been using for years. You feel comfortable using your own machine. Now, let's go ahead and put your own machine right on top of this fabric and move it around. It doesn't get any better than that. And in fact, let's go ahead and show you how that's demonstrated. I'm going to bring this chair over. And I have to apologize because obviously with no hair. So if I start blinding people from, from the light here, just, just let me know and I'll, I'll move. So I, don't want, I want everybody to see how phenomenal this is as we're using this Juki machine. So I'm going to come right in here. And just so the so the uh, pitch the cameras can see, I'm just going to stand off to the side. And you know what? We can't quilt without it being turned on. So hold on one minute. I'm going to go and turn this right back on here. Plug everything back in. And my cord's still on the floor, so I apologize. Okay. Now we are ready. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. And what's nice? Again, we're talking about the sit down and you're moving it around. It's hard to keep up with the stitches. Um, you're moving uh, the fabric at the speed of your needle, which can be challenging. Here, I can move the machine with the speed of the needle much easier. See how smooth that is, move it on top of the fabric. Just with a couple fingers, I can move that um, all around. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to fire this up here. And you can see just how nice and simple this is to do my designs. I could do circles. I can just do this all day. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. If I don't stop, then I'm gonna be at it at all, um, all day long. So again, you see how simple that was. Um, I was moving it around one hand uh, effortlessly, um, right on top of the carriage, your own machine, whether you wanna use a foot pedal, we also have stitch regulation, speed controls, whatever you would like to do to make your journey easier and more enjoyable, using your own machine will help you with that. Um, again, the hoop frame. Now, a couple questions before we end. I know we're getting close to go back to Blaine here to reiterate this package deal. But a couple questions I want you to ask yourself. If you're using your own machine, if you're using it as a sit down and you want to take your quilting to the next level, this is a package that you want. You're able to do king size quilts or smaller. Um, you have everything you need to keep the fabric nice and taut. Uh, nothing you're really going to sacrifice going down to this small of a frame. And the best part is, is you can sit. You can sit and enjoy quilting. You don't have to stand. You can sit, use your foot pedal, and off you go. So wonderful package, fantastic price. Uh, Blaine, you guys do a phenomenal job. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this wonderful um, soul fest that you have going on. Let's turn the time back over to you. Or if there's any questions, if we have a little bit of time, I can help answer. 
Well, Mark, great, great job in, in uh, demonstrating that. And I think you, you hit the nail on the head. If somebody has, uh, you know, the existing machine and they're wanting to take that up to the next level, I mean, what better way to do that? Very inexpensively, just a little over a thousand dollars, they can be quilting king size quilt, you know, quilts. So I just think that's a phenomenal price we have this week on this. And again, what a great bundle we're throwing with it. And hey, Mark, great job. And we sure do appreciate uh, Grace being one of our sponsors and sure to appreciate you coming on and, and, and presenting that, that great frame for us. Thank you very much, Blaine. Thanks for having me and we'll see you next time. All right, buddy. All right, so I wanna remind everybody on this Grace, uh, this hoop frame again, hey, this thing, this is the Q-Zone hoop frame. Uh, it is, it, you know, $1,089. You can get this and as, as Mark showed you, you can take your domestic machine. It's very easy just to sit it on there and clamp it in and you can be quilting. It'll take up to a queen size or king size quilt on this. And right now we've got that special bundle. You're getting those cloth leaders we're throwing in. We're throwing in that, that Gracie laser pointer. And then we're also throwing in that, that design software so you can do, you know, design those pantograms. All that bundle is a $600 bonus bundle. Hey, you can go right on our website right now and just type in Q-Zone uh, and it should take you right to that hoop uh, that frame, the Q-Zone hoop frame. And you can also give us a call at 800-401-8151. And all of our staff is standing by. They are very knowledgeable about all the Grace products and they can, they can help you out and they can really help you out on any kind of quilting question or frame question. So guys, great, great day. Hey, let's bring Jane back in. And we have actually completed day two, Jane, of SoFest. So, I think you're muted, Jane. Oh, yay! I'm muted. Finally, <laughs> I muted myself. <laughs> I said, what a great day it was. Day two in the books for SoFest, and it was so much fun, Blaine. Thank you for having me along for the ride. Oh, I, I'm so happy you're here, and I know you're going to be back here Thursday helping us out. And uh, But hey, before you go today, I think we ought to give some stuff away. What do you think? Oh, my goodness gracious. Of course we need to do some giveaways, Blaine. <laughs> All right, so I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell us it. what we're giving away, and I'll let you you uh, call the name, okay? Oh. So the first thing we're giving away, everyone, is a so steady large uh, serger table circer, circle sewing package, as you can see. So it's the it's the table plus that that uh, serger table sir, uh, <laughs> circle sewing it's package. It's kind of hard to say. Isn't it? <laughs> and yeah, so our uh, and our winner's coming to us from Facebook. So who's our winner? Our winner from Facebook, congratulations, Patricia Barclay. You are the winner of the So Steady uh, table right there. Make sure you send an email to contests, that's plural, contests at sewingmachineplus.com. Tell us your name and your best shipping address. Fantastic. And then, hey, we're giving two sewing machines away to end the day on. Our first one's going to be that Baby Lock Zest. And a great, great machine right here. Our, our winner is coming to us from YouTube. And our winner is... YouTuber winner is Lisa Milam. Congratulations, Lisa. So awesome. Congratulations, Lisa. And our next giveaway is going to be a Burnett B44 Serger. And our winner is coming to us from Facebook. Congratulations to our Facebook winner, Joan Keelan. Congratulations, Joan Keelan. So there's our winners for the day, Jane. Uh, great, great day today. Uh, you know, again, I want to thank all of our sponsors. Uh, you know, we had Janome, Handy Quilter, Grace, OESD, Brother, Baby Lock, Bernina, Arrow, So Steady, uh, Euro Notions. Uh, Daylight and Juki, and we could not do these events if it weren't for our partners and sponsors to help us out. And man, so so happy you came aboard today, Jane. And you know, I was just thinking about there all the different machines and stuff. And and I'm just kind of curious. I wish everybody would kind of just chime in and tell us how many machines that they own. Let's Ooh. count like sewing machines, embroidery machines, and sergers. I'd like for everybody to just give me a total. Y'all pop it up on the screen in the chat. Tell us how many machines you you own. Yeah. And uh, we may have a special prize tomorrow for, for somebody who, you know, you never know. We're going to pick oh. a winner maybe out of all those numbers. And uh, I might give something away because, you know, I love giving things away. Wait, we've got, uh, let's see, Doreen Moans has got six. Kim Wolf is 10. 
This oh. is fantastic. Hey, we we all know Kim Wolf. She's a she's actually a local. Shops in our San Marcos store, so we know Kim very well. Look at this. We got eight. We got another eight right there. I always say, listen, if you you got to have one for you know traveling. You got to have one that's easy and portable. You got to have the big one that can sit. You got to have another one over there, one for show. You got to keep all the old ones. So I'm a big, huge fan of having multiple machines and surgeries. Look at fifteen. Wow. Well, you know, I tell you, we do these events a lot, and I always ask that question how many machines people have. And I'm always blown away by how many some, some ladies have or in some 71. gentlemen. 71. 71? Trisha Phillips. Who's that? Is that, was it Teresa? Trisha. Trisha, Trisha Phillips. Phillips. Trisha, is that a typo or is that actually correct? He's on YouTube. Because if you have 71 machines, I want you to take your camera, do a nice little videotape of that, send it to these guys so we can actually Oh, see I would love to see a room of 71 machines in it. Oh, look at, I love this from Frank. Frank has got a vintage collection. He doesn't, he has 54 machines, vintage collection. He doesn't use them all. I love oh, wow. it. You could, you could set up a museum, Frank. I'm going to probably the first person. You know, watch. I know some people do collect them, you know, and they've got some very old singers way back in, you know, the, yeah. the, the early, time. early 1900s. And, and they've got a huge I collection go to, of Yeah. Every time I go to, um, like an open house or uh, like a whatever. Every time I go anywhere and I, it's like where you can buy something. I see an old machine. I buy it. I mean, we could be on a road trip. I'm like, put the machine in the back. Just because I love, ha I love the old machines, you know, even if they don't work, I like to have them and use them as uh, decoration. I think they're great. People have put two machines in the last show. This is fun. <laughs> I've never said it all the way it. from Dory. I love it. Well, everybody, you know, join us tomorrow. We're going to be back again in the morning. Uh, the live feed will start at 8 a.m. Pacific time. I'm going to come on air at 8.15 Pacific time. And, uh, hey, we're going to have a great show tomorrow. we got two more educational classes tomorrow. we got a great lineup of educators and great specials tomorrow. And then uh, Angela Wolf will be back with us again tomorrow helping me host. And then, Jane, you're going to be back here Thursday helping us. So we've got a great, great rest of the week. And, uh, hey, day two's under the books. And, uh, you know, I told everybody yesterday morning, I said, it's amazing. You know, you think this whole week and Friday we'll get here and go, it's already over. It goes by so fast and uh, especially when you're learning things. So, hey, we appreciate everybody tuning in and we hope that everybody will come back and join us tomorrow. Hey, tell your friends to come and join us and, and see the show. And again, i got to say a huge thank you to uh, Jane Klaus. Hey, and, and Jane, it, real quick before we let you go, yeah. what? how can people find you? I know you've got a, a YouTube page, you got a Facebook page, Instagram, all that. What? How can, and your website, how can we find yeah. you? So, you know, at best is to Google Jane Klaus, C-L-A-U-S-S, -S, but janeklaus.com is my website and you can find me on social media is Jane Klaus. You can find me on Insta, Instagram is Jane Klaus, and I meant to say YouTube. I think YouTube is hey, DIY by Jane. So you've got on your website, though, they can just go to janeklaus.com, and you have all those links on your website, correct? Yeah, yeah. That'd be the easiest way. So Klaus, remember, everybody, it's C-L-A-S or C-A-L-U-S-S. C-L-A-U-S-S, right? like Santa with two S's for extra yes. special. Exactly. So everybody go visit Jane's page. And by the way, I don't know if everybody knows this, Jane, but you have won two Emmy awards. And for your, you know, you've been on all these these um, morning shows and doing the, the DYI things. And, and you know, you've won two Emmys. And so that is so awesome. And, and we sure do appreciate you being on here with us and, and sharing all your knowledge as well. It's, it's just awesome. Thank you. I have a, my show creative living is, is where I won those Emmys for. And that's because I get to pull back the curtain on creative people <laughs> like you that are making it and you're showing us what you're working on, what your passion is. And, and really, and truly that's why I won because you let me into your homes and you let me interview you and showcase you. So thank you for letting me be a part of your creative world. All right. So thank you, Jane. We'll see you in Thursday morning, bright and early. You got it. All right, guys, there you had it. Uh, what a great show we had today. I sure do appreciate you all coming on board. I want to appreciate all of our crew here at SMP. We have Kyle and his teams all here today. They are still here. Been here a long day for them. Hey, we got Deb and all of the chat team in the back, back there. And actually, one of our chatters are not even there. They're actually in Russia right now 
uh, Marina is in Russia and she, it's, I don't even think, I think it's like two or three o'clock in the morning there and she's chatting from Russia helping out today. So uh, thank, thanks for our chat team helping us uh, answer questions for you on all the Facebook and uh, YouTube chats. So guys, hey, thank y'all for joining in. Please come and join us tomorrow and we'll see y'all. Have a great rest of your night.